the graduation from uh, singeri and uh, masters degree from mysore university and phd from cornell university uh, the florida i has a long experience and uh, as a scientist who was working in our institute for uh, 10 <coughs> after receiving phd and joined uh, as a research assistant in florida gains valley and then uh, as a professor report then he is working in a world known uh, renowned center for citrus gem plasm collection and conservation and he also was initially working on uh, citrus disease then later on uh, the emergence of citrus <coughs> greening bacteria psa then has joined that group and uh, since then he is working on citrus greening and developed a lot of diagnostic assays uh, especially qpcr uh, lamp assay and even detection in insect vectors and developed a guidelines for how to curtail and manage the uh, uh, citrus greening disease in california and he has uh, several uh, papers published in several international journals and he is also developing resistant and identifying resistant germplasm and lines and now they are under field conditions with his vast experience on citrus viruses and uh, greening bacteria we would like to hear from him and the advances made so far because citrus greening bacteria is a worldwide problem currently and in india it is known long time and it is very important in a perennial crops like citrus uh, working is a difficult task and even then he has brought out uh, very good solutions with this brief introduction without taking much time sir i request you to restrict your talk to 25 minutes so that 5 minutes we will have a discussion at least some clarity for people who wanted so that we will have a good visibility thank you sir you can start your uh, presentation let me sh okay um thank you for the nice uh, introduction it is like coming home Yes. you know virtually going back to ihr i was trying to recognize your uh, office but uh, uh, it is probably completely new that i have not seen yeah, exactly yeah. after you left there is a lot of modifications in the institute i request you whenever you visit india please visit one uh, to our institute yeah and entire division is uh, revamped is totally different now yeah i would uh, i would love to come yeah. and i see nbpgr i had a very good friend he is probably retired now ravi ketrapal from yeah, yeah he is in now south asian uh, this thing mm -hmm. um anyway without uh, much of this thing let me try to share my screen uh give me one second Okay. Um, can you hear me and can you see my slide? Is it okay? Yes, sir. You are audible, and yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so um, I want to talk about a technique, um, especially. it may be of interest to those of you who are doing real time pcr assays and um, even if you are doing for a single disease it may still be useful especially if you are doing uh, multiple disease assays when someone brings a sample and you want to know whether it has a virus a b c or d in tomato grape citrus whatever um, uh this kind of technique may you may find it useful and um, those of you who do real time pcr assays for uh, multiple pathogens you know how painful they can be to set it up and uh, keep your probes uh, in a good condition and uh, uh you know handle 
probes, set up PCRs, you know, avoid uh, contaminations, keep these reagents in a good condition and all those things. So I work uh, for the last uh, 15 years, all my life I have worked on one crop and that is citrus. So when I was in India, like uh, Dr. Krishna Reddy told, um, uh, I worked at the Citra, one of the regional stations, uh, Citrus Experiment Station, Gonikopal, where uh, greening was very prevalent. And uh, uh, that's what motivated me to come to US uh, and uh, you know um, find some solutions for the citrus industry. And um, so for the last 15 years, I work at the National Clonal Germplasm Repository for citrus and dates. And um, I have my email here. Uh, probably the easiest email is mlkeramane at gmail.com. Or, uh, you know, since there are not many Manjunath or Keramanes in the uh, US, you can Google Manjunath and citrus and probably Manjunath USD and citrus. You can find it even if you don't have um, this presentation. And if anybody wants this presentation, I will be happy to share with you. So uh, National Clonal Germplasm Repository for Citrus and Dates is located in uh, the campus of University of California, Riverside. And uh, it is a USDA facility, which means it is a federal government, central government facility. And um, UCR, University of uh, California, Riverside, has a, sit, you know, is well known for its citrus research. And if those of you who know Kino Mandarin in uh, Punjab and Pakistan, it came from UCR uh, about 50, 60 years ago. And um, uh, we have a citrus variety collection. Uh, UCR has a citrus variety collection with you know, over 1100 accessions. And uh, you, if you Google UCR CVC, you can see uh, information on a lot of citrus varieties, what is available here and stuff, uh, such stuff. But uh, those of you who are interested in uh, citrus, uh, one of the things I want to tell you is that any, if you are interested in getting anything disease-free material to start with, we provide um, certified well pathogen-free genetic material, not only budwood for plant propagation, if you are interested in DNA, RNA, pollen, a lot of other things, we distribute. We provide, we get all the required paperwork from our part, but it is your responsibility to get a permit from uh, like Indian government. So that are, um, uh, I don't know exactly what the process is. Uh, someone from NBPGR or um, uh, uh, ARS, um, ICAR will be able to guide. Um, so again, if you have any questions, I would be really, um, uh, you know, interested in helping anyone starting on citrus or working with citrus. Um, so, like I said, uh, this is the um, main page of the website and it's the UCR website is much better than our USDA website because uh, it was working very well, but now they're changing the system and our uh, USDA websites can be a little painful, but UCR website works really well. And if you need any information on any of the accessions we have or how to get those things, if you are interested in either DNA, RNA or genetic uh, propagation materials, uh, I would be happy to help you. So the main mission of the, I'll give you a little introduction before I go into the main topic. So our main mission of the, our uh, repository is to acquire, evaluate, preserve, maintain and distribute germplasm of citrus and citrus uh, relatives. Uh, we also work on date pumps. And uh, this is a valuable resource for citrus communities around the world. And um, when, if you request any material, 
we bear the shipping charges, we bear all the stuff that from here. Your only responsibility is to request and provide, um, you know, um, necessary permits request from your uh, the government, the receiving government, which in this case it will be from the Indian government. And um, uh, if you request specific tests, specific certifications, we provide them specifically for. Uh, you know, if you want to test for certain diseases if, that you are concerned about, we can we do those things for individual scientists. So um, let me see a little bit. So this is um, a kind of summarizes what we do. We acquire acquisitions from genetic materials from around the world. It was a lot easier probably several years ago. Nowadays, it is becoming more and more difficult, but you know, we still acquire from different places, from collaborators. And once we receive, we do pathogen testing, we place them in quarantine facilities, and we do cleanup. I will briefly explain how what kind of cleanup we do. And then we do pathogen testing. If you see, pathogen testing occurs at multiple times. And even we do in the spring, we do in the summer, we do in the fall, multiple times, just to make sure that hot temperature pathogens, cold temperature pathogens, and under different conditions, we don't miss them. Because uh, the, uh, I always say that the mo most, uh, it is most difficult to convince me first, myself first, that it is pathogen free before we distribute. So we try to make every effort to see that everything is pathogen free. So we also do horticultural evaluations, genetic evaluations. And um, um, once it is free from all the pathogens, we maintain them. So we have protected facilities where we maintain, I'll show you a few pictures. And then information on these accessions are available through publications and other things, but we also have them on website, Green Global. That's what I was telling about. It is under huge renovation websites. Sometimes it can be difficult to get information, but I can provide links that can help. Recently, what I have been doing is wherever um, you need um, um, information, I publish something, I give them direct links so that they can get access to the, the, that kind of information. So see, these are some of the pictures of our facilities. Uh, everything is protected by um, special, uh, you know, screens and law. Uh, you know, especially for in 2008, we got uh, Asian citrus salad diaphorna citri, which is the vector for the citrus screening, and we our um, uh, we are strictly regulated by AFIS, which is the USDA regulatory facility, and also by the California State Agricultural Department. So we have inspections every month, and we have we regulate ourselves, follow strict regulations. And what you see on the bottom is one of our uh, quarantine greenhouses, where we raise the materials, we have positive infected plants, and we do biological indexing and such. And we also have other facility here where we maintain all the pathogen tested, pathogen free plant materials. Some of these plants that you see are, um, some of them are almost 25 to 27, 28 years old. Not all of them. We do repropagate when they, Citrus can take a lot of abuse. Every year we prune them, they provide new flush. And every March or so we prune them. And then um, by May, June, the planting budwood material will be available throughout the year. And only two, three months, we won't be able to distribute. These are some of the structures that we had to make some modifications after 2008 when the silids came. So every exhaust facility has to be screened. We have um, um, all the uh, air intake, air outtake, all the potting areas, everything is screened. And most of 
all the doors have double doors with uh, uh, fans in and then every intake of the air everything is screened and uh, so that you know we can avoid the insects and we go to greenhouses in the morning we don't go to the field one if someone goes to the field we don't go to any of the quarantine greenhouses if we have to go we have bathroom and we have to take a shower and then only we we can go but we try to avoid doing that so when we receive plant material from any anywhere around the world we consider everything is infected and uh, irrespective of we do some lab tests immediately at like you know whenever we receive plant material we propagate we also do the testing irrespective of we detect something or not they had to go through one of the two processes thermotherapy or shoot tip grafting thermotherapy is where actually we place them under hot conditions for 12 to 16 weeks and that removes a lot of uh, pathogens and some of them it, it does not remove certain pathogens which can be removed by using shoot tip grafting and um, uh once we do this then we test again for multiple pathogens when we when i say testing for multiple pathogens we are required to do both biological indexing and laboratory indexing a laboratory tests so this is biological indexing is a very time consuming and it can takes a lot of greenhouse space uh so we are trying to we still want to do biological indexing but um uh sometimes we can't do it when we are doing the citrus relatives so we are trying to develop methods that uh, can be used so this again uh, I, as i explained previously this is shown in another way you know all the steps that we do before we consider them as pathogen free put them in the quarantine facility and release i won't go into the details of this at this stage so this is a slide where we are doing the biological indexing as you can see we keep them at uh, uh distance and then we use about 30 plants for each indicator plants for each test so we can release about uh, 17 uh accessions every year and we cannot do more than that it is a time consuming space consuming and pretty expensive process so these are some of the I again I am not going to details of of these things but just want to emphasize here that uh, we test for multiple diseases we use biological indexing various lab test procedures just to summarize some of the lab test procedures uh, we do elisa mainly for ctv citrus tristeza virus and a few other viruses we do s page sequential page for viroids double strand rna for unknown viruses then you know uh, earlier we used to do a lot of pcr cloning and sanger sequencing we still do but um, we also do uh, western blots tissue blots but our main work has these days is real time pcr we also do next generation sequencing and it appears to be the best solution for most assays Uh, i'm not going to talk about ngs today but i would like to talk about development of array for rapid detection of multiple pathogens this is uh, you uh, those of you who are uh, you know working on this technology uh, this kind of technologies you'll find i hope interested uh, find this very interesting why we switch from conventional P pcr to real time pcr is that what we can do how sensitive it is Okay, this PCR is an end end point assay, whereas real time PCR uh, is a real time assay, and you don't have to run a gel and do all the things. Uh, and um, there is no post PCR manipulations required. It's highly sensitive. It has large dynamic range. And it has a lot of different advantages, and you know it can you can detect nine to you know eight to ten. locations the dynamic range is really good and um we most all, uh, uh, in most of our assays we you know depend on uh, you know 
hydrolyzing probes, Tachman probes, uh, because it is highly specific. It uses two primers in the probe and the amount of um, fluorescence that you see is directly proportional to fluorescence from the reported dye is directly proportional to the number of amplicons generated. And you can really uh, get very good estimate if you, especially if you have, if you use gene blocks as controls. So, but before we go there, the real-time PCR assays, especially, you know, like if you are interested in detecting 20, 15, 20 different RNA pathogens, DNA pathogens, all these things, it can be very, very laborious. And uh, you need to have expertise. You need to be able to handle all those primers and probes. Uh, it takes time to detect multiple pathogens. And if you have, you know, two samples that you need to test today, you know, something comes from Maharashtra or somewhere and somebody sends a grape sample, a tomato sample or a bean sample. You want to test for 10 different pathogens. You want to do it in one shot. This may be the way to go. So um, I am always concerned about multiplex assays, even duplex assays. It's all good as long as you know you can um, do. Um, in most cases, it may work okay, but uh, um, multiplex assays can cause various problems, especially if one of them has a high titer, one of them has a very low titer. Um, I'm kind of purist in this case. So I believe in single plexuses. So um, this detects 15 RNA pathogens right now, what we have, and two targets for each pathogens. Two targets because you can have a beautiful paper on detection from China, one from India, one from uh, Brazil, uh, and I think given pathogen. But everybody who tests, tests for pathogens of their, their location. Whereas at a germplasm, any germplasm repository or some institute like that, we are dealing with pathogens from around the world. So we need to make sure that if one base difference is, you know, we are missing a pathogen, we don't want to do that. So here I'm using two different targets so that hopefully we don't miss something. And occasionally, even then we miss and we keep improving. This is a flexible technology as well. So we do only single plex things here and arrays can be stored for you know, long time. At least so far we have stored up to one year. And the, what is array? So we have preloaded plates, PCR plates preloaded with primers and probes and dyes and um, some other substances to make sure that they are preserved well and they are lyophilized, they are sealed and they're ready to use. So all is very simple, we'll come to that in a second. So it takes from, if you have an RNA extraction and you want to know the results for 15 different pathogens, it takes about one and a half hours for me. In one day, I do about 14 to 16 PCRs on a good day. Uh, with one more person to help me. And it's a very simple process. So in this thing, these are some of the 15 different pathogens along with an internal control. I am not going to go through the list in interest of the time. So let me explain. So when you have an RNA, so this is a simple reverse transcription process. It takes 20 minutes and there are only three reagents to add. Once you have the cDNA, you prepare the master mix for the real-time PCR. This again has only three reagents, water, master mix, and the cDNA. And then you set up the PCR and the, the array design is like this. We have um, in one plate, you can test three different samples. Let's say here A, B, and C on the bottom. And these are the primers and probe for wired one, two different sets of primers and probe and so on. Okay, the last one is for the internal control gene here. So four columns for each sample and 
in the previous page here for each um, <coughs> uh, sample you would have about 32x 35x reaction and they are distributed to 32 wells the astronauts and this is the design this is actually actual one array and once you add the master mix the, you can see the color so you can make sure that everything has if you see the color it means it has primers and probes and this is one of the results um, that um, you can see here how, how am i doing with the time Let me just check. Okay. Um, so you can see here, these columns, each column is a sample, okay? 173, 174 and such. I'll explain to you SPAS in a minute. And these are the pathogens. And um, so this is super positive where we mix the RNA of about five, six different RNAs so that we can get positive reaction for most. I don't have in this, a positive control for Wirad 6. I don't have one for CLBV, but right, I have a new set where I have positive controls for them. So you can see the samples and you can see that um, some of them react with only one. For example, here, uh, Wirad 1, only the second probe reacts, not the first one, whereas here it reacts with both. So some of them super positive reacts with most of the pathogens. And, uh, you know, one of this is, this one is sclerosis positive. This one is uh, citrus virus A here, um, vein uh, you know, all the different pathogens. This is just a sample of some of the test results. This one, four different people tested independently. They were given the protocols and the RNA extraction and they did the tests and they get very highly uniform results. So this one is a super positive done by all the four uh, different people. This is, uh, what I did was we have a large number of about 150 different positive plants, a positive inventory. We have different kinds of CTV, different sclerosis. Many of them are mixed infections. I tested those. Like I said, you know, one day um, I did 14 plates, which is about uh, 42, uh, samples. So you can test a large number of samples in a very short time. And you can get information for multiple pathogens, not only uh, positive detection, you also have a confirmatory test because you have two targets for each. So this is a very, uh, we find it very interesting. Right now we do 15 pathogens. I'm trying to, we are in the process of developing the next version which will have 24 pathogens, which includes both RNA and DNA. See, even though it's a DNA pathogens, they do make RNA. So if our target is since RNA and there's a one step simple 20 minute reverse transcription, we, if you have an RNA from a plant, we can test both RNA and DNA pathogens. So array technology developed here uh, it can detect multiple pathogens. It greatly improves efficiency of detection and uniformity of results across multiple personnel, places, reagents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. PCR machines, you know, irrespective of who tests, where the test is done, they can be compared. The results can be compared, and um, it gives reliability. Array reduces the complexity of multiple pathogen detection. It enables, uh, you know, detection in a very simple way in less than two hours from RNA. If you have an RNA, you can get report in two, less than two hours. And uh, like I said, the next version will would involve both RNA and DNA pathogens, at least for 24 different pathogens and two different targets for each pathogen. Uh, we, uh, in the next step, you know, we want to do, we are already developing tests with multiple labs in the US, but we would like to uh, do similar assay involving multiple labs in other countries. So 
we are really looking for uh, collaborators. If you are interested, uh, you know, I would really appreciate those who are interested. If uh, you can contact me again, my email is here, and um, you can also Google Manjunath USD and Citrus and get my email link. And uh, with that, uh, hopefully there will be some time for discussion. And I would appreciate uh, if we cannot uh, complete the discussion. You know, please email me, WhatsApp me, and uh, you know, these days we can call, talk, Zoom, uh, uh, in uh, multiple methods. And I look forward to having some um, positive interactions. With that, I'll stop here. And thank you again for the organizers and uh, all of you for uh, um, you know your uh, giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Manjunath, sir, and uh, excellent talk and uh, very informative and uh, useful, uh, especially IRA essay, where this is the order of the day where multiple pathogen detection and multiple virus detection is important, uh, especially for quarantine purpose. Today, quarantine has become a very serious concern uh, worldwide. And uh, yes. I, I, I'm sure there may be a few of them, some uh, clarifications. Mm -hmm. Audience, if uh, any questions, please can uh, raise hand or uh, put a short it and uh, Dr. Manjunath will address the issues. Few questions, please. Uh, good morning, uh, 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 Dr. Reddy, sir, and uh, good, uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Manjunath. I'm Suresh from Nairobi. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Suresh. Yes, sir. Oh, <laughs> How are you? Yeah. So it is a very uh, elaborative, very comprehensive uh, presentation, uh, which I learned a lot from your presentation on the citrus uh, research. And uh, it is not a question. So I was uh, just uh, trying to understand uh, uh, the quarantine uh, steps, what you have, you are doing like uh, greenhouse indexing and uh, lab indexing. And yeah. the cost of... Uh, uh, you know, these days people always talk about cost. Cost, I agree, and it is important to be economical. But sometimes the people forgo the opportunity cost of uh, uh, you know the the transboundary uh, challenges at the cost of uh, lapsing the quarantine measures. Why I'm saying that, uh, even though it costs a bit more, uh, perhaps it is essential and critical to take up uh, greenhouse indexing than lab indexing. Did you find any uh, challenges or any way that you found some escape uh, when you don't do uh, greenhouse indexing, only do uh, lab indexing? We have seen both the situations. Uh, we, I agree with you completely. Biological indexing is a very important component, but the problem with either biological or lab, lab indexing mainly depends on uh, two things. One is how involved are the people who are doing it. You know, if you are doing it for the sake of doing it, it's very easy to miss things. If you do biological indexing and you don't take care of the plants and you don't, if you are looking for psoriasis, you go there every three days, if not often, because psoriasis symptoms are there very transiently. And if you miss, we didn't even have a PCR method a few years ago. Even until recently, last year, we didn't know the sequences of many sorosis, uh, viruses causing sorosis. We probably still missing many more. Uh, so uh, both the places you can miss, we, you know, we, we think testing CTV in the lab is very easy. And I was doing RT-PCS and I missed one isolate which was positive in biological indexing. And then we looked at the sequence and then we adjusted uh, the primers and reaction conditions and uh, we were able to make modifications. So it happens both ways. The biological indexing can be terrible sometimes. Even your positive controls don't give symptoms on certain bad years. 
you know if your soil mix is not good if you are you know if you have a air conditioner go bad or something like that um, we uh, fortunately we have a backup generator we have many things but still things can go bad and um, uh, those things are common but a major thing i mean that may not be the only way but um, next generation sequencing is probably one of the best solutions in the recent years uh, it has a lot of advantages i am not going through those things today but um, biological indexing is not possible for certain citrus relatives wild <laughs> citrus relatives that's one of the reasons why we want to go for uh, you know next generation sequencing and other th other things in such cases um, yeah yeah uh, thank you gives me some uh, because uh, i agree uh, and certain things we need to balance out uh, both side uh, and both lab and the greenhouse uh, especially when we have similar uh, challenges to contain and and uh, control uh, the disease from one uh, uh, part of the continent to another part of the continent any small uh, mistake can lead to uh, food security uh, issues and you know, very very uh, challenging issues but I, I i agree with you we need to have a kind of a aligned approach in both side i agree with you any any more dr yadav yeah so my question is uh, uh, this quarantine when you when you check the plants for uh, the pathogen presence obviously there are many endophytes both fungal and bacterial Uh, organisms will be there in the plants. Um, yes. I I can understand that you must be doing a screening using NGS and other markers too, and you are emphasizing more on NGS uh, there also. NGS normally will uh, will not re really go to the taxonomic level. Uh, is that so? And for example, there are few species of Pseudomonas which are pathogenic to plant, but most of the Pseudomonas are not. pathogenic to plant so if we get a, a fragment sequence fragments of pseudomonas uh, what what will be the course of action or do you have uh, other uh, primers also which which are very pathogen specific so that they amplify only those and then you detect uh, whether the for example the species of pseudomonas is a pathogenic or not i mean the the question is how do you differentiate between pathogens and the true endophytes well um ngs we don't use any primers we make um, total rna we uh, then make um, cdna using random primers and um, the um, then we do the uh, uh, right now we use illumina sequencing uh, technology and once we have the illumina sequencing technology we need to get at least 20 million Uh, so reads uh, that's what uh, right now we are looking at getting a lot of um, information uh, once we have this um, sequence and we clean we do the quality control we take out the bad reads and all that stuff and we have a workflow we use a uh, we use actually uh, a clc genomics workbench for uh, analysis of sequences we have made a workflow and uh, the first thing we do is we use the clementine citrus genome sequence and we deduct all the take out all the citrus genome sequences and then we use the sweet orange because those are the two citrus sequences that we have in the database in a very good quality so we take out whatever aligns with those genome sequences then we take out the mitochondrial and um, chloroplast chloroplast yeah chloroplast sequences then we have a database of citrus pathogens we align with citrus pathogen sequences then we have a database for other viruses right now it is mostly focused on virus but we also have major uh, hlv path you know citrus greening and other pathogen databases we align to those so we get not only 
the um, a region, in most cases, we get the whole genome and we get about 300x, 400x uh, sequences for most viruses because most of these viruses, they go to very high titers normally in, a, in, in citrus host. So there are multiple ways we can make out that it's a pathogen. None of the endophytes, they are usually at very low titers. The pathogens are the ones that go to a high titer. So the depth to which we go, and if you have a doubt whether it is a pathogen or a um, uh, endophyte, you can easily blast and find that. I wouldn't say easily, sometimes it can be complicated, but we have information in our uh, GenBank NCBI, and we have lots of tools, NCBI tools that we can use. And um, yeah, um, it is, um, uh, it can be time consuming, but the beauty of this NGS, why I say that is, we can submit raw sequences in the NCBI. And if I send you, um, if I send you, a, a, let's say you want a sweet orange and I send you and 10 years from now you come and say, that plant was infected. I have it in the gen bank, exact sequence we have and it may be a new virus which we completely missed. It can happen. You know, we are not, we are humans. We are not, um, you, with all the best efforts that we do, we can do things wrong, right? Something happens, we can know 10 years from now. Okay, we were missing this. And if not, no, this did not come from us because this is the sequence we had. So I don't know if that makes uh, kind of. Yes. Yeah, I, I do have some sub questions, but I think I do. We don't have a time to ask. Maybe, and it will take a yeah. lot of time. Yeah. To yeah please, this, please email me, or you know, we can yeah, sure. we, we can or, continue uh, over the over the email about it. Yeah. 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 Thank uh, you. Thank you, Doctor Chalam. If yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's uh, nice to hear from you. Especially, I used to hear about you from Doctor Girja Ganeshan during my short ah. time. <laughs> Institute of Horticulture Research, Bangalore. Thank you, sir. Okay. I have a general question. Like uh, uh, the USDA FAs always ask, like they are not able to give the phytosanitary certificate for some crops and asking like uh, the companies here are asking us to give the waiver for additional declaration. For example, uh, capsicum, like you have tomato ring spot virus in US and we don't have it in India. I'm just giving an example. So, okay. uh, uh, maybe you are from research side, uh, but USDA FS, they, this with all the good infrastructure and funding, uh, I'm wondering why is it like we are getting these uh, requests for waiver? Well, you can email me issues and I'll try to find some answers, but I'll also give you something. Uh, uh, you can Google Shailaja. I don't know if you know Shailaja. Um, Shailaja, um, uh, I don't remember her last name. We were um, colleagues in um, uh, citrus registration in Lake Alfred, Florida. And she's in a high position in APHIS. Uh, you know, she gets a good salary. You can bug her. And you can copy me. You can tell her that I gave her contact. Let's put her to work. Yeah, yeah, I heard her lecture uh, uh, this year or last year, early. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah you. but um, you know, if you have such specific questions about tomato ring spot, uh, Papu may be a good person to contact as well. You may have, uh, Pap you may know Papu. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, worked, work I was in uh, Washington State University for some time with Papu. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, those yes, things, uh, I'll there may be... That. Mm -hmm. yeah, there may be answers, but you cannot get uh, something without getting certified. Yes. Or if you have to get, you have to get it to your institute, NPPGR, and then you test them before you give to industry. Yes. You cannot afford to get those diseases there. Dr. Manjana, sir, uh, last question is uh, one question from uh, Madhavi. Was there any problem faced due to symptom masking in biological indexing? Yeah, exactly. That is the reason why we go for um, both um, biological indexing and uh, um, 
lab testing that's exactly because of that um many even the uh, you know there are many of uh, many diseases that may not show symptoms all the time so um and some of them may take long and you know we have uh, we can only offer to put two or three indicator plants and that may not be enough all the time so uh and many uh, there are years when our biological condition uh, indexing completely fails and we have to do it over next year yeah. and it is very you know it can be very expensive but uh, we have standardized the ucr has a standard uh, um soil mix for citrus and we use those things we try to make several modifications over the years light conditions we provide 16 hours light citrus you know especially in the winter and all that we have shorter days we do a lot of things but still uh, we don't trust biological indexing alone so to the end of your talk sir one is statman probes if you are using may be more expensive is it better to use replace any other probe because when it becomes array the number of arrays increases the probes synthesis cost will go up see yeah, that, that's, that's exactly the yeah you hit that point that's exactly why uh, i love array because 10 different labs don't have to buy 10 different tackman probes one lab can buy the probes and make these plates and we can all share and uh, uh sure sure ah. yeah so yeah that's the uh, common you know, source and the distributing can it works out cheaper but individual labs to work means it is becomes expensive Yeah, yeah exactly uh, you know if you you are you are focusing on tomato you are a tomato person you can make no, arrays we work yeah and you can distribute to other labs uh, somebody is working on beans they can do it you know there may be some cost sharing you know per plate you say you pay x number of uh, rupees or uh, dollar whatever um, you know reasonable way um we can develop a system or um, uh that's the advantage is that uh, you know i do 1000 tests you do 10 tests and some other lab does 100 tests and uh you know cost becomes ex- even if i am doing you know 1000 assays in a one year or two years i don't the probes can degrade uh, it depends on how i handle how someone in the lab handles and all the most of these problems can be solved if uh, you, you know by using array now think about it i yeah. uh, have sure. emphasized on certain things but there are a lot more advantages of yeah that. sure sir thank you very much and we will be in touch sir i will send a mail to you Uh, we have Thank some you. common interest where we need some the RSS for uh, at least some pathogens which are of citrus are there, but they do occur in ornamental crops, virates and all. So where yeah, we yeah. have a lot of importance for detection in quarantine purpose. Thank you, sir. We, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. We now invite Dr. Celia Chalam. Uh, time is running short. Dr. Celia Chalam uh, is a principal scientist working in National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, and she has obtained PhD from uh, N. G. Ranga University, and also worked in uh, Ikrisat for a doctoral degree there, and joined ARS. And uh, she is our colleague actually. Initially, she joined our Indian Institute of Horticulture Research, and then moved to Delhi. and after delhi she is concentrating on plant quarantine biosecurity issues working on several projects and also visited several countries and worked sometime in uh, uh, washington state university and has a experience in uh, plant quarantine and biosecurity 
and conducted more than 14 uh, trainings for plant quarantine and customs officials for transboundary movement of uh, living modified organism uh, or genetic material and she also published several books and manuals and more than 75 papers and uh, she also got an award the rdgv prasad rao memorial award uh, 2012 for her outstanding contribution to the plant biosecurity and she is now recognized member of party will day study group international taxonomy of viruses during 16 17 and she served as expert member of project monitoring and evaluation of national certificate tissue culture based plants with this brief i request dr silya shalam to start her presentation and share thank you dr krishna reddy garu uh, could you see my screen yes 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 okay thank you so much for the kind introduction uh, at the outset i would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to make a presentation on international and national regulations for safe transboundary movement and quarantine of genetically modified organisms my talk would be more on regulations and also uh, diagnostics in quarantine of genetically modified organisms as dr Anita would be speaking on uh, non transgenics uh, this is basically for gmos this is for that uh, benefit of the students the genetically modified organisms are those whose genetic makeup is altered using recombinant dna technology in my talk when i say gmo are genetically engineered organism or living modified organisms interchangeably and they are uh, synonyms so in traditional breeding what happens is many genes are transferred and in uh, using biotechnology recombinant uh, dna technology a single gene is transferred so these are the uh, gm crops being grown globally like the center ones are uh, like they have been grown since very long Uh, soya bean maize cotton uh, all are for either insect resistance or herbicide tolerance papaya papaya for papyrin the spot virus and the sideways what i had put they are more recent ones like brinjal all of you know it is grown in uh, bangladesh now philippines and then potato for non browning and even apple it is commercially approved for growing in us and uh, safflower sugar cane sugar beet and even pineapple so it, it is grown um, uh, in more than 190 million hectares across the globe whether it is usa or canada or uh, asian countries like uh, india philippines myanmar african countries like sudan and uh, even the european union if you look at it portugal is growing maize and uh, spain is also growing and uh, this is uh, uh, from the website of isa and uh, you can see across the country across the globe many countries are growing gm crops and if you see uh, the top 5 countries india is in the fifth position and us brazil in central and in southern uh, america argentina canada its the uh, adoption is anywhere between 90 to 100% and uh, if you look at the crops the soya bean occupies the major area 48.2% uh, and then followed by corn and then cotton and uh, other crops so the contribution of gm crops is the increase the crop productivity conserve biodiversity and uh, reduce the carbon dioxide emissions and provide a better environment for example with bt cotton you are all aware there is a reduced pesticide sprays and uh, it helps to alleviate the poverty and hunger to meet the sustainable development goals of united nations so then why biosafety concerns the biosafety is the policies and procedures adopted to ensure the environmentally safe application of modern biotechnology and biosafety is even followed for vaccine development and even for uh, pesticides but my talk biosafety is towards the genetically modified organisms 
And these are the concerns related to uh, gen GM crops, that is issues related to gene flow. Probably the genes which are there in the um, GM crop, if they go to the other crops, it is again a case-to-case -case basis. If BT, a cotton BT gene goes to other varieties, there it is a positive effect. But if the herbicide tolerance gene goes to the other weeds, then the weeds become more weeding, super weeds. And then there are health related issues like food and feed and allergenicity, toxicity. And but all these issues are well taken care of in the international and national regulations. I'll be giving you the overview about it. And also, of course, social and ethical issues. And these are some of the regulations internationally, uh, whether it is in USA, Australia, European Union, Canada, and uh, even a small countries like uh, Bhutan has the regulatory framework in place. Uh, including our uh, country. And so what are the international regulations? International regulations, what we have is the international protocol, Katahina protocol on biosafety. And uh, it was uh, uh, started in Katahina, uh, the city in Colombia, and later on it had adapted in Canada. But the name is Katahina protocol on biosafety. The objective of Katahina protocol on biosafety is to ensure safe transboundary movement of living modified organisms resulting from modern biotechnology from one country to another. And then exporting country need to provide enough scientific information about the risks of GMOs. And it was negotiated under Convention on Biological Diversity and presently 173 parties are, parties means nations. And then India ratified the protocol on 17 January 2003. The latest one is Sierra Leone on 15th of June 2020. And these are some of the elements. Uh, I'll not going to read out everything, but there is a provision for risk assessment and risk management, liability and redressal, and uh, one which is pertaining to my talk, handling, transport, packaging, and identification. And uh, uh, there is a provision for monitoring and reporting and the biosafety clearinghouse. I'll give you more details about this and capacity building and precautionary principle. If you look at the sanitary phytosanitary agreement, that is a science-based. If you will need to say this particular pest is present in USA or uh, India, it should be uh, supported by the peer-reviewed general publication or annual reports of 500 copies. But uh, this pro uh, international protocol has the provision for precautionary principle. So even if the particular country has a doubt, they can always postpone the import. So uh, what are the articles related for unintentional transboundary movements and emergency means like uh, gene flow through natural process or accidental contamination, Article 17 talks about it. And then handling, transport, packaging, intentional in uh, movement, Article 18 talks about it, and illegal transboundary movements, Article 25 talks about it. And this Katina protocol and biosafety is available on the website of uh, CBD, or if you simply Google Katina protocol, you have the, the PDF uh, format. And then the, in Article 18, the para one specifies requirements and identification, like what information need to be provided in documentation accompanying it. And para two talks about intended use of LMOs, whether it is for food or feed or processing, like soybean seed that is used as a like LMO. But if it, the soybean oil is used out of transgenic soybean, that is a processed one. And feed, for example, BT cotton cake, that is used for feed. And then uh, seeds for intentional introduction into the environment, of course, you have the examples of BT cotton, BT brinjal, and then LMOs for contained use, for example, bacteria for laboratory experiment, or even uh, the seeds which come into the country for research purpose comes under contained use. And para three talks about future development of standards for handling, packaging, transport, and identification of LMOs. So uh, the biosafety clearing house, especially for the students and young scientists, this is a very good uh, resource for to get any information related to the biosafety and then what are the crops being grown, what are the genes being used, what are the national and international regulations. Everything is given on this portal. Biosafety clearing house is not a brick building, it is a portal. 
and uh, it is like a bank you have cash then only you can withdraw the money right like that if you have all the information is posted on this portal and uh, all the member countries are required to post the information india, india is a party to katahina protocol and biosafety and then ministry of environment forest climate change the advisor is the national focal point and uh, you can uh, get the information uh, even if you simply google also you it will take you to the uh, this site and coming to the national regulatory framework for gmos or lmos in india the rules 1989 rules for the manufacture use import export and storage of hazardous microorganisms and genetically engineered organism cells under environment protection act 1986 if you remember my previous slides uh, this act was enacted even before the first release of uh, commercial release of first gm crop in 1994 in usa flower cyber tomato and uh, uh, even before the katahina protocol and biosafety came into existence we india has a robust regulatory framework in place for whether it is import export or field trials or pharmaceutical products or uh, unintentional or intentional in release and manufacturing so these are the statutory committees uh, the recommended dna advisory committee this has a role of advice on biosafety technologies and uh, review committee on genetic manipulation this actually under department of biotechnology it uh, helps in the scientific risk assessment of plants animals biopharma microbes and guidelines and institutional biosafety committee if any one of you uh, are working on uh, gm uh, transgenics you need to put up your application through institutional biosafety committee to review committee on genetic manipulation and get the approvals and also the limited field trials uh, review committee on genetic manipulation gives the approvals and finally uh, after the um, providing all the biosafety data genetic engineering appraisal committee gives the approval for environmental release uh, and like earlier it used to be called approval but now it is appraisal committee these are uh, diff and then state by technology coordination committee district level committee they all approve post monitoring release and uh, these are the ministries uh, there are four minis five six ministries are involved and even icr is responsible for monitoring agronomic benefits of the ge technology and post release performance of ge crops so these are some of the regulations which uh, control the gm crops like you have the convention on biological diversity cbd that is an international one we have biological diversity act 2002 this is a national regulation and seeds act 1966 pvp fra 2001 fssa 2006 and of course plant quarantine order 2003 these are all uh, even drugs and cosmetics act 1940 and uh, these are all the uh, regulations and guidelines have been prepared over the years right from 1990 to 2016 you can um, see there are guidelines for contained use confined field trials food safety assessment environmental safety assessment and even before the katahina protocol came into existence india has guidelines in place you look at these dates 1990 onwards and then it is a dynamic process and these guidelines are being updated and why do we need confined field trials because when you develop a transgenic you need to evaluate the expression and effectiveness of the engineer trait and evaluate the agronomic performance and generation of the biosafety data like uh, your food safety data toxicity and allergenicity data these are all you cannot just grow out without uh, any con containment or even if it is a field trial you need to have all the basic fencing and other details you can see here the, um, this slide uh, i got from dr viba ahuja by the consortium india limited you can see the fencing you can see the physical barrier and uh, the field need to be demarcated especially when you uh, do these uh, contained field trials and then you need to put the restricted entry boards and then uh, once the experiment is done you need to destroy the material either through dumping or uh, incineration so uh, these are all uh, very very important 
and uh, this is the uh, whoever wants to do the research you need to apply through the ibsc to rcgm and rcgm uh, gives the permission to conduct the greenhouse trials and then the GEAC gives the uh, confined field trials approvals and after giving all the data, then it is uh, released into the environment. It takes about eight to 10 years. I will not go into the uh, details right from the concept testing and validation to gene identification and then event selection trials, confined field trials, and then submit the whole dossier on toxicity, allergenicity uh, data and the pollen flow data so if you look at the health safety assessment these are the um, details the developer need to give including the whether there is an alteration in nutrient composition or toxicity potential allergenicity potential nowadays you have the bioinformatics available so that gives in initial uh, information whether the what the gene you are going to use will have any allergenicity. But of course, you need to do the pepsin digestibility, thermal stability, and other uh, lab tests also apart from bioinformatics. And environmental safety includes the um, assessment of readiness potential, traceability and gene flow, or effect on uh, soil microflora, or effect on pest diseases and beneficial insects like honeybees and so after producing all this data to the uh, GEAC, then only the approval comes into place. So whatever it is released into the environment, it is all tested and uh, with the biosafety data only. And also recently the GEAC uh, has uh, initially introduced the requirement to seek the NOC, no objection certificate from the state prior to conduct a confined field trials but uh, later on, in 130th meeting in 2016, remove the clause of obtaining an OC from state governments for event selection trials, which are small scale done. So this is an improvement. And these are some of the sites. The younger generation can uh, look into these sites and learn more about it. And uh, these are some of the recombinant therapeutics approved for marketing in India. For example, human insulin for diabetes. It is a recombinant therapeutics. Uh, if you want to uh, have these slides, uh, uh, you can ask the organizers. These are about uh, 38 recombinant uh, um, pharmaceuticals approved for marketing in India. And then um, you know the success story of BT cotton in India, and uh, it is the rank first in the global cotton production in 2016. And BT brinjal, of course, the GESC recommended the approval of commercial cultivation of BT brinjal. And uh, in 2010, MOEF and CC announced the moratorium on the approval and uh, Bangladesh has approved for, and then it is being grown there. And uh, genetically engineered mustard, again, like uh, it is uh, deferred for the time being for environmental release into India. And when this was approved by uh, GESC, I was actually with the developer in 2016. Uh, we both uh, went to Amity University and uh, Dr. Vibha, uh, Delhi University and Dr. Pentel's group. They were very happy, but this has been deferred for some time. And these are some of the crops, 85 crop species are under various stages of R&D in India, but they, are, um, they need to develop all the biosafety data before they actually get introduced into the environment. Uh, if any one of you is interested, you can go through this paper 2016 by Ranjani Warrior and Hema Pandey. And coming to the second part of my presentation, quarantine of transgenic planting material, like uh, why quarantine? Because the transboundary movement of material across the globe, whether it is a not, not, not only air cargo, even the passenger airplanes, they a um, lot of material comes into the country and uh, uh, this carry has the inherent risk of introducing the spread of pests. For example, um, grapes powdery milieu, which has gone from North America to Europe, it has destroyed the grapes plantation. And I'm not going into details because Dr. Manoharachari also talked about the effect of coffee rust and how it changed the food habits. And this is one recent introduction of uh, wheat blast uh, first emerged in Brazil 1985, but then uh, uh, it's 
has been introduced into Bangladesh. It was attributed to series of grain imports from Brazil. And uh, this is one example of uh, banana bunchy top virus introduction into India from Sri Lanka in 1943. And then it is spread over across the country. And uh, this national certification system for tissue culture raiser plant DVT government of India is now spending crores of rupees uh, to provide the farmers the virus free material through accredited labs and through the referral labs. And uh, there are about uh, uh, certified 450 million plants of banana, potato, sugarcane as on uh, September 2020, but 80% um, is banana. And uh, it goes with the certified label that these plants are free from viruses and free from uh, and true to type. So this is a uh, first of its kind in uh, the world. And it again goes back to the introduced virus. And uh, I'm not going to details, probably Dr. Anita will give all these details. I just want to mention that transgenic germplasm quarantine is done only at Delhi. And this is the, the we this is uh, followed done at, as per the plant quarantine order 2003. There are 1,261 regulated pests and uh, 264 are viruses and 57 weeds. So this is uh, like, if you want to, as a researcher, you want to import any material, you need to apply to the uh, director NBPGR for import permit. And then here we do the quarantine processing. And uh, uh, then for, if you want to export the material, uh, jump plasm, we give the photosanitary certificate. And we do have GM detection laboratory, which is a national referral laboratory. Uh, and NABL accredited laboratory as per the Gazette notification. And uh, what is the national mechanism to import? You need to application should be uh, applied to the review committee on genetic manipulation through institutional biosafety committee. And then import clearance letter is issued to RCG based on the recommendation of RCGM gives the import clearance and on the basis of import clearance import permit is issued by ICR and BPGR. I'll just show you uh, for the benefit of the students and young scientists this is how the RCGM gives the import clearance mentions the name of the inventor and the uh, uh, country of origin and also gives the details of the genes and also what are the samples being imported all the details are given and also like once it is given, then NBPGR gives the import permit. You can see here the consignment is from USA and it should be free from high plains virus, MMC, maize chlorotic mortal virus, wheat stick mosaic virus, and uh, even uh, bacteria, pentoia, and burkhold area. So, and then the USDAF is, is the National Plant Protection Organization, gives the photosanitary certificate stating that. Uh, this is free from the pest mentioned in the import permit by the ICR and BPGR. And also we need to check the commercial invoice. And we have uh, brought out guidelines for import and quarantine of transgenic planting material. And uh, if anyone of you wants, you can write to me, I can send you a copy of it. And then this is how the entire procedure goes. Like once we have the import clearance, then uh, import permit and photosanitary certificate, all the documents are checked and then the all the scientists inspect the material i'll uh, go into the details like uh, so far we have introduced uh, more than 16000 uh, transgenic germplasm mind you this is not a commercial material it's only for research purpose whether it is rice tobacco cotton soya bean uh, eucalyptus arabidopsis brassica spawns and everything is quarantined and uh, then only it is gone to the inventor this is the containment facility of level four with high efficiency particulate filter so that no pollen or no pathogen goes outside and this is the growing area and this is the lab area and um, this is the uh, joint in, uh, inspection done by the virologist, nematologist, pathologist, and entomologist. And uh, we also have the provision to undertake the post-entry quarantine at the indenter site. You can see the crops are mentioned here. 
and then uh, all the MNCs follow all the rules and regulations and we do the risk analysis once we get the material into the country and these are some of the um, ready references. And for example, if you are importing a transgenic wheat uh, from um, Australia, for example, we know that uh, barley stripe mosaic, it is just a um, assumption I'm making. So you know that barley stripe mosaic virus can come into the country. And uh, even uh, corn, if it is coming from USA, we are very careful that these viruses do not come into the country. Are the transgenics free from pests? Very big, no. You have the, you can see here like uh, the fungus and then the soil clads and insect infestation. And uh, these are some of the techniques I'll go quickly. And uh, these are the um, entomologies, uh, soft x-rays. All the seeds are uh, exposed to the soft x-rays. They absolutely look very healthy from outside, but when you expose them through the soft x-ray, you can see the uh, infestation here, the dots. These are infested by brookets and child seeds and small seeds are subjected to seed transparency. And these are some of the interceptions. Uh, and the, um, the uh, do not underestimate the conventional techniques uh, like microscopy for uh, taxonomic identification. Although the uh, molecular techniques are important, but conventional techniques are also equally important in quarantine. And these are some of the uh, fungi intercepted. You can see the downy mildew intercepted in transgenic soybean from USA. And uh, these are the techniques used for bacteria and uh, interceptions. And uh, nematologists do all these tests and then um, including the molecular ones. But again, here tax, uh, conventional taxonomy is very, very important. And the flag guidance best see, we have it in India, but it has a 21 races. So it is quarantine significance. Some other techniques used for detection of viruses, like uh, wherever the symptomatic seeds, we remove them and the absolutely healthy looking seeds are grown in a post century quarantine in containment facility and these are the symptomatic ones and also we test the asymptomatic ones also and we do the electron microscopy and then uh, ELISA we have antisera for 60 viruses and we have the protocols for reverse transcription PCR and uh, multiplex PCR protocols you can see here cherry leaf roll virus tomato ring spot virus not reported from India and uh, real-time PCR protocols, uh, these are representative slides, bean pod mortal virus not reported from India, and the helicase-dependent amplification and loop-mediated isothermal amplification. But you, I'm showing all these uh, techniques. Uh, we don't use all these techniques, and we use uh, we start with electron microscopy and the uh, antisera, which is a good quality one with cross no cross reactivity. If the results are good, we stop there. If the, there is any doubt, uh, ambiguous results, then we go for molecular techniques. And uh, these are the, some of the examples. Barley stripe mosaic virus was stopped to enter from uh, Philippines into India and high plains virus from USA to, into India. And we stopped from France and wheat streak mosaic virus was stopped entry into India from uh, across the globe, like a small country like Puerto Rico and then Philippines, France, and uh, soybean, uh, one sample has come from USA and we found uh, these many viruses and uh, five of them are not reported from India. We stopped their entry. And if you look at it, there are viruses not reported from India are present in India, but not on the host or restricted distribution. So, and then these are some of the techniques used to salvage the material. Maybe Dr. Anita will give more details, uh, but these are same for transgenics and all the transgenics are tested for absence of um, terminator gene technology that is embryogenesis deactivated gene. All these 16,000 samples are tested as per the law. In India, we cannot use this technique or we cannot import the seeds with this technique. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we uh, approved and disposed the material uh, both at NBPGR and at the indenter site. I'm coming to the end. And uh, uh, for the material meant for export, we give the photosanitary certificate. And these are some of the challenges like availability of anti or detecting an unknown pest. And uh, we have, uh, we do the capacity building as 
plant quarantine and customs officials also need to be um, uh, awareness among customs officials is actually very, very important. We have conducted 14 training workshops across the country and uh, uh, about 400 quarantine and customs officials were trained and uh, there was an incapacity building like uh, we got an opportunity, like you can see all the quarantine stations, officials and MOEF and DBT uh, visited uh, Australia. And then um, like the issues are similar across the globe. Like uh, these are the countries you mentioned here and issues like uh, movement of quarantine officials, awareness, infrastructure, but no manpower or infrastructure, but no operational cost. These issues are common across the uh, globe. And uh, this is uh, probably, uh, uh, if we have not intercepted bean pod mortal virus into the country, we could have caused uh, ill losses of many million rupees. And uh, the uh, US and Australia has national planned biosecurity diagnostic networks, and they use the same reagents and they have the fact sheets across the country. And India also needs to have the national plant based diagnostic network. Uh, with the probably with the help from I, IIHR Bangalore, IIRI, NBPGR, and other stations. And uh, this is the one important information. These are the four national referral laboratories for GMO detection uh, based at uh, North India and then uh, southern part of the country, even in Andhra Pradesh, DTML Guntur. So you can send the samples to these uh, referral laboratories. They have the obligation to test the material. Um, and uh, I'll, yeah, so there is a need for harmonization of Katahina protocol and biosafety and sanitary phytosanitary agreement, mobilization of quarantine personnel in the field of GMO detection. And of course, there is a need to revise the pest list of PQ order because some viruses are already present in India and virus names are not as per ICTV. So we need to revise the list and also uh, meeting the challenges in detection of viruses, especially for bulk imports for commercial purpose, we need to um, build the capacity. And of course, the awareness among customs officials, we have done our bit, but time to time, we need to uh, conduct the trainings. And uh, so generate the awareness of biosafety and biosecurity concept per se, and the need to ensure that documents are in place and we need must appreciate the importance of verification of documents. And we need to realize that there are laboratories involved in detection of LMOs and uh, um, try to visit these sites. So I would, at the end, I would like to thank ICR, NBPGR, Department of Biotechnology, Ministry of uh, Environment, Forest, Climate Change, and United Nations Environment Program, Global Environment Facility for funding and uh, Dr. Viva Ahuja, Biotech Consortium India Limited. She used to come to our training workshops for as a resource person. So uh, we learned a lot, not only Dr. Viva, but Dr. Ranjani Warrior, Dr. Morali, and uh, many other resource persons uh, were in, who involved in conducting all these more than 25 training workshops. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. I'm sorry. You, yeah. Now the topic is open for one question only because shortage of time. Any one important question? If there are no questions, now I thank uh, Celia for excellent presentation. Now may, we may request Dr. Alam Suresh. Dr. Suresh, you are there. Yeah, before I start, uh, I introduce Dr. Suresh was actually working with Syngenta in India. He was with uh, commercial uh, seed industry for a quite long time and has a wide experience in uh, plant pathogens and also developed uh, several uh, diagnostic uh, protocols and uh, also identification guides in uh, vegetable crops. Later on, he moved to maize, cement, and working now in African Center. 
his contribution for maize lethal necrosis and all other uh, is a serious important and especially developing uh, resistance uh, lines and then distributing and sharing and uh, we would like to hear from dr suresh the advances made uh, in uh, maize viruses thank you dr suresh you can share your yeah. presentation yeah uh, uh, thank you sir uh, good morning everybody uh, for the kind introduction i thank our organizers for giving me an opportunity to share the progress made in maize lethal necrosis one of the deadly viral diseases in uh, eastern africa and and also i thank uh, celia madam for uh, looping in uh, this sessions uh, she felt like uh, this is one of the important topic for uh, transboundary pathogens especially in the emerging uh, diseases so uh, how much time i do have sir i uh, see you can present for 20 minutes and 5 minutes we will leave for discussion there is a running okay, shortage okay. Okay, I'll, I'll just uh, try to manage. So uh, I will be presenting with outline of uh, maize lethal necrosis disease and uh, global occurrence and distribution of uh, MLN and MCMV and uh, uh, disease resistance for breeding program, safe seed movement with effective quarantine measures, disease diagnosis and surveillance, and how we made a uh, effort and pathogen free commercial seed production and exchange. And we also trained several partners on disease diagnosis and surveillance. and also we have a fully dedicated mlna portal and community of practices in africa maize is life you know every single family and it is a very minimum food and it is essential for every simple uh, families and they take uh, maize as the day to day food maize lethal necrosis is uh, uh, is is new to uh, africa 2011 uh, with the introduction of maize chlorotic mottle virus especially when it get associated with one of the party virus and in this case especially sugarcane maize virus it becomes a very uh, devastating disease the disease first reported in kenya uh, 2011 further it is reported in uganda tanzania rwanda bihar congo and ethiopia luckily it has not spread to southern africa like zimbabwe zambia malawi which is the food bowl of africa so uh, a study was conducted during 2013 by dr hugo et al to understand the the spread and impact of the mln and its implication on the uh, crop uh, productions it is understood that around 180 million dollars worth maize alone uh, is lost it was identified in kenya and further it is been further understand in 2018 where uh, the publication is about to be available in next few weeks so the disease has uh, drastically come down from the almost uh, 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 more than uh, 60 70% of uh, disease spread now it is almost 20 23% disease is there so you can imagine uh, there is a tremendous effort has been done to contain and prevent the spread of maize chlorotic mosaic uh, virus or mln in eastern africa so you may be in uh, uh, wondering uh, how this spread uh, and first of all let us under, uh, let me tell you this uh, mln is the association of two viruses maize chlorotic mottle virus one of the party virus in this case sugarcane mosaic virus is the key virus so in this uh, combination uh, the virus is become deadly and individually they also cause uh, diseases but in the recent uh, my epidemiological studies when maize chlorotic mottle virus associated with sugarcane mosaic virus the infection at early stage is going to be much devastated than in the later stage of infection and most uh, likely all the germ plasm grown in eastern africa is highly susceptible so these two are the key factors and Uh, many times people have uh, difficulties in identifying the symptoms to make you aware that the symptoms is uh, very simple to identify it has a chlorotic specks spots initially and uh, slowly it enlarges and coalesces and forms a coalesce uh, uh, chlorotic streaks and then, uh, and then mosaic and sometimes depending on the germ plasm uh, whether it also shows mottling and then uh, necrosis is at a later stage 
It also shows different symptoms, uh, either in terms of uh, uh, less filled grains or internal uh, nodal shortage, uh, short, uh, short internal node distance that is also found. So this disease in the world is not new. It is first reported in the USA uh, around 1973, 76, and it was more in the USA, uh, Thailand, and then China, and and 2011 it has started in Kenya, and and further it has again come to Ecuador and Taiwan, Spain. So uh, after 2016, 17, it has not further moved. Uh, thank God it is. Uh, Still, it is there somewhere in the Spain or Taiwan, but it is not for the notice uh, elsewhere. So it is a uh, uh, moving diseases all over, uh, like any other diseases. Why uh, uh, the MLN is devastating in Eastern Africa? Because MCM is the new to the region and uh, potential new uh, strains of uh, sugarcane mosaic virus. And Africa is very conducive for many plant diseases because uh, there is a continuous growing of maize <coughs> growing of maize and then second is a uh, uh, lot of viral inoculum available in the uh, cropping vicinity and uh, since the MCM is also sea contaminations so that is easy to spread around and lot of germplasm is susceptible these factors is making uh, the disease more aggressive and widely spread in the regions so uh, CIMIT, uh, uh, we, we have uh, done a, a quite comprehensive effort to contain and prevent the spread of uh, maize lethal necrosis. Many people uh, do consider one approach is the best, like uh, breeding for disease resistance, no doubt, that is the best way, but that is not the only way to contain and prevent the spread. So CIMIT has started in developing and the identifying and developing disease resistant varieties with uh, partners winning with uh, NARS and seed companies 2013. And, but we extensively moved on uh, MLN diagnostics and understanding the epidemiology of the virus with uh, collaboration with various institutions in the US and Kenya. And we actually trained various seed companies in terms of producing disease-free seeds. We developed uh, a comprehensive protocol for developing the uh, disease-free seeds. We also took a very serious uh, and rigorous monitoring surveillance mechanisms. I will explain in a, uh, the slide very briefly, but the information is available in the web portal. We also uh, provided a lot of agronomic management practices, and we trained so many uh, NARS and uh, uh, private partners uh, and, and to understand these uh, uh, diseases and create awareness. So with this comprehensive uh, management practices, we are able to prevent and contain the spread of diseases within the Eastern Africa. Even in Eastern Africa, the disease is now uh, coming down. So as uh, I said, that when the disease started, the farmers are very uh, uh, worried about the food and they were not able to harvest any food, but now they are smiling in the uh, farm. So uh, as I uh, coming to the uh, quarantine facilities, so in uh, Kenya, uh, where I work, uh, uh, especially here, we have established uh, 20 hectares of quarantine facilities where you can see uh, with the laboratory, greenhouse, screen house, and a field where uh, you can see, uh, uh, just a second, okay. So here you can see, uh, the, the, this is the disease screening field where we do conduct a disease screening for a various germplasm coming from the, uh, private partners, NAS and CIMIT. And now we have able to, we are able to identify and develop the disease resistance hybrids with a distinct uh, resistance of uh, 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 maize germplasm to MLN and susceptible germplasm you can see here. So uh, we have screened more than 200,000 germplasm under artificial screening facilities and of which 61% uh, is coming from CIMIT, 70 percent is from NAS, 22 percent from private seed sectors. So it is not that CIMIT alone. It is the beauty is that public-private partnership. We are engaged and I enable all the partners to conduct research to bring disease resistant as early as possible so that uh, together we win the battle of ML. 
when the disease has started, we were only having five in bed lines that were uh, tolerant or resistant to MLN. Today, uh, with the advance of science and uh, uh, constant breeding strategies and uh, efforts, we are able to identify and develop more than 50 breeding lines, elite lines, which were susceptible. Now we are making them resistant to MABC technologies. So uh, in this facility, uh, we have adopted various uh, stringent procedures in terms of the, uh, inoculation protocol or maintaining the high uh, standard facilities or process because uh, the process means uh, high quality irrigation, automated fertigations, and also data qu taking qualities, and also phytosanitation measures. These uh, steps has uh, enabled uh, us to get a good quality of data and making uh, the, the clear uh, uh, the relation susceptible already. So we also developed a clear cut uh, disease protocol, uh, and also we made one to nine rating scales where you can see one being completely resistant and nine being uh, completely susceptible. And can see the degree of susceptibility as the rating increases. So this is the interesting part. Uh, what is means that uh, CML442, one of the very popular uh, line, which is drought tolerance going everywhere in the Africa, uh, it is highly susceptible. And likewise, there are many such lines, very popular, but susceptible. And on those days, we were only having one or uh, two lines, as I mentioned, less than five lines, which is good. Yeah. So uh, very soon, I will tell you the uh, story has changed. So we also focused on improving the efficiency and quality of our uh, experimental data. So with, with the continuous improvement in the, in, the, in the screening methodologies, so we are able to improve the quality in terms of heritability. Today, we are able to get more than 0.9 heritabilities, and also the mean is also improving. And uh, this is one of the study conducted by breeding team. So it is not just uh, in a uh, uh, quarantine facility. We do undertake uh, studies in uh, various hotspots in uh, other locations in uh, uh, Africa, like Tanzania. Here you can see the very high disease pressure, whatever the hybrids is in screen here. And you can also see that level of resistance uh, it is uh, identified in other locations, uh, hotspots, meaning that this hybrid is quite stable and showing the consistent performance across the, the locations. And then the same hybrid with optimal conditions, you can see the very fantastic yield. And also under uh, the hotspot, you can see the good yield. It is not just showing the uh, uh, only green, but also yield is there. And if you see the commercial hybrids, uh, if you see the, uh, the percent loss yield reductions, it's almost 78%. Whereas uh, second generation hybrid, the yield loss is almost 3%. Such a drastic uh, progress has been done by our uh, breeding team. So with this kind of breeding efforts, we are able to uh, 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 release almost 19 hybrids to partners and now they're available in, from, to various partners in uh, Eastern Africa. So you can see the uh, type of resistant hybrids, uh, tolerant hybrids, and susceptible hybrids. Most of the hybrids which are available today in the market, these are highly susceptible. Of course, uh, it is not about uh, highlighting the uh, companies, but about the status of hybrids. But uh, whereas the new hybrids coming from CIMIT, you can see the uh, clear cut resistance. This is one of the success story in, uh, of, in Uganda, uh, the hybrid name called Bazooka, which is uh, drought tolerance, and MLN resistance, and the farmers is really very happy, and the seed companies are almost uh, distributing more than 2,000 uh, metric tons of seeds to farmers. And this is another story from Kenya. Again, the story is uh, similar. So I'm just uh, touching base on uh, some of the efforts on the molecular breeding. Uh, so this is the original uh, line which has uh, uh, resistance which is coming from Kesat start in Thailand, and that is the original donor source. And then uh, it is another susceptible line. So we identified the markers. As I mentioned earlier, this is the CML442, one of the most popular line. With the MABC technologies, we are able to uh, incorporate resistance and uh, making unfavorable. Now, uh, these lines are available for the partners, and it is completely showing resistance. Now they can make a 
more robust hybrids and uh, advanced uh, hybrids. So this kind of effort is being done, and now this uh, uh, hybrid uh, development is more easy. It is not just uh, uh, breeding efforts or molecular efforts. So uh, if you see in Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, it is there is no MLN at all, and we, but still we have our cement uh, research station in uh, uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, we take enough measures to send the seeds. We quarantine uh, first in the uh, Kenya. We test in our laboratory. Then we test in the KFIS laboratory. KFIS is like a NBPGR. Then if it is found free, then we send it to uh, Zimbabwe. When we send it to Zimbabwe, again, they test in the lab. After testing the lab, again, they take this, uh, these seeds, germplasms to uh, the quarantine facility. And after noticing it is completely clean, then they increase the seeds. So then only they will distribute in the Southern Africa. This is the success as a key for uh, keeping entire Southern Africa uh, free from MLN. So you can see uh, this effort is done in uh, Zimbabwe. This effort is in, done in Kenya. This is kind of a network efforts which uh, I'm helping uh, in various uh, capacities. So this is the same effort, but I just wanted to bring you the details. So we have uh, various other projects where uh, uh, to understand the, the factors associated in seed contaminations, where the MCM is localized. Whether it is uh, completely inside or outside, is the influence of genetic application. I'm going to bring this manuscript uh, and that will be published soon. And also we are trying to understand uh, the MCM, how long it will persist in the soil. So with these objectives of understanding on the epidemiological factors and various factors. So we kept on uh, building the surveillance network. So we developed a very simple uh, immunostip diagnostic uh, protocol to understand MCMV. Uh, though it is a simple protocol, but it becomes a powerful tool. Uh, almost in eight countries, we have trained more than uh, 8,000, uh, five to 8,000 officers uh, in various countries. And, and then they conduct a disease survey and surveillance and found uh, uh, clarity uh, in the various countries. These are the different surveillance points. Uh, so uh, with this information, we have put those uh, GPS points in the website. If you go, you can exactly know where exactly it has been studied, which variety, who has done. Every detail is available when you uh, uh, bring the cursor on the spot. So in, uh, in 2014, uh, we started the surveillance and it was in Kenya. And 2015, you can see Tanzania and Rwanda, Uganda has, you know, like everywhere it is started. And then further, we also noticed in 2016, it is further spreading. And then uh, again, in, it is still in, in Kenya. And if you see here in Ethiopia and other countries, and now still, uh, if you see here, uh, 2019, uh, the, it is completely uh, clean in Southern Africa, but still there is a lot of incidence in uh, Eastern Africa. Uh, the success is here, we could uh, completely keep this entire Southern Africa free from MLN or MCMV. That is one of the flagship of this project. Second, we are able to contain and prevent the further spread in Eastern Africa through various strategies, which I explained earlier. So of course, these are all uh, various efforts which we have done, uh, training, uh, understanding the seed samples, plant samples from various uh, companies. And it is the training efforts which we helped. And then a second point is that uh, various efforts we have done to produce the disease-free seeds uh, because various seed companies were not aware. Uh, so you have, you have to understand in one context, uh, when we uh, put our efforts to train uh, various companies, uh, the local regulatory bodies like MPPGR or uh, uh, such bodies, they're also equally cooperative to uh, check the uh, contaminated seeds in the field, uh, reject. So whatever the seed is given to farmers is completely free of diseases. That is the alignment between CIMIT and various partners in Africa. With that concerted efforts, we are able to check the uh, spread of diseases. Like that, we developed a various uh, uh, protocols like a checklist. Uh, so using checklist, they are able to uh, uh, produce the disease-free seeds. And also we developed various management practices and published in various languages in Africa. 
and now it is in Spanish. So this is another way, uh, way to help people to understand the disease management practices. And I think uh, this is the same procedures which I mentioned here. And most importantly, uh, if you see here, we are not just focusing NPPO seed companies, research institution, seed growers. So this uh, type of uh, engagement and training every year is, is the uh, key for uh, our, our continuous uh, success. And further, they're not only uh, training within uh, uh, their own uh, organizations, but they were also training the uh, farmers. So the training point has become uh, multitude. So that is uh, giving more success to uh, uh, the, the, the management of diseases. So uh, I could uh, uh, provide uh, training in various partners uh, with association of various uh, partners in terms of disease diagnosis, surveillance, uh, producing disease-free seeds, or management of diseases, or how to uh, conduct a, a survey, every aspect uh, I could uh, try to help the people here. And, and also various other, other organizations is associated here. And, and community of practices. Now, I would uh, rather uh, highlight this point. We, in any such diseases, especially transboundary diseases, uh, even in India, we should develop a community of practice. I know there is already available, but need to put more efforts to educate and, uh, and align the practices among the community. And also we need to uh, uh, bring some of the burning issue within the community and make it resolved there and then itself uh, instead of uh, further aggravating it. So by that, we are able to uh, contain further damage. So uh, not only that, we could also help uh, various other uh, policy makers this is a regional Africa community, uh, East African community, where various uh, policy makers are associated in uh, uh, drafting the policies. We engage policy makers to, uh, to consider these are all the steps which are required. Now it is also part of policy in various government. So all this information, whatever I was mentioning, it is available in the MLN web portal. You can just simply click on mln.summit.org uh, you can get most of the information. It is a one-stop shop where you can get all the details and I'm uh, constantly updating uh, as and when the details are available. So it is not just this information. Uh, we are also partnering with uh, Karteva companies in uh, gene editing. Uh, so we are facilitating to have uh, uh, the efficacy trials in, in uh, quarantine site, but they are doing the transformation studies in Karteva but we are able to get a very good success as of now, uh, but the success will be available very soon to the farmers. In summary, I can say maize lethal necrosis disease is, uh, in Africa is under control with uh, constant uh, surveillance, better quarantine measures, post-free period, producing disease-free seeds, that is a major step. Southern Africa is maintained free of MLN with safe exchange of uh, MLN-free seeds and emergency preparedness is available. And focus on MLN resistance breeding program with various tools and technologies and deployment of MLN resistance hybrids in Eastern Africa is another uh, effort we have done. And a strong uh, private and public partnership on producing MLN free seeds and management practices. With this, uh, uh, not only that, uh, very soon we are going to uh, uh, publish MLN management practice technical manual you will get all the procedures and uh, methodologies and technologies, whatever I, we are uh, working on uh, to the public in case if the uh, disease available are, uh, are identified in other countries. So it is a good step we have to, uh, for that measures. So all these efforts, whatever I mentioned, it has been published in uh, virus research. You can refer this article. Uh, you can get a lot of information to understand how this disease has been contained and prevented. I sincerely thank all the donor uh, uh, fraternity and also partners. Uh, so entire quarantine facility was given by Carl Rowe. Uh, we, we immensely thank them uh, for their, their gracious uh, support. They don't charge, but they completely allow us to do the research. And I sincerely take this opportunity to thank all uh, my colleagues in CIMIT for their immense uh, commitment and contribution for managing these diseases. Thank you very much. I would be happy to take any questions. 
either now or in the email or in the chat box. Yes, sir. Krishna, ready, sir? Hello? Hello? Suresh? Yeah. Does uh, MLN is spread to any other continent? No, for uh, you know, after we uh, hear from Spain, that was the last uh, MCMV. I'm not saying MLN, MCMV identified in Spain and, and Ecuador. After uh -huh. that, we did not hear, uh, especially 2017 and 2018, there was no further spread. Oh. But some of the symptoms looks like uh, somewhere it, in India also possibility, because many often people will confuse the symptom with uh, downy mildew. Or initially they don't recognize. Testing is important. Many people doesn't test that. Yeah, you are absolutely correct. Uh, many times, uh, multiple uh, situations like a drought, uh, nutrition deficiency, other diseases like uh, downy mildew, sometimes maize streak virus, often leads some confusions. Best ways to sort that out is to have a a simple diagnosis using immunostrips or ELISA or RTPCR. Yeah. So, what is the status of uh, polar viruses in uh, maize, the other continents? But China, it uh, is there. India, it is there. Yeah. Of course, Africa, we have not heard much uh, the incidence, anything uh, as of now. Okay. Thank you, Suresh. And uh, Nice talk, and uh, we'll be hearing more from you further. Uh, May, yeah. uh, because of lack of time, because we are overshooting. Now, I request the next presenter, Dr. Anita. Dr. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, some you message is coming. Uh, ah. Before that, I would like to introduce Dr. Anita, he is our close friend, and she is the charge head and principal scientist of NBPGR Hyderabad and she is doing a lot of service and uh, testing especially uh, quarantine samples uh, more than 70 or 7 lakhs samples and uh, she is serving the liaison officer and clearing most of the germplasm received from the ICRISAT and also CIMIT and, and uh, Asian Vegetable Center also and in addition, a lot of seed industry people which they bring uh, germplasm from outside. And most of the things with uh, southern part, uh, she is the, uh, the nodal officer which she is clearing the uh, germplasm lines after testing. And also in her testing, and she also uh, intercepted several pathogens of fungus, bacteria and viruses. And very actively working and silently doing and service and uh, now I request Dr. Anita uh, her experience to share on plant quarantine issues. Thank you Dr. Anita. Sir, so, I'm just trying to share the screen. It is there, only you put in uh, uh, Okay. Yes sir. Uh, very good morning to all of you and uh, thank you, sir, for the uh, nice uh, introduction about myself. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak about my uh, experiences in uh, plant quarantine uh, over the past 30 years or so. So, since uh, Dr. Celia, uh, Celia's topic was on uh, in, uh, national and international framework on uh, regulations, quarantine regulations. I thought uh, most of the uh, regulations would be covered and I didn't want to bore uh, the audience. So I have changed uh, my topic uh, to exotic pest incursions, a challenge for plant quarantine. Yeah. 
you all uh, my presentation would cover uh, in the following manner i just uh, touch upon the importance of quarantine and a few examples of uh, exotic pest incursions and the national quarantine regulations and uh, plan quarantine system in india very briefly i uh, i will make a mention about it and also the quarantine procedures not in detail one or two slides only and the quarantine interceptions like case studies uh, these are our uh, like experiences i would like to share how we have dealt with uh, these uh, quarantine pests and also finally the challenges at different stages of quarantine processing so i thought uh, most of our uh, audience uh, is plant production scientists so uh, we all can think and then uh, come to a common uh, like Uh, we can uh, raise these uh, challenges in any international or national uh, fora for uh, uh, bringing out the changes in policy at policy level all of you are well aware that uh, plan quarantine is an important uh, task uh, in fact uh, the, the germplasm exchange is uh, uh, essential for uh, crop breeding programs so when you get the germplasm from outside automatically uh, the uh, uh, insects and pests uh, the uh, pathogens they are likely to be carried along with the germplasm so we have to have a regulatory uh, protocol to uh, prevent the spread of entry and spread of those uh, exotic pests so this is uh, we will have to prevent the introduction establishment and spread this also quarantine also helps in export certification because we have to declare uh, give some additional declarations uh, for which uh, quarantine uh, testing is required <clears throat> to highlight the importance of uh, quarantine late blight of potato all of you are uh, uh, very well aware about the irish famine which occurred in 1845 uh, the pathogen uh, was introduced from central america to europe in 19th century so and it uh, caused a havoc Uh, powdery mildew downy mildew rotating a field of grapes uh, from america to france in mid 19th century and coffee rust from brazil to sri lanka in 1875 and also the lantana camera in early 19th century from central america to india even parthenium also uh, got introduced it was an accidental introduction uh, this is uh, very interesting like some of the insect pests you can have a look at it uh, this is uh, latest information uh, i have retrieved this uh, on 28th december uh, several insect pests have been uh, uh, introduced cotton mealy bug and uh, from north america affecting cotton and the in india punjab haryana maharashtra tamil nadu several other states are affected similarly eucalyptus gall in 2009 papaya mealy bug in 2012 Uh, 2014 uh, tomato leaf miner to the absolute uh, it's uh, it spread to almost all southern part of the country and uh, eriophyte mite coffee berry borer rugo spiraling white fly and even uh, weed onion weed asphodelus fistulosus uh, appeared in maharashtra which is a very uh, onion uh, producing state in india so the fall army bomb all of you are well aware about the damage it caused to maize so a uh, few examples i would uh, like to mention about uh, exotic pests number one is fusarium wilt uh, this is uh, uh, tropical race 4 in banana which is a threat this initially fusarium oxysporum formis species cubens it causes fusarium wilt in banana uh, later on uh, this due to uh, this tropical race four has been renamed as fusarium odoratissimum uh, after the taxonomic review in 2019 it entered india in 2018 uh, these are the states affected bihar uttar pradesh madhya pradesh and gujarat uh, some regulatory framework is highly essential to prevent its spread to the other uh, states the des to designate uh, the pathogen has to be the tropical race has to be designated as a quarantine pest it has to be on priority and we need to set up a monitoring set uh, system to promptly detect the incursions 
and the regulations have to be enacted uh, so that the national plant protection organization which is uh, dpptus in india it can intervene on uh, uh, farms banana orchards uh, to, for conducting inspections and also to collect the suspected samples and to enforce the incineration of the affected plants you can see the worldwide distribution of tropical race 4 uh initially uh, it was observed in southeast asian countries actually from uh, it was observed in taiwan introduced from indonesia and then uh, it spread to southeast asia and also australia and recently it appeared in uh, india entered in india and mozambique in 2017 the latest one is colombia in 2019 another one dr celia has already covered uh, made a mention in her uh, lecture about wheat blos magnopotte varese triticum it's prevalent in south america and bangladesh and it has the capacity to cause 100% yield losses uh, this is actually uh, to make a mention that uh, how our country has uh, taken up the challenge and from bangladesh it uh, entered two districts mushidabad and nadia but Uh, the government has enforced uh, regulations and the uh, lakhs of hectares of uh, wheat uh, were burnt due to the presence of uh, disease and crop holiday has been declared west bengal government has banned the cultivation in uh, two districts this is uh, the two districts uh, where uh, the wheat cultivation has been banned and these border districts also proper monitoring is uh, Uh, happening on regular basis to prevent the spread the other one is goa root knot nematode melaidogan entrelobi uh, this is also an important pest it is an endoparasite wherein the uh, nematode completes its life cycle within the host uh, and its first time recorded in china in 1983 on chinese akara eopod tree and uh, that is entrelobi um, species and it has got wide host range uh, many uh, fruit trees and also the crop species are also affected uh, due to this root knot nematode uh, the main symptoms are chlorosis leaf shedding stunting and severe root galling uh, the problem with this nematode is it's very difficult to distinguish between uh, the melaidogan incognita or other species of melaidogan and the melaidogan entrelobi many people have worked the reported for the first time in tamil nadu by purnima and her associates uh, then uh, they have mentioned about the distribution to andhra pradesh telangana and other parts of india uh, the latest one is gule and his associates they have worked on uh, the sequencing of this particular melaidogan entrelobi uh, infecting goa and confirmed the uh, identical identity and other uh, characteristics those who are interested they can refer this article and they have given beautiful uh, pictures also so these are the symptoms caused by the nematode uh, stunting is more prominent chlorosis and severe root galling you can see and the most important management uh, aspect for this root knot nematode is the development of robust and specific diagnostic molecular markers to identify the prevent and prevent the spread Of course, uh, Gule and his associates they have worked, and many people are also working on this. So, just to have an idea of how this Goa root knot nematode is uh, distributed uh, globally, you can see in India 2016, and year of introduction is also mentioned, China 1983. So, this I have already mentioned about uh, Spodoptera frugivida, and many people have. Uh, worked and found the solution and they are uh, able to manage the uh, pest to a greater extent nowadays this is uh, actually all of us were suffering from uh, this pandemic where the india and many other countries globally they are affected during this pandemic time in the month of june locust attack also uh, happened desert locust so uh, the affected states are mainly rajasthan madhya pradesh punjab gujarat uttar pradesh and maharashtra more than 50000 hectares uh, uh, are affected these are uh, interesting facts uh, fnao fao has uh, un 
they have uh, given the details. These uh, locusts are usually shy and solitary living uh, insects. And when they get crowded, they become uh, mini bees. So they become gregarious and mini bees. The color also, the color of the grasshopper or locust changes from brown to pink and then, then when they get matured, they turn to yellow. So you can just uh, have an idea. So the swarm can be the size of Paris or New York. And 40 million eat the same amount of food daily as 3 million people. So you can uh, imagine uh, the extent of damage that they can cause. So these are uh, some more. Uh, the locust attack in June 2020, you can see the incidents. Swarms and uh, adults all are indicated in different colors. And in the month of August, you can see the uh, group group hoppers are uh, more in number and the, how they have uh, even uh, the measures, monitoring teams are uh, uh, continuously on job to monitor the attack of locusts so as to prevent it spread to other uh, places. This is another one, the Bonders nesting whitefly. I have just taken few examples in uh, each uh, pest group. So this is a uh, whitefly uh, which is more prevalent on coconut and entered India in uh, 2016, Para Elidardis uh, bondari. It's actually native from neotropical region of Central America. And uh, now it has uh, come to even Andaman and Nicobar Islands also. It's already established in Indian mainland and many states are uh, affected. And even Andaman and Nicobar Islands are also uh, affected with this. In each leaflet up to approximately 25 uh, nest colonies are uh, there. So you, the natural enemy incidence also is uh, prevented because of the uh, pest attack, so which is not a good sign, and it warrants strict compliance of quarantine measures during uh, planting material exchange. This is the weed that I was talking about. It's very difficult to distinguish uh, between uh, this weed and onion, cultivated onion, and uh, mainly it's distributed in southern Europe, northern Africa, and western Asia, and in India, it's detected in the Maharashtra and Ahmednagar. It, can, it has the capacity to turn the fertile lands barren and affecting the yield. So coming to the plant quarantine system and the regulations that we follow, the basis for all our uh, quarantine regulations are uh, from uh, Destructive and Insects and Pest Act 1914. And later on, several uh, uh, modifications occurred and uh, several other orders have uh, come into vogue. Uh, which are plants, fruits, and seeds, regulation of importing to our, uh, India, uh, order 1984, which is revised in uh, 1989. Uh, here, the liberalization of import of seeds and other planting material was incorporated. And later on, Environmental Act, Protection Act, 1986, Biological Diversity Act, 2002. So, and also the plant quarantine regulation of import into India, order 2003. This is uh, we all quarantine uh, scientists are uh, considering this as Bible or Bhagavad Gita for uh, taking decisions. Uh, so till now, 84 amendments uh, have been uh, incorporated. And the last one is on 20th July. Coming to the framework, uh, quarantine framework in India, under Ministry of Agriculture, this is mainly for students. I am uh, just, I have incorporated this slide. Uh, Department of Agriculture Cooperation and uh, Farmers Welfare is there, and Department of Agriculture Research and Education. Our ICR and NBPGR works under the uh, umbrella of DARE. So, uh, as uh, Dr. Celia also mentioned, we have two quarantine stations in Delhi and Hyderabad. And the Consumption, commercial uh, consignments are dealt by the DBPQS, Director of Plant Protection, Quarantine and Storage, and under which uh, R, several RPQS, regional plant quarantine stations are there, and uh, different plant quarantine stations located in uh, like seaports or their airports, land frontiers, they are working under. 
uh, coming to N NBPGR, uh, we have 10 regional stations of which uh, uh, Hyderabad regional station is uh, trying to uh, cover the southern part of the country, whereas uh, New Delhi, our headquarters is taking care of the rest of the country. And uh, the types of uh, material under exchange, this is germplasm, transgenic, non-transgenic, breeding material, wild species, seed research products, research products such as uh, DNA, and also tissue culture products, dry leaf material, deep frozen green leaf material, and also lyophilized material. These are like these are all very rare that we get, but there are occurrences that we uh, we are uh, we have processed some uh, consignments of these kind. So here, I only I would like to mention that MBPGRR is Hyderabad Regional Station Hyderabad deals with only non-transgenics and that to seed. Whereas our uh, Delhi station, they come, uh, deal with both, both uh, transgenic and non-transgenic and even under non-transgenic seed and vegetatively propagated material. This is mainly to, you know, because vegetatively propagated material uh, shelf life is very less, so immediately action has to be taken and processing has to be done and released. So, for any quarantine scientist, uh, these are the schedules that we uh, look into in plant quarantine order. Schedule 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Schedule 4 covers the list of plants or planting material and countries from where the import is totally prohibited and suitable appropriate justification is also given in Schedule 4 against each uh, crop species. And Schedule 5 is restricted but only permissible through authorized institutions. And schedule 6 deals with the uh, lists of plants and plant material permitted import with additional declarations and special conditions. And schedule 7, uh, these are the plants or planting material. Imports are permissible on the basis of PSC only. No need of uh, applying for import permit in that. And quarantine weed species, uh, now the number is increased, 57. So earlier, uh, like, uh, it's, since it's very difficult to identify the weeds uh, in the crop, uh, along with crop seeds, we have uh, uh, collected the information and compiled the information. And this particular book uh, monograph has only 32 weed seeds. Uh, Later on, the number is increased. There is a need for a revision of uh, such type of documents. And uh, this is Helianthus californicus, which was intercepted uh, when uh, sunflower, along with the sunflower consignment. So this highlights the importance of document uh, verification. When you receive the uh, material consignment, initially you have to uh, check the documents. So when you when we were checking the document in the seed list, Helianthus californicus was also mentioned, which was along with the cultivated species. So immediately uh, we had uh, uh, rejected the particular sample. So document verification is crucial. This is in a nutshell about the quarantine processing uh, framework, how we go ahead with the procedure. So NPPGR deals with small samples only and uh, the untreated planting material is important and even in the import permit we make a mention that seeds should not be treated while uh, when you receive the material from outside because uh, we will not be able to carry out all these tests uh, once the seed is treated. So as soon as the material comes we conduct joint inspection by all plant protection group and depending upon the requirement specialized detection techniques are followed and only the pest free material is released. And whatever uh, uh, infested or infected material, we try to salvage through hot water treatment, X-ray radiography, fumigation, and other specialized treatments, and then uh, release the healthy samples to the indenters. And when uh, the special protocols are not there for a specific pathogen, we detain the samples or even reject the samples. If any quarantine pest is found, we reject the samples for release. And in spite of the instructions given in the import permit, we quite often receive the treated seeds and they are straight away grown in the post-entry quarantine nursery. Only thing is like we go for inspections uh, at the time of sowing to check whether they are following the isolation uh, 
uh, as per the requirement or not and then during crop growth also depending upon the requirement minimum two uh, inspections we carry out and only the harvest from disease free plants is released these are the testing procedures that we follow uh, some of the interceptions like uh, like highlight uh, bacterial built organism groundnut uh, from several countries we have uh, intercepted peanut stripe virus these are all quarantine virus for india and in soybean perennials for manchurica and peanut stripe virus sunflower tobacco streak virus xanthomonas scampus is falsicola and uh, bacolaria and propagonis sotham Dextera maidis and Pseudomonas, Sitinji and Pathua tomato in case of tomato. So, uh, this is uh, some uh, pictures I will show about the uh, incidence of uh, tobacco stick virus in sunflower. This is, uh, I think, most of our plant production group, they know very well about the uh, epidemic that occurred during 97 to 1997 to 2001 in southern part of the country. And uh, I'm, uh, I would like to make a mention about our uh, uh, predecessor, Dr. Late, Dr. Adivijay Prasad Rasar, who contributed a lot for uh, detection of uh, tobacco streak virus, uh, its uh, etiology. And recently, when we uh, had uh, grown these uh, uh, sunflower accessions from USA, around 400 accessions were received, and of which about 42 samples were found infected with tobacco street virus and we had detained those uh, samples. Another thing is uh, actually tobacco street virus is uh, uh, the Indian isolate. I heard that uh, Indian isolate of tobacco street virus is not seed born, but uh, if I am wrong, uh, others may correct. When from other countries, I think uh, two from two countries, Australia and one more uh, country, I think they, those isolates are uh, known to be seed bond. That's what I heard. This is another uh, Fusarium stock lot of maize from Chile. Uh, many accessions were affected with uh, wilt. Black rot of cauliflower and Sarcospora abelmache. These two are uh, quarantine pests for Votra and were intercepted from USA. Uh, the problem is. Uh, Black rot, although uh, the disease is present and uh, it's very famous in uh, our country, the biotypes and other uh, races are important. So identification up to uh, race level is uh, important to take a decision on its rejection or detain, uh, release of the consignment. So now uh, I would like to highlight about our uh, two, two case studies I would like to deal with. About uh, peanut stripe virus. Uh, it has got a history. Uh, it entered India uh, and USA through germplasm introductions, uh, mainly from China. And initially in India, it was observed at Ikrisad in 1987 on some uh, uh, trial entries. And since then, surveys uh, were conducted in 1987. Uh, here also, uh, Dr. RDVJ Prasad Rao sir, late Dr. RDVJ sir, in association with the Kisat scientists and uh, the erstwhile Angru uh, scientists, they went on, uh, uh, they went to the Gujarat and other uh, areas where uh, the actual uh, I, I corpo trials were, uh, were being held. So they had conducted surveys and uh, taken a note on the incidence of uh, PSTV. Uh, and based on the survey results, they have taken, the government has taken stringent uh, measures. Domestic quarantine was imposed and all the seed production activities were suspended at Junagar. And the groundnut accessions that were available in the gene bank of NRCG, when they found uh, PSTV incidents, they were destroyed. So because of such uh, actions, within two years, they could eradicate the uh, PSTV incidents at all the research centers except in Junagadh and its vicinity. So ultimately it took so much of time and the DQ was uh, domestic quarantine was lifted in 98 to 1999. This is just to highlight uh, how important uh, the like the plant production scientists have to be very alert and uh, just by declaring it as a quarantine pest it doesn't serve the purpose. 
and uh, once it enters the country we have to take uh, stringent measures and constant uh, observation is also required so again uh, uh, dr radhivijay prasad sir he developed one non destructive seed eliza which is very crucial for quarantine scientists and uh, the non from the non embryonic region small uh, portion of the cotyledon is cut and then those uh, uh, cotyledon bits were used as or uh, they can be used for grinding the sap and that sample is tested for uh, vir- presence of the virus and uh, all of you i think most of the virologists they know very well that uh, groundnut is susceptible to many seed borne viruses uh, which pstv is uh, one, one among that PSTV, peanut uh, motile virus, peanut stunt virus. These are all uh, seed borne viruses. And at this station, we have intercepted uh, PSTV uh, from USA, Myanmar, Philippines, China, Japan, and Senegal, and also on soybean from China. So uh, the random surveys uh, actually, when we conducted during our MEAP uh, project, we had conducted uh, random surveys in Hyderabad and. we found the incidence of disease so necessary precautions were taken and then the disease was finally eradicated so regarding the other case study uh, bacterial wilt organism mainly african strains of uh, bacterial wilt ralstonia solanaceae is uh, considered as quarantine pest for india and this uh, bacterial wilt organism is known to be seed transmitted in groundnut so initially we used to conduct standard blood test and agar these are the conventional methods that we used to follow and uh, when we had intercepted this bacterium during post entry quarantine growing uh, from the consignments of uh, australia and brazil we could understand the nature of the bacterium and its uh, latent symptomless Uh, for groundnut uh, processing there is a special uh, protocol i'll just uh, show you this um, so we had to devise this protocol for uh, processing the groundnut consignments uh, mainly to detect the viruses as well as bacterium so this is visual examination standard blot test and non destructive seed eliza once the healthy seed are there they will have to be grown in the virus uh, in the glass house for 6 weeks and during uh, glass house growing we collect samples leaf samples or uh, stick samples for uh, uh, bacterial wilt detection also and uh, any suspected virus symptoms are there then leaf eliza is conducted and ultimately the seedlings will be released after 6 weeks so the detection protocol was modified uh, because of the presence during post entry quarantine growing and we could intercept from several countries and now we have procured anti serum also and elisa uh, is being followed for detection so uh, nbpgr is mainly for uh, uh, people think that it is uh, policing on everything and uh, it has become a hindrance but i tell you you can see the example how difficult it is for us and then we try to resolve and uh, uh, salvage the material so one consignment from senegal 78 transactions uh, were received and it uh, we found the detection of pmv and pstv and 38 transactions were rejected in the first phase due to the presence of peanut stripe as well as bacterial wilt and in the second phase again so these phases are like in whatever sample that is received even if it is having 200 seeds we take out only 10 seeds at a time so that is the practice that we follow because checking all the seeds is not possible uh, using elisa and other uh, uh, techniques so 10 at a time only will be taken so in the first phase when 38 accessions were rejected in the we have again taken the fresh uh, original seed lot Uh, from these rejected accessions and again once again checked to find out any healthy uh, seed out of it so similarly we we could uh, salvage and release uh, we could release the 38 accessions also in the second phase but we had advised them to grow the healthy harvest released harvest under controlled conditions that is on the safer side this is another consignment which was received from japan 
PSTV incidence was observed. Similarly, procedure was repeated thrice, but we had to reject the entire consignment due to the recurrence of PSTV. So we didn't want to take any chance and we had to reject the entire lot of uh, accessions. So uh, in the last four or five slides, I would like to mention about the challenges that we come across while uh, doing quarantine processing. Uh, lack of certified PEQ facilities. It's observed in uh, uh, most of the cases, uh, the, especially in uh, some MNCs, they have the certified PEQ facilities, but, but uh, most of the other uh, seed companies or uh, even uh, in uh, some uh, public organizations also, certified PEQ facilities are not there. So that becomes a hindrance because all accessions cannot be grown uh, at NBPGR. And we process several uh, samples and it is uh, mandatory that we will have to grow them in post-entry quarantine because all pathogens cannot be detected under laboratory conditions. So that is one part and uh, the country should focus on the certified PEQ facilities. Even consignees who are indenting material from abroad, initial, this is a condition they have our uh, DPP in the plan quarantine order also they have mentioned that uh, certified PEQ facilities is must for import of material. So people should focus on that. Part of each sample is sown exclusively for the sake of uh, PEQ inspection. So we, while releasing the uh, consignment, we make a mention that the entire sample has to be grown because this is the original seed that is received from the uh, other countries and we have to grow the uh, entire uh, sample uh, to prevent any disease escape. But uh, in some cases we observe that only part of the sample is grown. And uh, people are very enthusiastic and they try to raise a local variety or check along with the exotic accessions, which is completely uh, prohibited. And they are, uh, some people are ignoring that. And inspections at the right stage of the crop. So they also tend to forget to call the quarantine officials at the right time of the uh, active crop growth stage of the crop. And uh, when they invite us for uh, inspection at the time of harvest, it's of no use. We will not be able to make out anything. So, and some people are more, uh, much more enthusiastic where they do when the PEQ growing is happening, they conduct pollination and crossing studies. So many instances are there where we had to take a stringent action against this. And the time gap between release of the consignment and growing in PEQ isolation area. When we release the consignment at the time we check and then release the healthy consignment and there are prob uh, probabilities that uh, if the time gap is more and other uh, there are chances that the invasion of other, other uh, fungal pathogens to the seed samples and several consignments it is a major problem several consignments of a single crop from different sources are to be grown uh, all of you are uh, very well aware that Ikrisat also has got post-entry quarantine isolation area, which is uh, exclusively for growing uh, exotic accessions. But sometimes when the, uh, for example, sorghum, when they receive sorghum from different countries, it will be difficult then. I, there is no point that we grow all the uh, sorghum accessions from different countries at that point. So only time isolation is only being followed that under such circumstances. And also similarly, a group of crops, even uh, some common pathogens are there for uh, several cereal crops and millet crops. That time also such type of pro problems emerge. And also complaints report, uh, some people they ignore to give us the complaints report after conducting inspection. So it has to be taken care of. These are some pictures where uh, we found some suspected uh, uh, maize plants suspected with maize streak virus were uprooted. And here, uh, the local uh, accessions were also grown. This is the exotic consignment wherein the, some local accessions were grown for DNA isolation and other purposes. And we had to take a call for destruction. And even uh, the Surrounding crops also, there were maize fields. So because of these two, two reasons, we had to destroy. 
and all the exotic maize actions were uploaded and incinerated into the forest. The, this is another uh, example. Only one accession was showing uh, suspected symptoms, uh, uh, virus suspected in, from. This is from Indonesia, and we have to. This, this is the problem where uh, some admixtures are uh, found during post symptomatic quarantine growing. We could uh, understand the admixture of foxtail millet accession in finger millet. Here, barnyard millet accession in finger millet. This is not our fault, but the only thing is we cannot release uh, these uh, accessions along with the finger millet accessions to them. Uh, this is the export uh, protocol uh, that we follow. Uh, it is our uh, NBPJ regional station Hyderabad is mainly uh, established uh, to uh, cater the needs of uh, Ikrisat initially and also the uh, for processing the paddy consignments and for trial purpose. And uh, export uh, material also, the pre-export field inspection is uh, compulsory. Whatever uh, uh, consignments that they need to send outside, when uh, they grow the crop during active crop growth period and at several intervals, we conduct the inspection to have an assessment whether the crop is free from any virus incidents or any other diseases, we take a note of it. And when the uh, export request comes, that time while giving the additional declaration, we uh, retrieve the data and then give a decision on that. So here now online uh, submission is there for request also. The, this uh, website is important, PQIS site. And seed samples will be submitted to the plant quarantine laboratory at Ikrisat. All procedures that we follow, uh, the PQL uh, laboratory staff, they conduct the tests and they call us for inspection. And uh, once we are satisfied with the results, then we, uh, after inspecting the samples, we uh, give, uh, issue the piece, uh, phytosanitary certificate. These are some more, uh, this is also very well known, banned pesticides are there. Now we have to find out some alternatives to the banned uh, pesticides or fungicides. This is another challenge. Some people, they are interested to uh, go ahead with the accreditation of laboratory, which is very important uh, these days. Accreditation is compulsory. So for uh, proficiency testing, they, would, they are interested to import material. But the thing is, uh, our we have uh, devised certain uh, for uh, importing the material meant for proficiency testing. Here uh, they have to uh, send duplicate the samples in duplicate. One would be with, for quarantine testing at ten degrees and the other one is uh, uh, other one would be released after uh, uh, knowing the results. So uh, once the quarantine test is detected at ten degrees, the corresponding samples or both the sets would be destroyed. This is the, uh, the intention for which we are uh, asking for duplicate samples. But uh, even I heard that even Mr. also is uh, refusing to send samples in duplicate. So that becomes a challenge. And the other challenges are, uh, although in IPPC website, some updated crop wise uh, list of uh, quarantine tests are there, uh, access is not there for uh, we are unable to download the information. They are uh, like the website is visible and then the uh, uh, link is visible, but we are unable to download the and retrieve the information, which becomes a major problem while taking a decision while exporting and importing. So another thing is diagnostic uh, techniques and treatment protocols for specific pathogens should be made available online through single window system. Why I have put this because, you know, there are numerous pathogens and different groups of pathogens are there and for which like to develop diagnostic technique for a particular pathogen, it takes a lot of time. And uh, looking at the number of pathogens that are uh, uh, present in uh, present and affecting the crops, within uh, in our lifetime, it's not possible to uh, devise diagnostic techniques for all. So it should be on a collaborative mode and uh, they should be available uh, online through a single window system. Like this would be easier for retrieval. And also this is another constraint, depletion of strength of experienced plant protection personnel. So this, I think most of the institutes are facing that uh, challenge. 
and pest risk analysis is an important uh, mandatory requirement we to take a call whether uh, that particular crop can be imported or not that is important what if, if imported it should be tested against water uh, against what pathogens that also gives uh, pest risk analysis gives answer to those questions and uh, on import several uh, combination of techniques are required i can uh, i don't feel shy to tell that we at this regional station we are following most of the conventional methods only that is because of uh, like lack of uh, molecular uh, facilities for which we seek help from our headquarters mbpj at delhi as well as uh, other uh, icr institutes and they are uh, helping us uh, i'm really grateful to them so uh, strengthening is also important so for uh, almost all quarantine stations have to be strengthened that is uh, important sample size most of the time like uh, in some cases the sample size is too small that we cannot complete all the tests with that uh, sample because some sample should be kept for the release of the consignment also to the consignee so that becomes a hindrance and urgency this is also due to lack of proper planning people get the material uh, and then they impose pressure on uh, quarantine officials for uh, release of the samples so non destructive uh, testing will be uh, very helpful such type of techniques also we should devise and for future there are several issues but only i have highlighted few of them harmonization of the indian plant quarantine system with the glo global uh, pq system is uh, very essential to minimize the problems that uh, come across while uh, importing or exporting the material and strengthening of i have just now mentioned about this and there is a need for the setup of national institute for detection and diagnosis of pests so this uh, it can uh, help in uh, detecting and diagnosing the pests easily and it saves time also and expertise in the field of uh, taxonomy and biosystematics to identify unknown pests or new pests and their strains so there is lack of expertise Uh, even weed specialists are very few virologists and bacteriologists are very few in number especially taxonomists strategy for future some more points i have added examine the wto compatibility of health and sanitary whatever uh, tests that we conduct and uh, while uh, taking the while looking at the interceptions that we may so we need to check the, uh, the health and sanitary regulations uh, we should we have to keep them in mind while uh, giving the decision and repository for anti sera for pathogens not only for viruses these are uh, this repository is uh, equally important for uh, detection of bacteria fungi and uh, other uh, phytoplasma as well building up of scientific evidence to counter the unreasonable uh, sanitary and phytosanitary measures and uh, without scientific justification you cannot take any uh, decision about uh, destruction so with uh, using uh, scientific justification is uh, important and finally i think coordination of scientists and resource sharing among dppqs and icr and chaus and other research organizations this is also very very crucial uh, if we think about our nation i think this uh, comes first uh, to take care of the nation's interests thank you so much and i once again thank the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity if there are any questions then thank you dr ranita any questions please thank you sir the open topic is open for discussion this one you can speak he is raising the hand okay okay sir okay sir uh, good good afternoon everyone and thank you anita ma'am for delivering very important and nice uh, lecture uh, on the very very important topic so <clears throat> ma'am my query is that in case of guava you mentioned that uh, uh, there is one root not nematode that you mentioned milidogyne interlobi 
so as far as uh, the literature is concerned the miladogain myagoensis is more and more common and when you will study the miladogain myagoensis along with the fusarium oxysporum firma special side eye it's very very common in, and it can cause greater damage than what they can cause individually and it's very common in india also miladogain in, in cognita and fusarium oxysporum so i want to make it uh, once again clear out there whether it is miladogain interlobi or miladogain myagoensis uh i have got this information from my from our nematologist uh, dr prasanna halajer and also i have referred the uh, literature also and it it says it is miladogain interlobi uh, and the other uh, nematode if it is uh, I don't know about that. So, Dr. Prasanna, okay, no, because I am also working on uh, the several uh, plant parasitic nematodes associated with the guava also, and uh, that's why I asked you. Anyway, okay. thank you once again for delivering very very nice presentation and very very productive. And I hope that uh, there are forty one participants right now showing on the panel. all of them have been educated very very greatly so this was excellent robust and productive information thank you very much ma'am thank you so much anybody Dr. Anita, what? See, you have mentioned very few only exotic uh, pests. Yes, yes, sir. But recently there are so many one which are coming. You didn't highlight was some of the, or yes. you didn't detect in. Because I was told that I would be getting only twenty minutes time for uh, this lecture, so I thought I have selected only few of them, sir. Yes, you mm. are right. Okay. Absolutely correct. There are uh, plenty of uh, exotic pest incursions. Yeah. I, Even I was expecting from Celia also where uh, important projection. The main thing is our people should understand yes, what is coming new. Yes. Sir. What is old? Uh, even Celia also was giving only Banchita as a one introduced pest. That you should forget. Don't mention Banchita as an introduced pest. So it is 1943. But today, yes, we. Yes, sir. is introduced and spread to the country downy mildew sunflower come and spread to the country bring so uh, the new one so that the youngsters will understand the ones which are uh, current scenario and also the important one tsw also we didn't bring which is now spreading to tomato spotted wilt virus which is my friend mom now it is spreading to the vegetable crops Chrysanthemum white rust. Ah, white rust and also PSWV. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, yeah. Celia, you sir, have something we, to say. Sir, PSWV. I ah. think um, actually we focus on the seedborne uh, uh, pathogens. PSWV. Uh, I am not sure whether it is seedborne or uh, seedborne. I do agree. In a true seed, it is not seed born, but in planting material, it is coming. Planting material, you are right. Seed, agricultural yes. crops, planting material. Right, right. Most of the pathogens are coming through planting material. Right. And sir. later on, spreading to our crops. Yes, sir. Yes, Celia. Yeah, yeah. At BBTV, I mentioned to highlight the importance of quarantine pests because it is introduced. That is why NCS TCP DBT is now we are spending crores of rupees to give the virus-free planting material. So the quarantine should be stringent. So we cannot forget uh, BBTV and uh, TSDWV. <laughs> I agree that uh, it is now reported by in Tamil Nadu on Krishanthamo and TSWDV is. important for vegetatively propagated material although it is uh, not uh, seed born per se and uh, also like uh, 
incursions are there we don't want to highlight in quarantine about the incursions we want to highlight how important it is in quarantine we have 1271 regulated pests still yeah. uh, which were not there in india being regulated that so uh, once we start highlighting what it is already introduced and then usually the questions are asked then what is it quarantine is doing so me and dr kavita we are emphasizing on quarantine still we have more than 1000 regulated pests and if you look at it our more than around 100 Uh, pests we have intercepted, prevented their entry into the country. I hope Dr. Anita also will agree. With My point is not about the introduced, uh, the detected ones to highlight. My point is, which are already introduced and spread in the country. We are facing Sir, the problem. Sir, already introduced and spread. It is okay. What we are trying to prevent. What if we have not intercepted? Like bone spot motile virus. I just gave an example. It would have got introduced. It would have. cause it the losses like similarly the soya bean downy mildew it is intercepted and it has all favorable conditions in the country to get established so whatever it is introduced we highlight less as a quarantine scientist no already <laughs> we are highlighting what we have contributed uh, to prevent their entry into the country no prevention is one side see even uh, people should understand okay we are uh, see Entire world, nobody can uh, stop entry. See, take yes, a example of COVID. In spite of uh, quarantine, could we stop? But it, in spite of that, we should have methods how to curtail or how to manage with that. That is more important. See, even if it is introduced, how to go ahead? See, for example, maize uh, virus. Africa it is trying to do something which is curtailed and. Uh, So otherwise, it is allowed freely. It has been throughout the world where maize is grown. So like that. Yeah, see, yeah. yeah surveillance is, is very important, and rapid response is important. Even eradication is important. Like in Thailand, they have. Yeah. It is such a small country, but they have uh, eradicated the cassava mosaic virus. Like the Tanta yeah, mentioned, yeah. peanut spike virus. How our, they have uh, implemented quarantine and all. Our interest is to our youngsters should know. Even though new disease is noticed, it is not reporting first. So instead of that, we destroy that so that we are uh, safeguarding our future. That is the message yes, I expect from you both. So new reports, people will have interest. At the same time, we should safeguard our future uh, agriculture. That is my point of view. Yes, yes. You are a phytosanitary certificate issuing authority. <laughs> no, no, I, that is the that concern only I am speaking. That we have so many problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, even in uh, the spiraling white fly in coconut now, see, Andhra Pradesh, that Rao Sinwas Rao, he is entomologist. He is doing excellent. Uh, means extension of extension service and trying to create awareness and both in farmers and the, so that. They are ready to stop that. That is that is how we yes, need yes. to project. Sometimes the emerging press may come in with some means. But how to manage with that? That is the situation. Is important. Yeah. Anybody else? Ah, uh, now we can go for uh, next for uh, presentations. I think the poster presentation. Before that, I have one presentation from Dr. Sheshakaran. it is again an important in terms of a seed born nature so though it is reported it is not a quarantine pest at the earlier but today we are exporting lot of vegetable seeds to several countries and this is a quarantine pest for several countries and our exports are hampered and that is called cucumber green mottle mosaic virus even though it was earlier first reported as a bottle wart mosaic virus But Japan reported as a in cucumber and named as a cucumber green mottle mosaic virus. I think uh, Shesh Kiran, your experience you can share for uh, 10-15 minutes. It will be good for people. It uh, because of its seed born nature. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, next to uh, sir, this one is uh, oral presentations are there, sir. Ah, uh, we will continue. Yeah, we will continue. We will continue. 
I, I wanted this we will finish so that that oral presentation people can take up. Sir, is my screen visible, sir? Yes, yes. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. We had a very pleasant session as on behalf. We have good afternoon, uh, everyone, on behalf of the organizing committee. So I also want to share my experience of working for my PhD program on one of the important virus, uh, cucumber green mottle mosaic virus, uh, which is a very rapidly spreading virus globally. So coming to this one, uh, this uh, bottle gourd. Th there are many uh, cucurbitaceous crops like bottle gourd, watermelon, cucumber, uh, cucumber, squash, snake gourd, pumpkin, and uh, others. Uh, so for which uh, the host, uh, all these survey the host for the cucumber green mottle mosaic virus. Coming to a little bit introduction about the area and production statistics of the important cucurbits in India. So this is the statistics uh, with uh, cucumber and gherkin at the top with the six point three four. Uh, tons production per uh, hectare and pumpkin and then watermelon melons etc so in that uh, coming to the other statistics cucurbits share 5% of the total vegetable production in india and according to fao estimate they are cultivated in around uh, 0.61 million hectares with a productivity of 13.11 so there is a target of for, for to produce uh, 2000 uh, by 2050 that the uh, to meet the increasing demand of the population it is expected there should be 300 million tons uh, so coming to some of the important diseases, uh, see cucurbits are a host for several of the fungal, bacterial, viral, and nematode uh, diseases. So out of these, uh, some of the fungal diseases like anthracnose, gummy stem blight, and uh, uh, one of my students is working on a gummy stem blight, which is, working, which is a very important rapidly spreading virus. Coming to the other bacterial diseases, we have other few bacterial diseases. And uh, uh, this back, this uh, cucurbits they, they host for almost seventy uh, different uh, vir uh, viral uh, different viruses uh, of different uh, whether it is mechanically transmitted or vector transmitted like that. So we I uh, worked for my PhD on an important cucumber green mottle mosaic virus which belongs to the Tobamo virus group. Apart from this uh, CGMMV which is called. There are other uh, Tobamo viruses uh, which are appearing like this, uh, which may get confused, like cucumber mottle virus, cucumber fruit mottle virus, and uh, KGMMV, Curie green mottle mosaic virus, and uh, Jukini green mottle mosaic virus. So, it is as I told you, this is a uh, Tobamo virus, uh, which is belonging to I think some screen problems. Uh. So, it is a rod shaped particles of a CGMMV, which uh, I purified from the bottle guard. So, apart from the uh, uh, Cucurbits, it also import, uh, infects other weeds, uh, and they, like Amaranthus, uh, Blightoides, and uh, Cucumis, uh, Portula cavalaracea, Folarum nigrum, and Heliotropium, and others, uh, as per the different reports from Australia and other countries. Uh. So these are the typical symptoms which we can see on the foliage uh, of uh, different cucurbits, be it watermelon or like uh, uh, gherkins or others. Uh. So we can see the mottling and discoloration of the leaves and also uh, cucumber fruits. And once it is infected, uh, it, uh, the, uh, these watermelon fruits, uh, they will become, uh, uh, the fruits become pale and uh, they will uh, uh, taste insipid. And we can see that rotten and mushy flesh of the watermelon. So uh, coming to the little bit introduction about this uh, virus, it was first reported in the uh, from Great Britain by Ainsworth and he named it as a cucumber virus 3 and later cucumber virus 4. It was initially, it was very slowly spreading from 1935 to 1986 or so. And uh, it was a little bit uh, uh, moderate in spreading in the next two decades, like 1986 to 2006. For the past uh, uh, one and a half decade, it has spread very uh, widely and it is uh, spreading to most of the countries and most of the continent. So it is reported from 44 countries worldwide and several people have worked on this and uh, uh, almost around uh, by this time 50 complete genome sequences are available. So for my PhD, I worked with Dr. Bikash Mandal and they that isolate I handled was uh, the whole genome that the, that the complete genome was sequenced and it was a DQ 7673.12. 7, and in Asia, coming to this one, uh, it was reported from different countries uh, by different workers, uh, like in India, Bangladesh, China, and uh, by different workers. Uh. So these are, this is the global distribution of this cucumber green model mosaic virus. Uh. So it indicates that mo uh, most of the continents are uh, um, uh, invaded by this uh, important uh, virus. And importantly, the one which I highlighted in the blue color is uh, 
Uh, US, it was reported, I think, 14, 15, like that, in the same way, Canada and Australia, it caused havoc and uh, uh, in the uh, cucurbit industry in the two important uh, northern territory and also the Queensland and other countries like it has recently invaded Thailand and other Indonesia and other countries. So coming to the little bit, uh, I developed the uh, immunod immunodiagnostic techniques for this. For the, I, for, in, the, in this context, I just give, I'm giving the brief uh, uh, overview of the genome organization. This is a Tobamo virus. It is a rod-shaped virus, which is having a uh, four ORFs. Uh, the first one, two coding for RDRPs, RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And the third ORF is coding for uh, movement protein. And fourth one is for port protein. For if you want to develop an antibody uh, against uh, this particular virus, we generally take the coat protein because it is highly conserved in a particular plant virus. Plant virus, and this coat protein it codes for a it is a, it is a having almost 17.3 kilo Dalton. So these are the different accessions uh, we isolated. Uh, these are the different accessions we have handled. I handled DQ7631. This is having 99% similarity with the different several isolate, Australian isolate, Canadian cucumber isolate, and China, Israel, Japan, and others. So coming to the yield losses, uh, this is uh, reported to cause around 10 to 15% losses as given by different workers across the world. And uh, there are several outbreaks of uh, cucumber green mottle mosaic virus on different crops. Mostly it is in a watermelon is the most severely infected. It caused in uh, China in 2005, it is the epidemics in Korea 1995, in Israel in uh, 2007. In 2000, from as I told, for the past one and a half decade, it is rapidly spreading as uh, it was never seen for the past 90 years like that. In the Only in the past one and a half decade it is. It has caused uh, epidemic in watermelon. It is almost 1,000 hectares was lost uh, in Israel in most of the uh, Israeli watermelon production. Almost 40% was affected. It was reported if in uh, 2014 in a different California and also Florida. Later in Australia, reported by Tran. Tran and Gian, she worked extensively for developing the diagnostics and also the modes of transmission, uh, this lady, Tran and Gian. So these are the uh, uh, publications where it was reported first reports from Canada, USA and Australia in 2014 and 15. So it was, uh, as I told you, the Tobamo virus, just like how we study basics like uh, tobacco mosaic, where is a mechanically or a sap transmitted virus. And the recent workers uh, in, from Australia, they reported that even honeybees are also helping in uh, I, have, I have a role in the transmitting through pollen and also by these virus can stick to their uh, legs and they can uh, they will be capable of transmission. So these are the strict quarantine measures in across the uh, world where, where their strict quarantine measures are uh, being applied. And the left one is uh, uh, showing that the honeybees have a role in the uh, pollen, uh, in uh, transmission of the virus during pollination as reported from Tran and Guin in from the Northern Territory. So coming to the India, this was reported, it was uh, initially it was reported on bottle guard and afterwards uh, some different workers uh, like uh, Rashmi et al in 2005, she reported on Gherkins and Pooja Sharma, Sponge guard and recently Snake guard who is uh, currently in uh, IAVR, he worked, uh, he reported on uh, Snake guard, the CGMMV occurrence. So these are the different some symptoms I, I observed that uh, modeling and uh, so I told that previously other workers, they reported it was the strain was very severe and it is causing a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, damage to the fruits, fruit quality. But uh, in my observation, which when we strain we handled, it was only the symptoms were severe on the uh, foliage, but uh, the fruits remained uh, intact and uh, there was not much uh, uh, malformations or like that. I observed when I inoculated during it uh, field conditions and also on the uh, controlled conditions in the poly house. The, even though the, like we can see here, the symptoms are very clear on the foliage, but the fruit is very normal as if it is unhealthy. So with, uh, we felt whether the virus is there or not. So I did uh, um, electron microscopy pictures from different parts, from leaf and uh, other different parts of the uh, fruit like epicarp, mesocarp and endocarp, whether it is a uh, symptoms are not seen or whether the virus is not there or like. So we seen that uh, different parts, I have taken a peel and observed the electron microscopy. From epicarp, the, the left side, the top one, we you observed that uh, um, rod shaped particles in the mesocarp also. And uh, when we had taken the little uh, sample from the endocarp and observed, there was a huge number of particles uh, uh, for, uh, concentrated in the localized in the endocarp. That was the observation I made. So then coming to the, as I told, uh, if you want to develop an antibody, we have to select a 
particular part of the ORF which is highly conserved because uh, if it is uh, not conserved means it may test positive for the any uh, other viruses. So giving a false amplification uh, for the if, if, if giving a false positive. So the CGMMB, the port protein was selected and we designed primers which are 556F and 577R which is coding for, which is a, which would amplify only the port protein gene. When we had, they incorporated this BAM H1 and EPOR1 sites were in, 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 incorporated. So these are RT-PCR where we did a RNA isolation and cDNA amplification and we observed that the presence of virus from the, as I told you, from the endocarp, which will give a very good uh, amplification in the endocarp while, while the amplification was very less for the equal amount of the sample I taken from other parts. So UE and ME it gives for a very good amplification that is the part that is isolated from the endocarp. So from the, we taken from other leaves from bottle guard, uh, cucumber and different parts, leaf, epicarp and we seen that in endocarp the virus particles accumulation is more. So this is the one uh, other uh, amplification pictures. I seen that uh, the localization of the virus in a heavy uh, uh, um, proportions in the endocarp region. So these are the different symptoms on different hosts like a uh, bottle guard and other uh, uh, cucumber and others. So these are even the seed coat also. I observed that uh, the presence of the virus particle mesocarp and uh, as I showed, uh, observed even not only in the endocarp in the cucumber, we observed in the bottle guard also there is a glut of uh, uh, well, uh, this virus particles accumulation. So this we observed, we inoculate, we observed, uh, we inoculated on the cucumber uh, in the field conditions, and we covered like this for observing the development of the symptoms. And these are the detected in different parts, as I told. So what the research gap is, uh, we have to de de depend on a commercial antibody. And uh, so we thought that we develop a in-house antiserum. So we uh, we wanted to develop the polyclonal antibody. So we as I uh, inoculated on a in a controlled conditions in the poly house in a uh, IRI containment facility. We observed these symptoms and uh, I isolated the total RNA from this infected leaves from the symptoms express symptoms exhibiting one. And uh, I did the uh, RT PCR. We observed we uh, total RNA is, was isolated and cDNA was amplified by reverse transcription. And we developed a, we observed that a very good amplification from the uh, and uh, this uh, uh, particular of, uh, DNA was uh, gel eluted and it was cloned into the you know, using reverse uh, transcription kit. It was cloned into the uh, cloning vector. Uh, so th this is a schematic uh, for uh, the representation how this uh, double antigen coated uh, works. Uh, we uh, in the ELISA plate we uh, uh, add the sample and then we uh, use the primary antibody and secondary antibody. So this is the one when uh, with there is a there will be development of the color with the presence of the virus. So this is the as I told previously this is the coat protein gene uh, when was used with these primers and this is the uh, steps we followed for the cloning as we uh, we uh, put the restriction site BAM H1 and echo R1 in the forward in the reverse primer and this was cloned into the PGMT vector. The presence of this uh, the like uh, the presence of the uh, presence of this uh, port protein in this uh, in the incorporation was checked by uh, using the reverse trans uh, this uh, uh, PCR by developing this uh, blue white uh, colonies. Uh, we, we we selected the colonies which are having this uh, port protein uh, uh, which was cloned into the E. coli, and then this uh, plasmid was isolated and uh, and uh, again the plasmid was also checked and it was multiplied by uh, transformation into the DH5 alpha. And we had a we maintained a uh, huge amount of the uh, um, this uh, particular DH5 alpha this particular uh, uh, clone which is having this uh, uh, coat protein and that was also multiplied in the DH5 alpha. So once we had a very huge amount of the um, uh, multiplication of the plasmid in this uh, DH5 alpha, this was used for uh, transformation into the uh, expression vector. So and uh, we cloned into the another uh, expression vector into and we uh, tried to do protein expression in this uh, another BL twenty one BL twenty one strain of the E. coli. Then uh, even though the uh, the particular uh, um, vector had a coat protein, there was no expression. Then uh, though the vector, though it has coat protein, it when it was introduced, when it was transformed into the BL21 strain of the E. coli, which is normally used for protein expression, the, the, the protein did not express. 
then uh, we found out uh, even though the uh, clone has even the the plasmid has the coat protein there was no protein expression then we observed then we found out what is the reason we that uh, that sequence was taken and we checked for the presence in the rare codon analyzer and uh, we found out that uh, uh, surprisingly there were very rare codons uh, for which uh, we, we where we used this uh, bl21 normal uh, uh, e coli where we used to for protein expression that doesn't have any uh, uh, ability to translate this uh, rare codons uh, so we changed this uh, change by that particular strain bl21 which doesn't have ability to translate the protein uh, if that uh, particular sequence has a, has a rare codons uh, so we take an another strain bl21 uh, de3 rapl strain which is a, which is a uh, unique strain and compared to the normal bl21 is rapl uh, it uh, stands for r for arginine isoleucine and uh, proline and leucine so the compared to the bl21 this is a unique strain and this has capability to translate even the rare codons uh, which are present in a more quantity in our coat protein sequence uh, so when we the same plasmid when it was transformed into the e coli bl21 rapl we could at a different concentration means so even at uh, induction at a different concentration 0.5 one and 1.5 iptg it was uh, the protein was expressed so to check that uh, the this protein then we uh, develop we this protein was expressed this protein was expressed and we and later this protein was purified and we found that it is uh, uh, expressing the that particular bacterium of bl21 rapl it is uh, developing more, it is producing more protein at uh, 37 degrees uh, uh temperature when it was incubated that particular bacteria was in, incubated next sheshkaran speed up one minute sir got muted ah i got muted i am i'm going coming back sir one minute speed up speed up okay okay sir hmm. come down so after uh, purifying that pro protein we checked with uh, uh, in the western blotting and we found that it is a 17.3 kilo dalton was present and this purified protein was in it was uh, uh, immunized into the two rabbits uh, a and b two rabbits were taken and we have uh, um, uh, introduced around 800 micrograms one minute sir 800 micrograms of a protein in different uh, splits was introduced was immunized into the rabbits at a different in 9 uh, weeks and we collected the antibody uh, we we collected the we collected the blood uh, blood from at 5 uh, 5th week 7th week and 9th uh, week that uh, three uh, immunoseria elections collections was done and uh, we found that first bleed and second bleed was uh, there was a lot of background it was didn't work and the second uh, uh, rabbit which we immunized with this uh, uh, protein uh, that was giving a very le lesser background so it means uh, it was a lesser background so we uh, i i checked i used that antibody which was developed in that uh, for uh, uh, conducting other rest of the tests so and uh, that was again uh, the bleed was uh, checked and it was given by western blotting it is giving a very good detection and uh, we checked the antibody which we purified it is giving very good uh, even at a uh, 
16,000, 1 is to 16,000 dilutions and also 1 is to 32,000 dilutions of the antibody. It is capable of detecting the presence of the virus in the infected samples. Even in the antigen dilutions also, suppose we collect a sub 1 is to 1 uh, 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 sample of a sample and also the buffer. Even if you dilute the antigen, you up to 8,000, uh, 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 it's up to 1,200 times or then, even then at a very, very less amounts of the uh, antigen in the samples, it was able to detect. So uh, we did uh, a dot blot immunoassay and it was able to detect the presence of uh, uh, infected, uh, infected uh, fruits from the healthy samples from different uh, infected plants, uh, either muskmelon, bottle gourd or infected uh, watermelon. So, and uh, where in the, the, the lower ones, we, have, we, can, we, cannot, we, we were not able to see any development of the color. That means it's indicating our antibody is working very well. So then uh, we want to validate this uh, uh, antisera by uh, collecting the samples from different areas. We collected the samples uh, with the help of some pathologists from uh, PAU Ludhiana, IRA Experimental and uh, IAVR Varanasi. And we checked for the presence of this one. And it was detected in some of the samples collected from different uh, locations, bottle guard samples collected from different areas of uh, UP and also the in, uh, in different crops like bottle guard, cucumber, and all of them, they, we got some positive results, uh, presence of the virus in different ones. So that is the, the, we also not only developed the antibody, we also validated the uh, functioning of the antibody by collecting the samples from different parts of the country. <laughs> that is our uh, work. So this is our, I did my PhD with Dr. Bikash Mandal, where I developed this uh, antibody as one of my objective. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Dr. Sheshkiran. Welcome, sir. Uh, I think any questions are there, you can put in WhatsApp uh, the, the chat box, I think. There is a time. Now we take up the oral presentations. Dr. Govindraj, I don't have list to you see from our oral presentation, you tell the person who has to present next. Yeah, I the sir, next to moral presentation, Krishna is there. Yeah. Yeah, that list of sir, presentation people. Uh, sir, next is mine only, sir. Ah, yes. Oh, yeah. Please, uh, uh, yes, yeah, my yeah. Sir. Ah. Sir, um, sir, I have checked the machine, sir. Hello? Sir, am I audible? No, audible. Please proceed. Sir? Audible, audible. Ah, yes, sir. No, audible, sir. Uh, is there. Um, yes, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. I am Dr. Kanka Mahalakshmi, working as a senior scientist in plant pathology at Mango Research Center, New Jersey, sir. And um, I to my topic on mango sudden decline caused by Lacero diplodia theobrome is a potential threat to mango cultivation in India, sir. And uh, we all know that uh, mango is one of the most Im economically important and uh, a popular fruit with the uh, due to its delicious taste and uh, uh, flowers and fragments and all those things. And it was grown in most of the parts of the India and maximum it's uh, um, uh, half, half of the, its production is from uh, AP, UP and uh, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. In this, the, but it's a uh, number of diseases are uh, present in uh, uh, mango, uh, like uh, powdery mildews, anthracnose, dieback, malformation, gummosis, and protein mold. Mm -hmm. And my object of this study is uh, to conduct a, a roving survey to know the present pest and disease scenario in no mango, sir. And I have conducted survey on the entire AP, and we have found that the powdery milieu, anthracnose, bacterial, spot, blossom bite, all these uh, different diseases, but the percentage of incidence is different in different uh, uh, parts of uh, AP. 
and these are the powdery mild man uh, anthracnosis is there and bloom bite is there and uh, i have found this one uh, and the powdery mix are there mal formations and then fruit mal formations are there and the bacterial spots and bacterial uh, uh, wilt is there but uh, the farmers are well aware of all these diseases they know that which, which type of chemical they have to use for the control of blossom blight or anthracnose or powdery mildews and like that but the farmers are confused with the sudden wilting and dieback of the mango plants and especially young plantations the number of young plantations were affected nowadays the lastrodicloria the causal organism is lastrodicloria triobromae and in some of the samples are isolated ceratocystis cimbriato but to how to uh, test this one uh, to the pathogen test for this uh, um, to confirming the pathogen in ab for causing the wilt and in the decline is due to 10 to 28% maximum in krishna gunturu godavari districts and whereas in prakash it is less in 12 to 19% and 8 to 7% in rayalaseema and srikakulam vijayanagaram areas i have identified and then the symptoms are uh, declining and it was ranging from uh, starting from uh, um, 2 to 16% in different uh, areas and the gummosis is the main uh, symptom of this disease and these are the different uh, symptoms expressed by plant in the meeting and uh, the top of the twigs are uh, dying and then the entire plant in some of the cases sudden wilting and this is the uh, symptoms we have identified in some of the orchards where the um, at the stem region blackening and then when we remove this one the region so there is oozing Use uh, oozing and uh, a stinking smell also there and on the stem region it, and the limb it is um, coming of the thing. Then the profuse leaf fall also we have recorded and then this is the gumming from at the stem region. The oozing is there and in nowadays uh, in some of the gardens uh, sudden meeting the it the bloom stage now it is in the bloom stage. The blooms also. Well, the plants were died, and the disease is in great economic importance since the trees die within a very short time. It won't give time to the farmer to reclaim that plant. And then uh, uh, emerged as a major threat because it's very minor disease previously drying or wilting of the plants, uh, or sometimes the plants may die due to the uh, water shortage. Sometimes they have. Water resources, the plants are dying in arming rate. And then this pathogen, when we isolate in the last video, in most of the parts of the world, it is having the high um, uh, host range, wide host range. And uh, in AP, when we are in the Rasam, and Bangin Philly are uh, highly susceptible to this disease. The plantations were dying, number of uh, uh, in a maximum in a chinarasam, cherkurasam, and whereas Totavari is somewhat resistant to this disease. And the neglect order service are identification was very quickly, and the death of the things, uh, uh, death occurred within uh, six months from the first appearance of the symptoms. And in a, uh, whereas in um, the fields where they are. Uh, a uh, lot of uh, irrigation as a flat type thing and they are sometimes they are hanging uh, buns and they are also stagnating the water at the stem region of the crop and uh, they get the garden the percentage of uh, infestation is more and in the gardens where the pure nutrient uh, poor nutrient managing is management is there and high nematode populations are there so in that gardens so the disease incidence is more compared to the other one. So this is the smaller uh, plants where the water stagnation is more. And the, when the infected branches split open, when the skin is longitudinally and other conducting tissues are damaged and blocked by this pathogen. And in, uh, this is one of the conditions where the farmers are growing paddy or sometimes they are giving, um, stagnating the water for uh, the stress. In the condition, the plants, the maximum number of plants are dying due to this built sun, sun built conditions. And one more thing we have observed in our uh, surveys is the 
stem mango stem borer is uh, bacillus bacillus is also hard, and also one more uh, bark beetles print uh, stem they as a vector enter for the pathogen to enter into the um, enter the stem region and the farmers are generally applying this one caprosy chloride or bodo paste of activation and using some of them are using trichoderma pseudomonas along with zinc and boron but neem oil but the percentage of recovery when once the pathogen enter into the plant the percentage of recovery is very less it is 10 to the 15% only the maximum 85% of the plants were dying even though they are taking preventive or not preventionary measures and also sometimes if they have observed then uh, they are giving treatment also the recovery percentage is very very less so ma mango pig decline is increasing enormously in mango growing areas of a fever and if identification of root stock is the uh, best method to um, management of, uh, to manage this uh, wilt disease because uh, most of the traders um, are nursery management nursery maintainers are um, these plants are cyan grafts only and they are grafting on the root stock uh, using the root stock if that root stock is resistant to this type of wilt disease then it is a better way to uh, control or manage the uh, pathogen screening of the fungicides is one of the required thing we have we have to do we have to attend sir in this screening of fungicides with the new ones generally we are using only bordopest but these pathogens are really um, susceptible to this type of um, uh, fungicides or not we have to restudy this one and then importance should be given to the screening and multiplication of potential biocontrol agents against the soil borne pathogen in we have to isolate from the mango ecosystem and the need is needed these are some and this Sir? Ah, okay, continue. Sir, thank you, sir. So, oh. Continue. My present is... Okay. Thank you. Sir? Hello? Okay, thank you, BKM Lakshmi Garu. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, regarding oral presentation, uh, next uh, second one is uh, Dr. C. R. Rashmi, Assistant Professor, College of Agriculture, Kerala Agricultural University. Hello, sir. So. Ah. The voice is so I'm audible. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yes. yeah, it's audible. Okay, sir. Please start the oral presentation. Okay, sir. Is it really visible, sir? So, is yes, my screen is. visible? Okay, sir. Yes, my dear. Okay. Good afternoon. I welcome you all to my presentation. Uh, myself, Dr. Reshmi Sia. I am working as assistant professor at uh, uh, Icrip on Vegetable Crops, Vellanikera Center, Kerala. I am here to uh, present on a new folia disease which we observed in Hotel God. Uh, so usually in our place, Hotel God was uh, somewhat a uh, crop. Free from all the diseases, even the viruses were not found to attack our hotel cot crop. Only we used to get some uh, pumpkin beetle attack, and in farmers we used to get some calcium deficiency. Like that, the crop was almost free of any diseases. Uh, but uh, this uh, rainy season in July, uh, we have observed a new disease uh, in hotel cot from Vellanikara of uh, area of the Shore district of Kerala. Uh, this is the. These are the symptoms of the disease. 
so initially it started as uh, so for dark green lesions on the leaves of almost 1 to 3 cm in size and the lesions enlarged and many of them coalesced together and the color at this stage was changing from uh, dark green to almost brown in color and if we check uh, when we check the under surface of the leaves we could find mycelia initially the mycelia was there uh, just above the lesions then it uh, completely covered the leaf lamina and the more mycelia we could observe around the veins now later it led to severe rotting of leaf tissues and formation of large holes in between the major veins of leaves and when there is severe rains we can we could also uh, see severe rotting of uh, leaf tissues of what we got and when rains are stopped or under dry conditions instead of rotting uh, it developed a blight a brown colored blight and the thin, uh, the center of the spots were becoming papery and it led to short haul symptoms and we could also find uh, web blight usually it is common in cowpea in our place like three or uh, four leaves will be sticking to, uh, together with the help of mycelia uh, so this web blight symptom we could notice here uh, you can find that mycelial growth in between the leaves and even web blight was there along with the weeds in the field and ultimately the leaves will be getting collapsed and complete rotting was the and uh, by that time the sclerotial bodies were found to be uh, found on those infected portions initially they were white in color later the color changed to light brown and then to dark brown and in the initial stage uh, the sclerotial bodies were present only along the veins but in later stages you can find it all over the infected leaves and in later stages it is uh, it is observed to spread to the petioles and also to the stem so if there is high humidity you can find that mycelial growth of the pathogen over the stem but if it is under dry conditions it is just like a typical cankerous growth which we can observe on that vines and that led to wilting of branches the whole plant will not wilt but whatever cankerous portion you are finding uh, beyond that that white will wilt so wilting in isolated patches we could observe then uh, we isolated that pathogen uh, on pda and we could get a light brown colored fungal culture very fast growing pathogen and it started producing sclerotial bodies within 10 days of inoculation and this is the mycelia typical uh, rhizotonia mycelia which we could observe with that 90 degree branching this is the thickness measurement of that mycelium and the septation and constriction of the branching point everything we could observe uh, this is that uh, section of that uh, this one sclerotial bodies here we could find some barrel shaped cells and it is a loose type of uh, sclerotia not like uh, our sclerotium rolsi and all here there is no prominent rind core and all uniform barrel shaped cells we could observe when we uh, took sections of the sclerotia and the sclerotia measured almost 1 to 3 mm and uh, this was molecular characterization using, using uh, sequencing of the its region uh, so it got Uh, homolo was homologous to rhizotonia solani so based on this morphological and molecular characters we could confirm that pathogen is rhizotonia solani and subsequently we could observe that from uh, some other crops like ash god wheat god pumpkin and all but in wheat god since it is trailed on pandels uh, the crop easily recovered but in other crops similar to bottle god whatever symptoms we got on bottle god and the yield loss also was there and uh, so in kerala we used to have this aerial infection by rhizotonia mostly in uh, uh, this amaranthus in uh, paddy and also in cowpea now this pathogen has moved to cucurbits also uh, and uh, the yield losses when i uh, we uh, estimated it was it is causing almost 10 to 20 percent yield losses thank you sir thank you thank you
thank you thank you dr rashmi okay sir udras next person sir uh, only two persons are there for oral uh, next is uh, poster presentations uh, two more are there sir uh, we, will, uh, we will take up them one is uh, uh, dr pradeep kumar department of plant pathology college of agriculture raipur yes sir yes start mr pradeep kumar morning good morning sir my name is pradeep kumar badai sir i am audible to you hello you are yes, continue mukuna prunus is a tropical legume native to africa and tropical asia and widely utilized and cultivated the genus mukuna belonging to uh, uh, belonging to the family fabaceae and it is considerable widely source of dietary proteins and uh, the euromyces mukuni is serious disease in india the uh, the the infected leaves were collected from uh, disease plants and brought to the laboratory and the, and thin sections were through uh, spots were made to examine the fungus the first symptoms were observed are chlorotic spots on the upper leaf surface the disease begins in the lower portion of the plant and progresses to the upper tissue in severe infections the petals can also be uh, infected cause uh, reduction of the photosynthetic activity of the uh, affected plant the, uh, the the there are the urodiospores and the disease symptoms are shown in the figure the pathogen uh, urodiospores are spherical to ellipsoid globulose or sub subglobose densely verrucose uh, acanulate and the, the measure uh, 18 to 26 uh, micrometer in long and 18 to 22 micrometer wide the prominent spines of urodiospores are were distributed more or less equidistantly over whole surface on the uh, on the basis of symptoms morphological characteristics urodiospores of the pathogen was identified as uromyces mukuni the uromyces mukuni on the uh, mukuna prurens uh, the cross section of urodiospore urodiospore is found on velvet in the mukuna prurens So ornamental stalk urodiospor as seen in the stalk urodiospor, uh, uh, I have to come to the conclusion uh, from the results the uh, uh, and the pathogen description the the disease causing fungus was identified as Euromyces mugeni reban infecting velvet bit. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pradeep Kumar. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank next you. is. Uh, Snehalata Rani Alada, Horticultural Research Station, Kovur, Dr. Y S R Horticultural University. Yes, sir. Sir, is the screen visible, sir? Yes, yes. Um, respected chairman and other dignitaries, uh, good afternoon, one and all. Myself, Dr. S. Nehlata, scientist, plant pathology, working at Horticulture Research Station, Kopur. Uh, and uh, I am here uh, presenting my poster on disease scenario of jackfruit in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, coming to the importance of the uh, jackfruit, it is one of the important uh, remunerative fruit crop in Andhra Pradesh. Um, in the previous years, it is uh, being grown in uh, backyards and all. But uh, recently, during the last years, um, the area under uh, jackfruit is increasing, and uh, um, pests and diseases are one of the important factors reducing uh, the yield potential of the crop. And um, that's why the, the objective of this poster is to uh, conduct surveys of uh, for diseases associated with jackfruit, with an emphasis on new and emerging diseases. 
and uh, we conducted uh, roving surveys uh, in major districts of uh, Andhra Pradesh such as East Godari, West Godari, uh, Vishakhapatnam, Vijayanagaram and Srikakulam districts and um, the uh, soil types are uh, black loamy soils to red soils and uh, majorly the crop is um, being cultivated in backyards and then in uh, orchards as an intercrop or sole crop and uh, um, the when coming to the results Root rot uh, caused by Rhizopus artocarpi and leaf spot caused by Calidotrochum rheosporoides. These are the major diseases we observed along with the stem canker and uh, jar built or foot rot or collar rot. Uh, this is a, a new disease observed in Andhra Pradesh conditions along with the uh, um, heart assa. And then uh, the average disease instance of the fruit rot for the last five years is 19.8 percent, uh, whereas the leaf spot is 7.79 percent. And uh, um, instance of leaf spot uh, was a variety uh, we observed in uh, variety specific palur and swarna are the varieties uh, being grown along with some local varieties of shark fruit and uh, the instance of leaf spot was observed more in nursery seedlings when compared to the um, main crop and um, in some cases wherever the uh, orchards are uh, uh, not well maintained and uh, there is physical damage we observed gummosis on the um, trunks of the trees and uh, jack wilt is another uh, important disease uh, that was observed in uh, Venkatram and Gudam of um, West Godari districts. And uh, these are the uh, photographs of fruit rot, fruit rot caused by Rhizopus artocarpi, uh, especially on uh, male inflorescences as well as uh, young uh, uh, fruits. And this is the leaf spot and, uh, and jack wilt. And uh, uh, coming to the uh, person disease instance of jackfruit uh, diseases in major uh, five districts, this fruit rot, it ranged from 20.71 to 35.5%. Um, maximum is observed in Vijayanagaram district. Whereas leaf spot, it ranged from 6.58 to 12.79% um, 12, uh, 12 in East Godari district. And uh, this is the major uh, person disease instance of fruit rot over the last eight years uh, from 2012 to 2019 20. Uh, the instance was uh, highest uh, during 2012 13, around 50% instance was observed in uh, Chintapalli area of Vishakapatnam district. And then in uh, 2014 15, also the disease instance was high uh, up to 32%. Maximum disease instance of 32% was observed. And uh, average disease instance was around 20%, uh, 19.8% uh, we could observe in the uh, jackfruit. And coming to the person disease instance of leaf spot over the last eight, eight years, uh, it, it, the maximum disease instance was up to 16%. It was observed during 2014 and 15 um, in uh, East Godari district of Andhra Pradesh. And uh, the average disease instance of the leaf spot range uh, was up to 7.79%. Uh, with this, I um, with this I will conclude that uh, the fruit rot and leaf spot are the major diseases of uh, Andhra Pradesh, and the new disease is um, Jackwilt disease caused by Fusarium species, and the pathosensitivity was confirmed recently. And then, uh, and under uh, neglected conditions, uh, gamosis is another uh, um, um, uh, important factor um, observing on the jackfruit plants. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Snehalata Snehala Taranigaru. Uh, sir, uh, two poster presentations are completed. Uh, uh, sir, Krishna Reddy, sir. Ah, you have any observation, you make comments and then we will conclude. Any observation you want to make, you just tell. Jackfruit law, e two diseases. Have you identified any other diseases than these two? Uh, sir, uh, recent country. Jack... Sir, Jackwilt recent recent caused by Fusarium uh, uh, species, sir. It was observed, sir, in um, Andhra Pradesh conditions, in addition to the fruit rot and uh, leaf spot, sir. Okay, okay. That means uh, you have not collected the data for that one. No, sir. Actually, the pathosensitivity was to confirm recently, sir. Um, I will uh, submit later, sir. Okay, okay. Nice. Okay, sir. It's okay, sir. Krishna Reddy, sir. Anybody has any questions? Last, we will... Audience. 
if there are no questions uh, then we would like to wrap up the session i think there was a four excellent uh, lead presentations and two oral presentations and two posters and i congratulate all the speakers for their excellent uh, presentation and uh, the information what they have provided and it is overall is a good i think uh, all the audience are enjoyed and got the new information and then i outset i thank the organizers and that was sinwas lu and shesh kiran and my co chairman dr govind raslu to share with me and bearing and i think we thank all of you for uh, giving this opportunity and then uh, sharing the information i think uh, with this all the central zone ips members i thank you one and all for patience hearing in this session thank you thank you very much sir so thank you dr krishna reddy garu thank you sir for uh, really conducting this proceeding excellently and also in time as we planned the in time also and also you were yesterday's presentation and also today acting as a chairman i am thankful on behalf of uh, uh, dr vyasar atkatri university and also on behalf of ips thank you also sir i am thankful to our co chairman my colleague dr govind rajulu principal scientist and head of kvk periyavaram for continuously supporting the chairman and also and completely uh, completing these proceedings excellently and interacting timely thank you govind rajulu i am also thankful thank to dr bkm lakshmi garu senior scientist i think he would be a principal scientist prant petaradi mrs nuji vidu i am also thankful for excellently i think uh, reporting the program so really thank you one and all i request thank the you, chairman sir. and co chairman report also if uh, time permits please join in the valedictory Uh, function of the ips also already link already communicated so that uh, it is a good thing uh, if you say with you, you by you only the total uh, proceedings of this uh, session if uh, time permits either it may be by chairman or co chairman now report here i request uh, make it convenient to do thank you one and all all the participants of today's uh, program They were excellently they conducted. Validity will start by as per this program around four, and already link has been given already only the presentation. Right? So thank you one and all. Anything you sir, want to say, Sir Chakran? Sir, uh, validity means they will think that they should join only at four o'clock, ah? Eh? But no, this no, will no. be after <laughs> we will have a short uh, time for lunch and. Uh, Two o'clock. Uh, there are some uh, award presentations. Uh, yeah, India yeah. Narsimhan Award. So all are requested to join. We have almost eight speakers from uh, different uh, universities, and uh, yeah. so and we have a very good judging panel also. Yeah. Uh, so all are requested uh, to attend. Okay. Sir, another thing, sir. Yesterday, if any of uh, some of the members, anyone are there, if they have uh, got, lost any opportunity to present yesterday, or uh, who have, whose names were not there. They they can uh, come voluntarily and they can uh, present. No, now we'll do one thing. Let them uh, do it in the afternoon. Now, Narendra is also joining, you know. Narendra is already there, sir. Narendra is already there. So that that session people. Now this session is complete. Under the confusion may arise. Okay, okay. Now this particular session of three is completed now. You know, as the emerging pathogens and plant quarantine. If uh, as we discussed yesterday. Uh, under the chairmanship of dr narayan reddy that any papers are uh, present uh, let them complete it uh, with this uh, okay srinivas lo ah sir uh, if uh, candidates are there yeah uh, they can present in the lunch break otherwise you don't have a gap yeah that's why sir that's why now now that's if anybody why. is there i am here so yeah, if anybody is willing right. to present uh, please uh, yeah otherwise uh, thing, sir, uh, actually It is deemed uh, that session is completed. For the link, uh, yes, sir. That the now second session is the uh, completed. If anybody is there in the Previous people session. in the second session, or first session, or third session, now you can present it under the chairmanship of Dr. Narendra Digaru. 
okay so that it is easy so even uh, there is no lunch break for the as, as our uh, chairman uh, that narendra sir has mentioned very clearly he will be available so that uh, please see uh, sheshakiran please coordinate ask okay. them to present okay, okay. who are all uh, in the computer sessions session 1 session 2 and session 3 no sir If anybody no, is left over session 3 is uh, battle going on sir that is uh, being uh, no sir for i am sorry Oh, set one. Okay, and that's right. That's right. That means so Krishna Reddy sir uh, session already completed now. Mm. What I'm telling you, if anybody is there in that, they can also complete there. Okay. Okay. So now the session three, innovative emerging pathogens and plant biology is completed now. Okay. Thanks okay. to the chairman, co-chairman, mm. and report. Yes. Mm. Now, under the chairmanship of Dr. P. Narayan Reddy Garu, the leftover will be continued. Please, uh, please sir. Please coordinate uh, with the person those who have not uh, presented yesterday. Yes, Let sir. Let them present here in the uh, before sir, this. Sir, sir, sir. Okay, 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 sir. I accept this, sir. Man, I will tell you about that. Puna. Madam Ruth, Madam, yesterday. Yes, you... sir. Yes, yes. I am here. If candidates are there, I am here. If they have gone for lunch, forget about the presentation. So it will not be repeated again. No more repetitions. Ruth, Madam, yesterday you were supposed to yes, present. Can you? Madam. Madam. ఓన్లీ <laughs> 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 is very clear okay all right anybody is there sheshkiran madam ruth madam yesterday you were supposed to present can you present now no no ruth is there uh, can i uh, list out yes sir yes sir no even uh, some have registered late sir if they are in the meeting okay. then they can uh, ruth is there divakar is there anita prabhakaran is there nama rajshekar is there yesterday Uh, they could not present. Rajshekar, can you present? Nama Rajshekar. Slokeshwar Raj Sharma is there. Suresh only presented yesterday. Gokarla Vamsi Krishna is there. Then P. Madhusudan is there. Yamini, all these candidates have not presented yesterday. Thank you. If they are not interested, leave it. Sheshkiran. Okay, sir. Ruth okay. Madam is presenting. Madam. మేడం వాయిస్ కొద్దిగా పెన్షన్ మీద వాయిస్ వాయిస్ ఇంక్రీజ్ ది వాల్యూమ్ మేడం యువర్స్ ఓకే ఒక తొమ్మిది మీరు ఎంత తొందర ట్రై చేస్తారు ఎంత వెంటనే తొమ్మిది ఎంత వెంట కట్టారు తొమ్మిది సిక్స్టీ మెంబర్స్ ఒక క్లాస్ ఫోర్ ఇయర్ కోర్సు అనంతపురం నుంచి ఇద్దరు ఉన్నారు ఫీల్డ్ ఎక్స్‌పెరిమెంట్ వాస్ కండక్టెడ్ ఇన్ ఇంటర్ ముందు యూజీసీ లో ఎలా ఉన్నాయో వాళ్ళందరికి ఇవన్నీ ఉంటాయి కర్నూల్ డిస్ట్రిక్ట్ సర్వే అంతలో కూడా జాబ్ కూడా ఇచ్చిపెట్టున్నారు ఇప్పుడు సర్ అకరింగ్ ఇన్ మేజర్ వెజిటబుల్ అండ్ ఫ్రూట్ క్రాప్స్ అండ్ లీఫ్ స్పాట్ డిసీజ్ ఇన్సిడెన్స్ వాస్ కాలిక్యులేటెడ్ బై యూజింగ్ 0 టు 5 స్కేల్ ఓకే ఒక లక్ష 50000 సంవత్సరానికి అదే ఫీల్డ్ ఉంటుంది ఫైల్ ఏ వరకు 
this is uh, was calculated by using uh, 0 to 9 were calculated by using a uh, formula and uh, person disease index also calculated and in fact oh, उंटी and in fruit crops uh, gamosis was observed in case of uh, sweet orange crop and also uh, other canker disease bacterial diseases was observed in case of uh, acid lime and uh, coming to the con- I, uh, i will conclude my experiment in karnool district uh, also conducted one experiment on management of powder mill uh, in capsicum under polyhouse conditions uh, i tried uh, eight treatments among uh, penconazole 0.5 ml uh, per liter is uh, effective uh, for uh, two times of spraying at 15 days interval is effective for controlling the powder mill disease under uh, polyhouse conditions so i conclude the experiment in karnool district of uh, Uh, Rail Sima John more incidence of foliar diseases and viral diseases in vegetable crop uh, crops like uh, onion tomato chillies brinjal bendi in curry and late curry seasons and more incidence of bacterial diseases such as canker as well as uh, some uh, gamosis phytophthora and diploria gamosis was observed in case of uh, some fruit crop like sweet orange uh, under the protected uh, cultivation uh, powdery mildew is a major uh, problem in case of uh, capsicum crop so it can be effectively controlled by spraying of uh, penconazole 0.5 ml liter of water uh, two times in 15 days interval for controlling the uh, powder mildew disease in uh, capsicum crop thank you sir sir सर थैंक यू सर सर नारायण रेड सर सर ओवर सर यू कैन आस्क वन क्वेश्चन इज परमिटेड हां सर anybody can seek clar- clarification sir please if no questions are there we will move to the next speaker thank you ruth sir thank you sir we will move to the next speaker whoever is present rupa rani divakar anita prabhakaran rajeshekar whoever is present today Shashkar, and anybody is there, or shall we close this session? Hello. Anybody is there? I am finding out, sir. One person, ah, huh? he morning he called. Ah, huh? I'll find out and I'll call. Okay.
So Madhusudan want to present, sir. I think he is getting disconnected, sir. He will okay. Join. He will join okay. in one minute. Eh? Okay, right. Pavanirani, me go register just here, then, madam. Can you present? Are you our only participant? Pavanirani is not there. No, she is here, sir. Aradhani. No, no, she is not in the list, sir. But uh, I got in that uh, Google sheet. Uh, okay. Whether she is only participating or like she is presenting. I'll just check, sir. Here I have the file. Only participation. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Shwati Deepika. Hey, sir, is there anybody locally? Yeah, one person is there. You can call him. Usmania University. You just call him. The others, uh, let them join on Zoom. If they wish to come on the Zoom, ask them. If they wish to come here personally, ask One is Nansar Director. Professor Sampat Kumar, admissions head of Swanya University. One more is from NIT Trichy, School of That person can be come on Zoom. Zoom. Ah. And uh, three bullets. 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 Industry industry. 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 
सो इज एक्सपीरियंस इज एक्सपीरियंस इट सेल्फ इज ए पी एच डी फॉर एस एम बी ए खत्म करके सो इफ दे आर इन द इंडस्ट्री फॉर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड दैट विल बी बेटर इंडस्ट्री से दो ले लीजिए मैडम क्योंकि आपका बिजनेस मैनेजमेंट है ना यू टेक टू शशकरण शशकरण लेट अस वाइंड अप द सेशन ओके सर ओके देर इज नो यूज ऑफ इट एंड प्रेजेंटेशन सर आल्सो ओके राइट no the this one sir award lectures will continue in the same link sir okay okay i, I will join uh, free unte vastan nenu rendu sir meer kuda vasta vasta vastanu but kodiya pan undi andukani okay okay sir okay 11th at 10 hour nenu class change cheskonu kuchunnan but no one was there sir andukane andike andike okay sir rendu sir good afternoon baanara very fine fine madam how are you sharda lakshmi मेसेज अवार्डस
Sir, Dr. P.K. Rai, Director of Joint, sir. Dr. P.K. Rai. Shashakaran?
So good afternoon and welcome Subhdeep Chatterjee ji. Okay. Hello, I am a Hello. Sinha, a Director of Extension and... Uh, Hello. Hey. Welcome, please. Thank you. Just we will start within five minutes, so we will be waiting for the others to join. Yeah, no problem. Uh, good afternoon, Gogai, Secretary APS. I'm waiting for uh, your students for co this uh, contest. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's why now we completed the four sessions. Yeah, yeah, I was there because yeah. I, I <laughs> kept my video off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, now the four, uh, it, is my, it is my duty to brief you. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. yeah. So four sessions completed. Now we have. Uh, for this uh, <coughs> Narsimam, MJ Narsimha Award contest. Yeah, there how many contestants there? Uh, eight, eight, eight are there. How many? Eight, eight people, eight. Okay, it's good. Yeah, eight are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, where are the no one for uh, APS travel sponsorship for PhD students? No, in that case, no. What I feel, huh. in case of APS, mm -hmm. that the students are feeling that they have to travel so, because this year it was completely uh, virtual. Okay, okay. Those three candidates were nominated and got selection finally. Mm. So they participated uh, virtually. Mm. Because uh, in 2020 there was no question of movement. Okay, okay. So they were also, yeah, uh, registration online and they're, okay. they're too free of registration, free of cost. Definitely, okay. Similarly, this coming year, 20, this year. So 2020 also it will go like this only. Okay. Hopefully, virtually, there is no uh, less chance of uh, holding physically. Okay. So that's why students could have taken this uh, opportunity. But from some jo other zones, a few are there. But I have seen in other zones also, hmm. the students are least uh, interested in APS travel grant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> There will be presentation and uh, also mm -hmm. APS may mm -hmm. have started the certificate with your participation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Dr. P.K. Roy. Please check uh, Sheshkaran whether Dr. P.K. Roy joined. P.K. Roy, Rajan Sharma. Rajan Sharma is there, sir. Rajan Sharma is there. Yes, sir. Achha, welcome, welcome, Rajan Sharma ji. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Sinashlu. Uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Uh, how about uh, Dr. Uh, T.K. Rai? 
Pramod Kumar, one minute, sir. So that we can start. Yeah, he is also there, sir. I will call him. Yes, sir, sir. Rai, sir. One minute, I will call through phone, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that we can start the program. Yes. <clears throat> Dr. Srinivasaludar. Uh, good afternoon, Salvarajan. Good afternoon. I have sent you, you know, did you see that? Yeah, yeah. I received that one, your report. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. Shashakaran. Yes, sir. So please, uh, for other, uh, already we received from Shalvaraj Garu. Okay, sir. Detailed uh, that one. Please ask other chairmen also. Okay, okay, sir. If they give any best uh, oral presentation, best post of presentation, like that names, total value like that, if it's possible. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, so that is in the value section, we can announce. Okay, okay, sir. So the uh, speaker is there? He is coming to the office in one or two minutes, sir. Uh, he... oh, okay. Already he is a part of this, sir. He's already joined meeting, but uh, he'll come to office in one or two minutes. Sir. Immediately after his arrival, we will start. Okay, okay, sir. Before that, please uh, contact the three chairmen, other chairmen. Okay, Ajit. So, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, Dr. P. K. Raigar, welcome. No, I'm okay. I think we can shall we start the uh, we can we'll start. <coughs> so I, I welcome uh, for the session Pikraman. MJ Narsiman Academic Merit Award Contest. Yeah. I request uh, Dr. P. K. Rai, Director, ICR, Directorate of Web Seed and Master Research as a chairman and one of the judges. And Dr. Uh, I also welcome Dr. Subhadeep Chatterjee, Head, Laboratory of Plant Microbe Interactions, CDFD Hyderabad, to act as a co-chairman and as one of the judges. And Dr. Rajan Sharma, Senior Scientist, Serial Pathology and Head, PY, Likrisat Patanchalu, to act as a co-chairman and one of the judges. <coughs> so for the, I welcome all the, our uh, Secretary, IPS, uh, Dr. Rabin Bokai, and Giant Secretary, and our uh, uh, counselor, uh, Dr. Sheshakaran, and our other chair, session chairmen and participants also. <clears throat> now, as per the, we have received totally eight uh, participants list. So for the benefit of these uh, students or for the benefit of our just uh, very briefly, I will say the very uh, the important rules and regulations for this uh, MJ Natsiman Academic Merit Award contest. The contest is open to all the members of IPS under 35 years of age. The award will be given to the best paper presented at annual meetings of IPS. The preference will be given to work carried out under Indian conditions. The time for the paper presentation is 15 minutes. So I request the chairman and co-chairman is the only time for the presentation of the student that is only 15 minutes. Already the uh, uh, list of the persons, uh, Sheshakaran, please uh, read one by one so that they can be coming one by one and they will be presenting as per the directions of the chairman. So for this session, our Sheshakaran will act as a report here and uh, for this award session. So I think with, the, with this brief introduction, I request our uh, chairman and co-chairman to proceed this uh, Oh, uh, thank you, Dr. Sir, and uh, uh, welcome to all the uh, participants and uh, uh, the degrees <coughs> and delegates who have joined this uh, important session for <coughs> MJ Narasimhan Award, Academy Award, uh, which is to be conferred by the society. So uh, let us start, actually, not wasting time. I would like to call upon the first candidate, Tirumuru uh, Ganesh.
it is there and we will be presenting on survey and molecular <coughs> detection of candidates <coughs> debris vector species and citrus species of virus associated with citrus decline of khasi uh, mandarin in meghalaya so mr <coughs> ganesh yes sir um, can i start sir yeah yeah your time now is start sure so try to restrict yourself as per the guidance 15 minutes yes sir actually i'm not getting the sharing option one minute sir. yes press on the green button down huh? and then you'll be able to share you share yes, share sir. share yes. is share is screen you go on that yeah Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. No, no, it is not visible. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Yeah, just go in the presentation mode. Yes. Okay, okay, sir. It is visible, okay. sir. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, so, uh, respected chairperson and co-chairperson of the uh, session and all the delegates, a yeah, very good afternoon, everyone. So, I am T Ganesh. um presenting my research work with the title virus and virus like pathogens associated with the citrus decline of the cassi mandarin in meghalaya so coming to the brief introdu introduction about the crop so here the citrus it is important fruit crop uh, which belongs to the family rutaceae and which can grown in the tropical and subtropical countries and it is the third most important fruit crop in india after the mango and banana so for the citrus uh, the citrus decline is a very serious problem So citrus decline, it is a uh, hill health and decadence of the citrus tree, uh, trees, which may be arise due to the number of causes. So it may be considered as a complex problem, which is associated with the citrus, which may be result from the either biotic causes or bi abiotic causes. So in biotic causes, the diseases and insect pests are the more important, and abiotic causes, uh, soil, water, and nutrition factors are related to these abiotic uh, causes. so among the uh, biotic causes uh, especially the diseases and the diseases the virus and virus like pathogens which are associated with the citrus decline so which includes the viruses uh, greening bacterium viride and phytoplasmal diseases so among them uh, these uh, virus virus agents the most important ones are the citrus trichia virus and halong also known as citrus greening bacterium or citrus greening disease so which are uh, known to be the important pathogens uh, viral virus and virus like pathogens which are associated with the citrus decline in india so next coming to the symptoms of this uh, citrus trichia viral disease so the most important symptoms which includes the seedling yellowing uh, vein clearing vein corking uh, longitudinal uh, splitting on the stem uh, that is a stem pitting symptom and later the uh, declining of the tree may take which may be either slow decline or quick decline so next coming to the causal agent and transmission so here the trichia uh, virus which belongs to the family clostridia viride in the genus clostridia virus so the members of this family are uh, characterized by the long flexuous uh, particles uh, with sizes of 10 to 12 into 2000 nanometers in length so which are known to be the largest plant viruses containing the um, positive and single stranded rna as a genome and which is uh, transmitted by the aphid vector that is a uh, citrus brown aphid taxopterus citricides in semi uh, importance so this ctv which is distributed all over the world and causing the uh, death of the uh, citrus trees <coughs> so next coming to the symptoms of this hang long being it is also known as citrus greening so the most prominent symptoms which includes the leaf yellowing mottling and chloritic patches green islands on the leaves on the fruit uh, you can see the lobe sided fruits uh, that is carvel fruits and on the ca canopy you can see the dieback symptoms may be either partial or complete dieback symptoms so coming to the causal agent and transmission so, so this uh, hang long which is caused by the fastidious vascular uh, uh, phloem limited bacteria is known as candidate liberobacter species so far um, we have the three species candidate liberobacter asiaticus uh, africanus and americanus so which are transmitted by the two insect vectors uh, mainly ciliate vectors um, 
uh, coming to our asian condition the most important insect vector is the asian citrus ciliate that is the diaphorana citri so distribution and economic importance this hp is distributed all over the world especially in the asia africa and america which is causing the death of the millions of uh, citrus trees so in order to know the uh, uh, this is my msc research work uh, which is formulated with the following objectives the objective one is uh, to study the occurrence of citrus decline of casimantin at different altitudes of meghalaya and second objective is to identify the virus and virus like pathogens which are associated with the citrus decline based on the molecular tools and that to assess the genetic diversity of the major pathogen associated with the citrus decline of casimantin in meghalaya so coming to the methodology and experimental findings so objective one uh, is uh, to study the citrus decline of casimantin in different altitudes what this diagnostic survey was uh, done in based on the altitude was so the altitudes selected were low altitude that is less than 500 meters and altitude and to 1000 meters and high altitude that is more than 1000 meters so these are the areas uh, uh, which are selected in the low altitude rocky and nangpo in the low altitude and amlarim and umiam in the mid altitude and morinkning and sora in the high altitude so the um, the ctv and the hlb infected uh, plant samples were uh, identified and collected during the uh, selected locations uh, during the survey time and also the gps location was noted down and also the photographic documentation of the symptoms which are observed uh, during the survey was done uh, these are the, some of the photographic uh, documentations uh, which was done during the uh, survey yellowing uh, complete uh, cleaning of the trees and also some of the leaves uh, were found to be mixed infection after the detection uh, these are the mixed infection leaves of ctv and uh, greening disease <coughs> so these are the, some of the symptoms of the uh, greening bacterium and, uh, these are leaf mottling chloritic patches and green islands on the leaves and also the dieback on the uh, canopy so and also presence of the uh, ciliate vectors mostly these are diaphorin acid tree but noticed and documented during the survey so next objective is to identify the virus and virus like pathogens which are associated with the citrus decline based on the molecular tools. So for this, uh, uh, here I'm going to detect the more uh, two important pathogens, CTV and HLB. So because I concentrated on these two, because these two are the very important pathogens, that's why I, uh, we concentrated on these two pathogens. So here, uh, for detection of the CTV, so after the survey, the field collected samples were uh, uh, bringing to the laboratory so from these uh, field collected samples, the total RNA was extracted uh, from the leaf samples by using the rna plant minute uh, kit. So the presence of the CTV was uh, assayed and confirmed through the RT-PCR assay by targeting the core protein component of the uh, virus. So these are the primers uh, which are used for the uh, detection uh, through RT-PCR. Uh, here the CTV positive samples uh, which can yield an amplicon of 672 base pairs. So yeah, this is the PCR reaction mixture and the P, uh, sorry, RT-PCR uh, reaction mixture and RT-PCR cycles that were followed during this RT-PCR assay for the detection of the CTV. So this is the representative gel picture that is showing the detection of the CTV where the CTV positive samples can yield an amplicon of 672 base pairs. So here the marker that is used is uh, one KP ladder. So next coming to the detection of the hang long wing or uh, citrus greeting bacterium. So here uh, from the field collected samples, the total DNA was extracted from the leaf samples by using the DNA as a plant mini kit. And the presence of this um, uh, citrus uh, greening bacterium was confirmed through the uh, molecular tools like PCR by targeting the 16S RDNA uh, genome and ribosomal protein genes of the bacterium. So here, these are the two primer set, uh, which are using, used for the direction of this uh, greening bacterium. So first set is the Y1 and Y2C. So these primers, uh, they can specifically detect 
uh, all the uh, three species of uh, candidate uh, species, but it cannot differentiate what type of uh, uh, species that is associated with the greening disease. That is one thing with these primers and uh, A2 JP primers. Uh, they have the feasibility that uh, they can detect and also they can differentiate the type of uh, candidatus liberobacter species which is associated with the uh, greening disease. So here, okay, uh, in case of uh, candidatus uh, liberobacter asiaticus, which can yield an amplicon of 703 base pairs, but in case of africanus, which can yield an amplicon of 669 base pairs. So these are the PCR reaction mixture and PCR cycle that are followed, uh, standardized and followed for this uh, PCR assay for detection of the graining bacterium. So these are the representative gel pictures uh, showing the positive results. Uh, in case of OI1 and OI2C primers, so so here after the getting the PCR amplification, so the PCR product were subjected to the uh, restriction digestion in order to know the what type of uh, candidate species that is associated with the greening disease. So here the restriction digestion was carried with the enzyme that is uh, expo. So here after the restriction digestion, uh, the, uh, the product were uh, run in the gel electrophoresis where it can yield two amplicants in case of candidatus liberobacter asiaticus and three amplicants uh, in case of the candidatus liberobacter africanus. So here, uh, by this uh, uh, study, we can uh, came to know that the associated species is the can uh, for greening disease is the candidatus uh, liberobacter asiaticus. So further, again, this uh, it was confirmed with the other other uh, set of primers that is J2J5 uh, primers. So very we can got the an amplicon of seven zero three base pairs in all the positive samples, which indicating that the uh, candidatus uh, liberobacter asiatic is the species which is associated with the greening disease in the megalaya. So these are the uh, description of the isolates which are collected from the different locations uh, in low altitude, medium altitude and high altitude and respective districts and areas and GPS locations and their positiveness to the PCR and RT-PCR reactions. <laughs> So here, so location-wise instance of uh, CTV and uh, graining bacterium was uh, assessed by the, uh, after the de uh, detection of the molecular tools. So here in this assessment, uh, we can came to know that the, in the mid altitude, uh, we can find the more instance of citrus the low and high altitude. And overall, out of uh, 60 samples collected, that is uh, 10 samples from the each location, so out of the 60, 27 were found positive for the CTV uh, with an average instance of 45% and 35 were found positive for the uh, citrus greening disease with an average instance of 58.33%. <laughs> so the third objective is to uh, assess the genetic diversity of the major pathogen associated with the citrus decline of gas in Mandarin in Megalia. So this molecular detection assays, uh, I can, uh, we can find that the Citrus screening bacterium was found to be the major pathogen, which is associated with the citrus decline. So we want to know the genetic diversity uh, of this citrus bacterium. Also, the PCR uh, applicants were verified, and these applicants uh, were sent for the gene sequence with respect to the 16 so RDNA genome. Sir, two minutes time only. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Hmm. So these samples were sent for the sequencing. Uh, and the sequencing results uh, showed that uh, these all isolates, uh, they are uh, uh, clustering in one clad. That means they're showing there is no genetic diversity among these isolates with the, uh, respect to the uh, location. And they show some variation with the candidatus liberobacter africa, africanus, which is uh, forming the separate clad. So coming to the summary and conclusion. So, uh, Increase of the citrus decline was observed in the all the altitudes of Megalia, and the symptoms of the CTV that observed uh, during the survey includes vein clearing, vein corking, and vein flecking, uh, yellowing. Uh, the stampeding symptom, which is a prominent symptom uh, of CTV, was not observed in the Cosi Mandarin, but it is observed in the other species like uh, uh, Pomelo and uh, some lemon. And graining symptoms uh, with uh, which are observed during this 
a survey which includes leaf mottling green islands chloritic patches and dieback symptoms are observed and the rt pcr assay uh, found that the ctv infection in this on 27 samples out of 60 uh, which is ranging from 30% in doggy and 70% in umiam and the minimum ctv incidence was recorded from doggy and nangpo followed by the amberendam sohra and the highest incidence was observed in the umiam and morangkini uh, next coming to the pcr assay so which is found and uh, positive for the 35 samples out of 60 and the percentage range from the 30% in nangpon sohra and 90% dog and umia and minimum uh, see, uh, greening incidence was found in nangpon sohra and the uh, highest incidence in the dog and umia so here <coughs> the ctv and uh, greening incidence was high in the mid altitudes uh, when compared to the low and uh, high altitude conditions and the presence of the vector cellular vector was observed in the mid to high and low altitudes and affid vector was not observed during this survey and the molecular characterization and genetic diversity assay uh, was first of all that there is no genetic name in this two things respect to this candidate vector hcas hcas and they form a separate clade Uh, with the africanus bacteria the future prospects so these regions are highly conserved so they can be used for the quick detection programs and, and in order to know the genetic diversity studies the ompg gene and the multi local gene can be used for the further future studies to assess the genetic diversity of this liver bacteria asiaticus isolate so first i would like to And of course, these two uh, thank you, sir. pieces which you have selected are very, yes, very important. And uh, yes, if the organizers uh, have planned that uh, some questions may be asked, then I will invite the audience if they have any queries uh, uh, with this uh, Mr. Ganesh. And if there is no query or no clarification, then I will call uh, Dr. Sai Pratap. Uh, Uh, from agricultural college bapatla uh, for presentation of his research work for this prestigious award mr pratap uh, yes sir sir am i audible sir yeah 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 uh, thank you uh, start, sir uh, mr ganesh you want share your this uh, screen just okay, okay sir okay sir thank you इंडिया it is cultivated in uh, semi arid tropics uh, which possess a important source of protein uh, which is up to 21 to 22% uh, india is a major producer of pigeon pea with uh, more than uh, 70 70% of area and more than 60% of its production but uh, with uh, compared to average uh, productivity to world it is very less in india because of due to different uh, biotic constraints like uh, sterility mosaic Pigeon wheat, white after white, and uh, part border complexes. Sterility mosaic disease. It, it it is one of the most important diseases caused cause even hundred percent loss as the severe conditions. Uh, the symptoms vary from uh, yellow mosaic, chlorotic spots, and complete sterility. The disease is restricted to Asian countries. Uh, though the disease was uh, described in uh, 1931 by Mitra, 
and that is the uh, etl is remain unknown for uh, seven decades until in 1999 by kumar atal or tikrisat described and characterized and named this pathogen present <coughs> sterility mosaic virus <coughs> and the vector for uh, sterility mosaic this is my pid mite ajani transmit uh, ppsmv in uh, semi persistent manner which is highly host specific to pigeon few wild relatives this smd is particularly caused by complex of two mra viruses that is pigeon pestality mosaic virus 1 and pigeon pestality mosaic virus 2 this first virus is characterized kumaral in 1999 but the second virus is characterized after 15 years of first virus which is associated with smd which is characterized by albino atal in 2015 uh, both were from uh, icrisat uh, Uh, though there is a regular occurrence of smd pigeon fever was observed in india there were no systemic surveys in recent years moreover the molecular variability and uh, of ppsmv 1 and 2 and their host range has a little background even uh, this the strain variability coupled with the uh, association of the second virus made complex complex etiology of this difficult to manage viral disease so with this background we framed four objectives that is prevalence of smd and the variability in the pigeon fever sterility mosaic virus in southern india to identify the potential alternative and filtering host for ppsmv and to determine the possible existence of ppsmv strains and identify the severe strain for uh, smd and finally management of smd of pigeon fever the first objective a roving survey was conducted during uh, 2017 uh, rainy season uh, in southern india uh, all the surveyed regions uh, were found to be major problem this all in all surveyed regions smd was a major problem in pigeon p that is in andhra pradesh the chittur district recorded the highest average disease incidence of 11 11.80% whereas in telangana the disease incidence was uh, um, low whereas vikarabad the district recorded 4.15% average of 4.1% disease incidence in karnataka totally 10 district were surveyed surveyed for this particular disease among the surveyed locations kolar district were recorded highest average disease incidence of 19.28% in karnataka the disease range was uh, more that is from 0 to 47.5% uh, incidence whereas in tamil nadu the krishnagiri district was uh, recorded 16.25% uh, smd and uh, it is a typical reference categorize the disease incidence from 1% to 25% that is is to one uh, the disease incidence was uh, severe towards the center central region from the coastal region this is because of uh, the it is usually grown under for rain fed conditions whereas in a coastal region the paddy and other uh, high irrigated conditions the disease incidence was higher uh, towards the Uh, central part that is gulbarga gulbarga region and uh, podli uh, that ananthapur and uh, tandoor near tandoor and kolar districts were recorded highest disease incidence during the 2017 crop season for the molecular characterization uh, we have totally seven uh, representative samples were selected in southern india covering uh, four all four uh, districts all four states uh, among the seven uh, samples uh, we have we did uh, rna uh, extraction and uh, we have sequenced for the all the seven samples for protein in the phylogenetic tree constructed uh, for ppsm1 and 2 separately ppsm1 there is a, a the particularly the ppsm2 there is a close relationship we observed close relationship with uh, pig mosaic virus rather than the ppsm2 ppsm1 and for the identification of potential alternative and uh, filtering host uh, we have collected uh, around 12 uh, nicotiana species uh, from ctra rajamundry and we use for the sap transmission among the tested the 12 nicotiana species uh, nicotiana benzamina is the only affected one uh, which is uh, showed the chlorotic ring spots after 25 to 30 days of post inoculation whereas the uh, uh, 60 to 70 days of the post inoculation the symptoms were systemic and which produced the uh, yellow mosaic and crinkling of leaves which is uh, tested positive for both the viruses in rt pcr uh, through mic transmission 
Uh, in Sitra, on wheat species were tested. Nearly for more than 40 wheat species we tested uh, at Ikrisat in uh, in uh, glasshouse conditions. Among the tested intercrop and weed species, uh, mainly three Fajolis vulgaris uh, cultivars, that is stop crop, bountiful, and pintoki, were uh, affected by this particular virus. Uh, there is only one weed species, that is Prozophora rotary, was affected by this uh, pigeon pistillate mosaic virus. This was confirmed by RT PCR, even ELISA. We first we confirmed by ELISA, and then we did for confirmation for a separate infection. If there is any single infection virus or both are infected, then we confirm for the both infection in all the test positive uh, samples. For mite transmission, uh, uh, 24 accessions of uh, 12 uh, Trajanus uh, species were obtained from uh, Ikrisa gene bank. And uh, in the same way, we uh, inoculated the mite by leaf tapping method. And uh, we did for uh, RT PCR. For confirmation for uh, one and second uh, viruses. Uh, mainly, this Kajanis carabioides, uh, three accessions were found positive for both viruses, whereas in Kajanis platycarpus, so one accession were found for uh, that is one five double six one were found for both uh, infestation of mite and uh, both virus infection. Uh, this could be considered, this particularly this Kajanis uh, platycarpus and carabioides considered to be the potential uh, sources for the alternative sources for the this SMD. Uh, to determine the possible existence of PPSMA strains and uh, to identify the severe strain in causing sterility mosaic disease, uh, there are uh, uh, samples were obtained from uh, three hotspot locations in southern India. These three hotspot locations were uh, uh, huge disease incidence of SMD. We tested uh, RT-PCR from the collected samples in which a potential location are found to be infected by both the viruses. Whereas in Coimbatore, the mainly the second virus is causing the uh, sterility mosaic disease. Whereas in uh, Beng Bengaluru as well, the mainly in uh, mixed infection causing main disease, along with the one sample we got uh, only PPSMA2 infection. Uh, uh, efforts were made to uh, separate the one and two viruses for the to study the severe strain causing the pigeon pea, pigeon pea sterility mosaic disease. But the same in the same way, second objective, we tested 12 Nicotian and 24 and 12 Kajana species, 16 crop species and 13, 37 wheat species, both by sap inoculation, mite inoculation, as well as a single mite transmission also we have tested. But unfortunately, we could not able to separate uh, by these host and these methods. We are unfortunately, we, we could not able to separate the mixed infection of viruses. And uh, we further extended our uh, molecular study uh, to see the relationship between uh, in polymerase and the uh, glycoprotein genes with the pig mosaic viruses. Interestingly, even here also, in both the polymerase and the glycoprotein, we found the significant relationship between relationship with the pig mosaic virus by the PPSMV2, rather than the pig mosaic PPSMV1. Uh, this could ex explain uh, these PPSMV1 and 2 followed a separate uh, independent evolutionary in causing the sterility mosaic disease. And uh, we tested the multi-location screening trials uh, there are 20 newly developed uh, pigeon pea genotypes were obtained uh, from uh, breeding department ICRISAC. Uh, we tested at three locations for uh, two consecutive years, 2017 and 2018. And uh, the uh, leaf sampling method was uh, followed to inoculate the samples. Uh, we found uh, uh, three genotypes. Uh, which are uh, resistance in all three locations that is icpl 16078 icpl 16086 16087 we found resistant uh, three genotypes in at the bengaluru location the, the genotype majority of genotypes falls under category of uh, susceptible to highly susceptible uh, so this could be that the particularly this bengaluru isolate could be considered as a severe strain in causing the sterility mosaic disease Whereas in Coimbatore location, the disease, uh, the genotypes were uh, resistant, majority of uh, genotypes were resistant. And uh, whereas in Patanchuru, that is causing both the strains causing, we, we found uh, mixed uh, reactions. 
Uh, so I acknowledge uh, Dr. P. Anil Kumar, Dr. Rikishan Sudhini, Principal Scientist at ICRISAT, and my advisory members for uh, extending their uh, and support and extending their support, support throughout the, my research work. And I also thank US Bangalore, US TNA and IHR Plant Pathology Department for extending their help in uh, screening work and uh, getting good pictures of uh, Athere Kajani pictures. I also thank uh, UGC for providing research fellowship and thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Pratap, for completing your <coughs> presentation in time. Thank you. Uh, really, you have uh, conducted a very good uh, uh, investigation. Uh, I would like to know one thing. What new you have uh, did in this your study, which has not been done earlier on this uh, particular disease? That is, this uh, Earlier, yeah, sir. Earlier, actually, we found uh, uh, this Kajanis Karabia edit alternative source. Yes. Earlier, there is only one uh, accession, not, not wide accessions were tested for uh, infection. But yes. we found these Kajanis platycarpus and scarabioides infection by both the viruses. Okay. Infection, this uh, separate. But earlier, uh, we, we don't know the, uh, this SMD caused by one virus or second virus. There is up to 2015, there is a, only one virus was characterized. After yes. 2006, 2015, there was not much study on the second virus. Hardly we can find one or two but by Dr. B.P. Patil from IHR, mm -hmm. we found that study. And also we tested for, is there any alternative source for, which is allowing only single virus or which is allowing both the viruses. So we tested uh, through rt Okay, uh, thank, you. thank you very much. And I uh, just you and share your screen. Yes, sir. Any question from what? Our... Okay, thank you, sir. No, then uh, I would like to call, <coughs> Arut Selvan. Yes, sir. So you please go ahead. Sure, sir. Sure. Pratap, please uh, unshare kare isko screen do. Just, just unshare. You first close your presentation. Mr. Pratap. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Selman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, warm yeah. welcome and good afternoon to the all the organizers, committee members, participants, and my senior friends. Myself, Harut Selman from Professor Jayshankar Telangana State University. Today, I am going to present my PhD work studies on influence of weather parameters on occurrence and development of cremal disease in castor and its management. This is my advisory committee. The background of my work, what it is gray mold disease is caused by botetinia ricini is becoming a major constraint in several castor growing areas. This disease is strongly governed by weather conditions. In case of Telangana, area under castor cultivation has drastically come down due to the disease. Chemical control is the efficient and the reliable crop protection against the disease. Considering the importance and the economic damage caused by the disease, our present objectives has been framed to determine the effect of relative humidity, temperature, and capsule wetness per year on growth and development of remote disease under in vitro and in vivo conditions. And second objective is to quantify the weather parameters in relation to disease development. Third objective is to determine the efficacy of different fungicides in controlling the gray mold disease of castor under laboratory, polios, and field condition. The present investigation has been carried out at ICR IAOR, Rajadhanagar, Farmer Fields of Mehbunagar District, Telangana, and the Department of Plant Pathology, PJTSU, Hyderabad. We collected the gray mold infection in DCH519 cultivar, and we have isolated and maintained the pathogen in modified oatmeal agar medium. After attaining the pure culture, we have undergone the pathogenic test to prove the coach postulates, where we found that the castor racemes is completely covered with gray mold growth within seven days. We studied the effect of different culture media on growth, mycelial growth and sporulation of botetinia. For that, we have taken 10 different culture media, and we found that oatmeal agar media and potato dextrose media produces instant mycelial growth and good sporulation. 
to my first objective to determine the effect of relative humidity temperature capsule wetness period and growth and development of cream wool pathogen and the in vitro in vivo the first experiment we have conducted is we have tested the different temperatures on radial growth and sporulation of quaternary resni on oatmeal agar media in this experiment we have taken nine different temperatures from the experiment we found that the temperature 22 degree recorded highest mycelial growth of 84.7 mm with the highest sporulation of 3.61 into 10 to the power of 6 spores per liter coming to our second experiment uh, we have conducted a weather disease relationship study for that we have taken 10 different caster cultivars against the disease which was shown at uh, icr iur polyos from the result we found that dcs 519 I recorded the highest disease severity of 84.5 percent on the sixth day. Hence, it is a popular hy- hybrid. It was used for field exper- experimentation. The next study we have conducted is we have quantified the uh, gray mold disease through different spore concentration. We have prepared ten different spore concentrations of botrytina resini gray mold pathogen. In this experiment, we have used detached spike technique. In this, uh, the results reveal that the spore concentration about 20 to the power of six can significantly cause high disease severity coming to the next experiment we have studied the effect of different temperature and relative humidity on gray mold disease severity by detached spike technique here we used the sustainable cultivar dch519 and placed with the six different temperature with the corresponding rh here we found out that temperature 21 with the corresponding rh 90 degree recorded 100% disease severity under controlled conditions same kind of similar experiment has been carried out using detached leaf technique and detached capsule technique here also we followed the same temperature with the corresponding uh, relative humidity we got the same result of uh, detached spike technique where the temperature 21 and the corresponding rh recorded the maximum uh, disease severity in both detached leaf technique and detached spike technique you can see the results the, at the 24 at the 21 degree celsius the percentage severity is maximum both in detached leaf and detached capsule technique coming to our next experiment we have tested the effect of different resin spike wetness hours on gray mold disease in this method also we have used detached spike technique here we used six different wetness hours and we found that after 6 day of inoculation we found that highest gray mold disease severity of 80% was recorded at 20 hours wet resin wetness per day and we have also studied the variability in infection level of caster gray mold so in that we have taken four different stages of caster resin and we have tested in that we found that stage 1 early inflorescence stage and stage 2 seed setting stage are highly prone to high infection and greater susceptible to gray mold hence we completed our laboratory study and glasso study this with this data we have started the polio experiment in the icr iur in that we have used a, a susceptible cultivar dch519 this experiment is tested for three seasons we have taken up sowing in polios of icr iur after the crop we reached the flowering stage we have installed the canopy sensor device to record the weather data and also in addition to that we have installed the wireless sensor nodes and wireless sensor gateway for collection of data once the capsule reaches a maturity before a flowering and capsule development stage we have prepared the fresh inoculum of spore suspension and sprayed on the caster resins these were the experiments we have carried out for three season for the karif 2018 and 19 for the rabi 2018 and 19 and karif 2019 and 20 from the polio segment we conclude that this gray mold disease severity ranges from 82.5 to 100% where the maximum temperature was 29.4 and minimum temperature was 22.3 during the period our rh was 91.8% with a capsule wetness hours of 18.3 hours per day from this we conclude that temperature rh and the capsule wetness highly influence the disease this data is further used for developing disease prediction model same condition we have used for Uh, under field condition under natural epiphytic condition where we have taken the susceptible cultivar and taken sowing at the second fourth night of june so that the flowering and capsule development may coincide with the maximum rainfall and high humidity which usually occurs during the month of august and september besides that we also installed the wireless sensor networks in the farmers field and research farms these sensors will record the weather data on hourly basis plus uh, we have recorded percent disease severity on daily basis manually this was the identification of farmers fields for deployment of wireless sensor we have taken for the season of karif 2018 and karif 2019 similarly as a polios we also installed the wireless sensor network and uh, wireless sensor node and wireless sensor gateway for collection of weather data on hourly basis 
these were the deployment size uh, at GPS location of farmers field and the research field for the last uh, three years Karif season, 2017, 18 and 19. So during the field time, we have collected the temperature, relative humidity, capsule wetness, and person disease severity for the season 2017 in Jangamrati Palli village, Menugamni Palli village, RARS Palai center, and ICR IOR. Same we have conducted for different village for the Karif 2018 and 19 in Lankal village, Patharjad village, Yamki village of Mahabunaga district, and our research farm, ICR IOR. From the results of both the farmer's field and the uh, research farm, we conclude that the disease commonly occurred between the 20th September to 9th October, showing the various uh, disease CVRT ranges from 23 to 74% of disease CVRT, where the temperature, maximum temperature will reach up to 30.9 to 32.6, whereas minimum temperature will be 22.7 to 22.9. During the period, RH was reported as 87.6 to 90.6, with a capsule wetness period of 1.2 to 14.9 hours per day. From this field experiment, we have concluded that temperature RH capsule wetness has significantly increased the gray mold disease in caster. And it, in addition to that, for the last three years, we found out that in the month of September and October, primary and secondary primary uh, resumes were severely affected. High intensity of disease was observed during the Karib season 2019 due to high rainfall in the month of September. This data on weather and uh, the person disease severity we have used for developing the disease prediction model. Coming to the second objective, we have established a quantitative relationship between the disease and the weather parameter. We have collected and compiled and tabulated the, all the laboratory data, glasshouse data, growth chamber data, polyos data, and field data. And we have developed the weather indices. We have used a linear prediction model, which is based on weather parameters we will keep as independent variable and person disease severity as dependent variable, which were fitted by the different selection model using the data obtained from wireless center. Here we used three different models such as forward regression model, backward regression model, and lasso regression model. These three models we have taken for selecting the best model. Best model will be selected based on archaic information criterion and base information criterion. After running through SAS program, we found out that backward regression model produces the best and lower AIC value on root mean square. Hence, we considered the backward regression model for fitting in our decision support system. In addition to the model, we also included the decision, gray mold decision rules, such as the sage of the crop, data of sowing, spike stage, and this is set data derived from the laboratory of field conditions and polyose conditions. These decision rules and our uh, disease prediction model are incorporated in the Castor gray mold adversary system web page, which was developed by ICR AOR Hyderabad. We have done validation for the uh, 2019 curry season. This experiment was conducted in ICR IOR field, Jekler village, Kanimata village, and Undiala village, Narva Mandal, Mabu Nagatishri. From our experiment, we could predict the uh, dis predict the gray mold disease severity, which is on for on par with the observed results. Predicted is showing 71 to 77 percent of disease prediction, whereas it almost on par with the observed result, which is that is 70 to 74 percent during the uh, time of 20th September to 9th October. During the period, the maximum temperature was 29 to 31.4. Minimum was 22.7 to 22.9. Yes, sir. After this, after uh, there was a congenial weather during the season, the message was sent to the castor uh, gray mold practices were sent because we have sent the SMS alerts to the local farmers who are registered to us. We have sent two SMS on 17th September and 29th September. Uh, 29th September to take up the management practices against the gray mold disease. To my last objective, we also determined the efficacy of different fungicides in controlling the gray mold of castor under laboratory policy and field condition. In this, we have taken 10 different fungicides and tested in culture media and text type. In culture media, we have used the poison food technique with the seven different concentrations and incubate the plates at 23 degrees. From the results of 50 ppm, we found that propiconazole, carbon disease, pyroclostrobin, perfuxapyroclate, typhonoclose, and hexagonosol found effective. Whereas in case of same 10 fungicides with seven different concentrations as tested using detached spike technique, we found that at 100 ppm, we found that propiconazole, carbon disease, pyroclostrobin, perfuxapyroclate showed a significant in uh, inhibition of mycelial growth and infection when compared to others. So 
these effective these three effective fungicides were tested under polyhose under artificial epiphytic condition whereas in field under natural conditions to uh, to create the artificial epiphytic conditions we have used cooling pad fan system and fogging for 3 minutes every hour during the this is severity was recorded manually from the experiment of polyhose results we have found that propiconosol uh, recorded the lowest from 5.3 to 6.9 which means that is significantly reduced the gray mold disease severity from 89.23% over control whereas in case of main field condition propiconosol shows the best by uh, by recording the lowest disease severity of 8% with the highest cost benefit ratio of 1 is to 4.2 hence we found the propiconosol we went for an on farm demonstration trial in a, a farmers field in narva mandal of mehbub nagar district prophylactic spray of propiconosol was given in the farmers field based on the sms alert generated by our iowa developed uh, decision support system two minutes remaining ah, yes sir observation on this is severe and seed was recorded here we have taken two different sprays one is uh, propiconosol one spray and propiconosol two spray in one spray we got a dc severe of 23.3 to 24.9 with the highest uh, cost benefit ratio of 1 is to 3.7 to 1 is to 3.8 whereas in case of two sprays we got uh, three, 9.2 to 10.3 This is CVRT with the highest cost benefit ratio of one is to four point nine to four point. So from this, I strongly conclude that the temperature, relative humidity, and capsule wetness strongly governs and influences the disease severity of gray mold in castor. Under favorable condition, one to two sprays of propiconosol point one percent based on gray mold alert can effectively manage the gray mold disease of castor and also minimize the yield loss. I thank you, all, the Indian Phytopathology Society and organizers and committee members for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Selwan and audience. Yes, sir. Audience, I <clears throat> like to invite if I have anybody has any query. So if no, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Selwan. Thank you. And yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I would like to call uh, uh, Parasuram Rathod uh, for this uh, presentation of his uh, research work. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you just uh, see middle share is from there. You just. See. hello sir uh, is it is audible sir yeah yeah audible it is audible what is different type of sound is coming is there any problem uh, no sir just i am sharing my uh, screen sir and just keep uh, some distance away from your mic you are too close to your uh, yes. yes sir yes just look, enabled look in the middle of the screen participants yes. chat and then uh, share screen first you, you open your uh, presentation in your computer and minimize and then go in this uh, screen okay. yeah yeah e e no no just you first you open your uh, yeah sir uh, you can see my screen sir yeah, yeah, yeah. yes okay so your time is starts now uh, yes uh, good afternoon uh, everyone i am rathod parshuram and i am here to present uh, uh, on exploring potential of pseudomonas for plant growth promoting traits and in vitro separation of charcoal rot uh, in uh, soybean uh, so here Uh, as we know uh, i will give a brief introduction about my topic here uh, uh, we can know that uh, by uh, 2050 uh, the population uh, 
uh, global population is about to project by uh, increase uh, projected to be increased by 30% as the population is increasing uh, as we know that the demand for the food also increases uh, and uh, according to the sources and it will be increased by 70% as uh, the population is uh, as population is increasing uh, here uh, uh, there is a chance uh, there is a uh, there is a chance where the more and more land is come into the uh, agriculture field so uh, besides that uh, at the same time we are going to uh, dump more and more uh, pesticides and harmful chemicals uh, in the agriculture so at the same time we are uh, going to lose most of our the microbes beneficial microbes present in the and other uh, natural ecosystem uh, present around the agriculture field as we are using more more and more uh, chemical fertilizers uh, in the agriculture land at the same time uh, uh, at the same time we are uh, uh, we are trying a an eco friendly manner uh, agriculture production uh, at the same time, uh, we are going to see the sustainable production of the uh, agriculture to feed the, such a huge population uh, for for coming years. So, uh, when we talk about the sustainable agriculture, uh, we uh, definitely really come across the uh, beneficial micro use of beneficial microorganisms in the agriculture, like plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. As we are using plant growth promoting uh, rhizobacteria. Uh, we suggest here that the potential isolates really play an important role in the uh, agriculture uh, to get uh, get over uh, a good results. So with all these limitations, I would like to introduce uh, uh, all my objectives of my research are initially I have gone for the uh, collection, isolation, identification and biochemical characterization of uh, uh, fluorescent pseudomonas derived from the soil and as well specifically with the basica specific rhizosphere. Uh, I'm maintaining here basica specific because as we know, uh, there are the special characters, uh, rhizosphere of the basica, which act as um, a uh, very important uh, character where we can see uh, the isolate uh, the beneficial microorganisms isolated from the uh, from there have uh, a disease separation character uh, character so i have gone for the brassica specific rhizosphere of a few isolates then uh, majorly the field evaluation of all those isolates as we know the most of the research we are doing on the beneficial microorganisms or other microorganisms which is mainly restricted to the lab levels uh, as we know and the field levels uh, field level uh, trials or field level practices uh, completely very low uh, uh, these days so i tried here um, we tried here mostly most of the work is completely related to the field especially uh, when relating to the beneficial uh, microorganism like flores and pseudomonas and finally beside going for the plant growth promoting uh, uh, plant growth promoting characters we i have also gone for the uh, going the bipartite and tripartite interactions so interactions of uh, uh, bioagents with the uh, root pathogen as well as the pathogen bioagent and the root interactions or tripartite interactions uh, using the microfauna fazilla and uh, sazolina and soybean model system uh, here initially i have gone for uh, collecting the approximately 88 soil samples from the different areas of the bastar and bilaspur uh, districts of the chhattisgarh state as well the four soil samples from the brassica specific uh, rhizosphere from the fields of the telangana uh, where i have isolated uh, uh, different uh, isolates among uh, approximately 88 soil samples among them based upon the fluorescent produced on the uh, kings bee media of the all the fluorescent pseudomonas i have selected uh, uh, 10 isolates which are producing the uh, more fluorescent so based upon the fluorescent uh, production i have selected the 10 isolates and then i have um, and this is how I isolated the uh, fluorescent pseudomonas on the Kingsby media. And finally, I have picked up a single colony uh, of the bacteria and maintained on the Kingsby uh, slant for the uh, further analysis. Uh, after that, uh, after isolation of the uh, bacteria from the soil samples, I have gone for the distribution test of different uh, pseudomonas species. As uh, as we know, the most of the species of the pseudomonas dwelling uh, availing in the soil, uh, like pseudomonas originus of fluorescence and putida, among them, the, whatever the distinguishing test I have carried out, uh, most of the isolate among ten isolates, most of the isolates fall into the pseudomonas originus, and a very few or the two isolates fall into the uh, pseudomonas fluorescence. Now, besides that. Uh, we uh, we have also gone for differential utilization of the carbon uh, source of the isolates of the fluorescent pseudomonas as we know that most of the carb uh, carbon dioxide is fixed uh, fixed by the uh, root system 
through which the carbohydrate uh, released or the rhizot deposits we can say which are uh, responsible for attracting the beneficial microorganisms in the soil uh, so based upon that uh, we have gone for the uh, carbohydrate uh, test of all the 10 isolates among them uh, we saw a differential utilization of the carbohydrates and which falls into the four major uh, clusters among them the isolate uh, bs bsp19 uh, which is an isolate of which is uh, which is identified as a altogether from the uh, 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 all the other uh, um, isolates because bsp19 is utilizing the raminose carbohydrate uh, which is altogether a different and it is utilized after completion of the all the other source of the carbon so uh, it has fall from the uh, for definitely uh, identified as a, a different cluster besides uh, there are the two isolates which have shown the completely a uh, same utilization of the uh, carbohydrates now by this we can say that uh, every rhizosphere or every rhizo uh, rhizo deposits has a very specific to the each and every microorganism and every rhizosphere has a very specificness uh, on uh, carbohydrate utilization so it is very important to know uh, what kind of uh, food material that uh, microbes are attracted which is very important for identifying a very potential species in uh, in uh, knowing the what kind of carbohydrate they are utilizing and besides that uh, we have also gone for the standard data for selected nutritional and general phenotypic characteristics of selected fluorescent pseudomonas we have compared the different uh, biowars of the fluorescent pseudomonas putida and uh, fluorescent originosa uh, so based upon the carbohydrate utilization uh, we said that uh, pseudomonas originosa expressed this pseudomonas uh, originosa expressed a 70% similarity Uh, with the uh, similarity with the 10 isolates in the present investigation which indicates that standard data set also derived the component of the uh, species uh, identity uh, so uh, besides identifying the phenotypically we have also gone for uh, uh, dna isolations and uh, we have also gone for the sequencing activities like uh, by uh, pcr amplification profile of employing Uh, two primer 16s uh, uh, rrna for species identity uh, we got this result and uh, we sent uh, the pcr data uh, for uh, ampl- uh, pcr uh, pcr data for uh, sequencing where the european laboratory bangalore for uh, sanger sequencing we got this uh, we got the faster sequences and we got for blast at the pseudomonas genome database and ncbi and we got the most of the isolates for fluorescent uh, pseudomonas originosa originosa isolates and few like uh, bsp uh, 23 and uh, uh, bs3 were found uh, pseudomonas chlororaphis subspecies so this is how we have identified uh, we have isolated and identified the uh, species of the uh, pseudomonas mm. and we found most of the isolates are uh, pseudomonas originosa Uh, besides going for the species identity we have also gone for some few of the biochemical characterizations of the isolates where we have isolated among them uh, acc acc is an uh, ethylene is one of the plant uh, hormone essential for plant growth and development uh, development ethylene is produced endogenously in all the plants in response to the different stresses as we know it ethylene uh, is one of the important hormone responsible for uh, plant growth as well also responsible for the stress response when uh, when the quantity of the uh, stress increases in the plant when plant uh, go through the different stress conditions uh, uh, more and more ethylene is released and uh, stunted growth of the plant we can see in that so under uh, under that conditions the bacterium which is having the uh, enzyme called acc dmnase which which can utilize uh, the acc in the plant Uh, which can utilize acc uh, which can utilize acc in the plant which act as an uh, uh, precursor for the ethylene so it utilizes acc and it converts into the two oxy uh, butanate and ammonia which uh, which can be utilized by the plant in a free form so the bacteria which uh, which uh, it can decrease the stress response in the plant so this activity uh, we have gone for the uh, testing in the plate assay where all the 10 isolates have utilized acc as a uh, source of nitrogen uh, whereas in the negative uh, reaction where uh, no growth of the uh, no utilization of no growth of the all the isolates have seen Uh, beside performing the acc we have also gone for the uh, siderophore production as we know iron is a very important uh, uh, thing uh, in the plant which is utilized for the many metabolic uh, character and in aerobic conditions iron is iron available in the uh, as a fe3 plus which is an uh, uh, unaccessible form of iron so plant growth promoting rhizobacteria have microbes beneficial microbes have ability to produce the uh, iron chelators called siderophore 
which can uh, iron chelators car uh, cetero4 which have the ability to uh, make fe3 plus 2 uh, fe fe plus 2 form and uh, available to the plants among them bsp19 isolate has uh, outperformed all uh, which is heavy, uh, which is seen to be the more uh, uh, producing more cedero4 as we can see on the uh, plate assays where uh, most of the isolates uh, produced uh, a very a very high uh, iron chelators uh, here the media is provided with a <coughs> hydroxyquinone mediated uh, 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 hydroxyquinone mediated cedero4 where media is provided with hydroxyquinone and hydroxyquinone is supposed to be act as a highest iron chelators and the isolate which is which can uh, uh, chelate the iron uh, that o oh, that isolate only can grow on this media as they are provided with the hydroxyquinone uh, besides this we are also going for the um, phosphor solubilization phosphor solubilization thing uh, here uh, here also uh, as the soil is a major reservoir of the uh, phosphorus but uh, it is in a, an available form uh, unavailable from uh, especially when the plant accept the phosphorus from the soil in a, a monobasic or dibasic form Okay, uh, in that condition, uh, the phosphate solubilizing bacteria helpful in uh, converting this uh, unaccessible form of phosphorus into the uh, accessible form. And uh, among them, 9704 uh, of among all the isolates found outperformed where uh, it has for more amount of uh, phosphate solubilization activities um, by the 9704 isolate. And it, it has seen uh, in uh, plate assays also where a large amount of uh, uh, large uh, large amount of uh, circular is found in the uh, plate assay where the plate is provided with the uh, bromocrystal brew which is a uh, ph indicator uh, and uh, besides this the ia production also uh, we have gone for the biochemical characterization activities like bsp23 uh, has performed in uh, produced more ia uh, production and now uh, these are the lab activities uh, to uh, cross check our isolates um, whether uh, whether they are uh, identification or biochemical characterization besides this as i said most of the activities are uh, field level uh, so now uh, as we know uh, these uh, these times we, uh, we really come across a news where there is a problem in germination of the soya uh, soya bean so uh, this is how we are going to uh, come across that constant like uh, we are just going through the seed treatment of uh, potential isolates and we can uh, see the results here uh, different days a third day fourth day and the seventh day uh, reactions in between the treated one and the control one uh, where the uh, treated one has gone faster and good germination percentage can be seen uh, when compared to the control uh, in case of the treatment conclude, you have two minutes left uh, yes sir uh, and then uh, other uh, we can see the different field activities uh, very clearly among the uh, uh, treated one and untreated one and uh, here also uh, in the different crops as i am saying uh, besides uh, uh, going through the uh, uh, different uh, field activities we have also gone for the formal field large scale activities where uh, the increase in the yield uh, especially uh, with the 9704 uh, isolate we can see and we have we have also seen for the different crops like chickpea the development of the root is very uh, nice when uh, compared to the treated and untreated uh, and the large scale field rate in case of the uh, chickpea where the mortality rate is also uh, very less in case of the uh, treated one when compared to the untreated one uh, the same thing which has happened uh, which we, we saw with the wheat where the control uh, control plot has shown less dense uh, of the population uh, uh, where and here you can see the, the how the difference the treated one and untreated one where the 9704 isolate has out, outperformed everyone and uh, we can see the more difference in uh, in case of yield also this is the one recent data about the uh, rice uh, where the uh, difference in the uh, 9704 uh, isolate has performed very well in the yield as well as the plant growth promoting activities besides this we have also gone for the uh, management activities by using the fluorescent pseudomonas where the 9704 uh, has 60% uh, inhibited the disease. So using these characters uh, to see these effects on the uh, natural level, we have gone for a modified technique where 
the plate is modified into form of an arc when uh, adhesive tape is tied on both sides where the cavity is filled with the soil and the seed uh, we can say uh, so here and here is the plant how we can grow so this technique helpful to uh, helpful to access the roots of the plant very easily without disturbing the plant system and it is very handy uh, you can carry uh, everywhere without disturbing the root system and the root the root uh, system is easily uh, visible so that you can carry out the different uh, reactions uh, so we have gone for the bipartite interactions where uh, uh, where we can uh, interaction between the uh, microfilm of azolina uh, where you can see the completely this is with a, here we are not disturbing anything uh, to the plant and we can uh, clearly access the root system uh, uh, and uh, clearly access uh, the activity of the pathogen uh, going through the and we saw a disease development we have synthesized uh, this technique and uh, uh, thereafter, we have also gone for the tripartite interaction, where the interaction between the bioagent, pathogen, and pseudomonas uh, uh, taken place. Where uh, the treated roots are the treated roots, uh, we can see the development of mycelia is up to the superficial level. Uh, yes, sir, almost. And to uh, to uh, see uh, to finalize this, we have also gone for the gene specific uh, using the gene specific promers where 2,4 diastyl fluoroxacin uh, is responsible for uh, suppressing the disease. And the, finally, uh, we have uh, uh, we have confirmed all the isolates, especially most of the isolates uh, by using 16S RRNA as a pseudomonas originosa. Uh, besides, uh, beneficial effects of fluorescent pseudomonas, C treatment uh, as a simple method, cost-effective method for uh, delivering the uh, bioinoculants. And we have also developed a, a new technique where uh, you can uh, access uh, the roots very easily without disturbing the plant system. And you, have, you, have, you can carry out the different bipartite and tripartite interaction, which is helpful for identifying the new bioagents uh, 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 very easily. Uh, thank you. Oh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Rath Ratho. And, yes, sir. Uh, from audience, uh, if... I would like to ask uh, uh, Parshuram. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You are able to uh, hear? Uh, yes, sir. Sure. So you selected uh, the stains based on the color, na? So yes, sir. Us. So yes, what sir. are these colors? What kind of compound they make? Uh, a compound called fluorescent, sir, uh, on which uh, the pseudomonas specific media, uh, fluorescent, uh, fluorescent, uh, uh, the fluorescent they produce. So more what is the name of that compound? Fluorescent, sir. Are you sure fluorescent? Yes, sir. Have you heard about pyrocyanin for pyrowedding? Uh, yes, sir. Pyrocyanin, pyrowedding, they are also the compound responsible for uh, producing the fluorescent, sir. Okay. So yes, the second question, uh, this uh, growth promoting activity pseudomonas has been used for a long time. Yes, sir. So what is the unique thing in your study? Uh, unique thing is, uh, sir, we are isolating the uh, pseudomonas from the different regions, especially from the brassica specific root rhizosphere. And we are utilizing that only potential isolates for going for the uh, large scale field trail, sir. Besides that, we are also evaluating that thing uh, for the suppression of the disease by using the uh, uh, our uh, modified uh, petri plate assay, sir, which is helpful for identifying the potential pseudomonas which can be used in the large scale rather of using the uh, harmful chemicals uh, in the soil, sir. Okay. Yes. So, thank you, Rathod, uh, and uh, I would like to invite uh, Pradeep Kumar Badhai. He is here. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh. Well, I start, sir? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. My name is Pradeep Kumar Badai, Department of Plant Pathology, College of Agriculture, IJK Viraipur. My thesis title is Biological Insights from Forest Muslims of Chhattisgarh with this 
टर्मिटोमाइसिस टर्मिटोरियम कॉर्पस छत्तीसगढ़ इज रिच प्लेस ऑफ मशरूम फ्लोरा एज इन द स्टेम हाई प्लांट एंडेमिसिटी इट हैज द लार्जेस्ट ट्रॉपिकल फॉरेस्ट कवर एज वेल एज डाइवर्सिटी एंड रिचनेस ऑफ इकोलॉजिकल सिस्टम्स इन द कंट्री ए नंबर ऑफ एडिबल मशरूम्स वर ग्रो इन देयर नेचुरल हैबिटेट एंड दीस मशरूम्स वर कलेक्टेड बाय लोकल पीपल एंड ट्राइब्स ऑफ सेवरल डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स ड्यूरिंग मानसून फॉर देयर कंजम्पशन और सेल माय ऑब्जेक्टिव्स आर सर्वे सर्वे मैक्रोमॉर्फिज कैटेगराइजेशन and collection of ethnomedicinal information ethnomedicinal information uh, one minute sir ethnomedicinal information of edible forest mushrooms with special reference to termitomyces species biological characterization of termitomyces species profiling of nutrient status of termitorium soil evaluation of different substrates for of for spawn production development of cultivation protocol of termitomyces species determination of nutrient content of termitomyces species from chatisgarh objective one survey macromorphological characterization and collection of ethnomedicinal information of edible forest mushrooms with special reference to termitomyces species uh, on on the survey on, on survey uh, many mushrooms were uh, collected and their morpho macromorphological characteristics hey, voice is not that loud uh, can you speak little louder okay okay sir uh on on survey many hello yeah 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 it is uh, on survey many uh, many mushrooms were uh, documented and morpho macromorphic character characters uh, macromorphic characters were recorded first agaricus agaricus bear, berobscurus amanita vaginata amanita cesarea amanita lucy astres hygrometricus astres hygrometricus is locally known as boda it is ectomycorrhizal ecto ectomycorrhizal with the plant uh, soria robusta and it is very popular in chatisgarh as it is very delicious in taste uh, six uh, auricular species boletus edulis boletus species boletus dermogentha cantharellus cantharellus species cantharellus species locally known locally known as bans putu uh, it is also ectomycorrhizal with the bamboo plantation uh, 11 uh, uh, decro decropanex spatularia ganoderma lucidum nectarius piperatus nectarius species lantinus cladopus lantinus tigrinus lycopardon iriforbi macrocybe gigantea macro lepiota procera pleurotus ostriatus rasula rosea rasula rosea is locally known as pan putu because of its uh, uh, rose color uh, second rasula congoana rasula emetica rasula zerampelina rasula albonicra ramaria species sparasis sparasis species is known as Uh, locally known as the uh, mag photo because of its uh, structure looks like brain or cabbage uh, uh, cauliflower sorry uh, 28 is sesophyllum commune uh, trametes versicolor termit uh, and 12 termitomyces uh, species were also uh, 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 recorded the termitomyces clypeatus termitomyces cylindricus termitomyces globulus Termitomyces hemby, Termitomyces Termitomyces mammiformis, Termitomyces robustus, Termitomyces striatus, Termitomyces eurasius, Termitomyces amphoan, Termitomyces aurantiacus, Termitomyces macrocarpus. Termitomyces macrocarpus is the smallest in this uh, genus. It is known as Kanki photo in Chhattisgarh in local name. Volvarella volvesia, Volvarella bombicina, and Zalira species. On the basis of survey, the mushroom map of Chhattisgarh. has been made and mushroom map of uh, different uh, districts were also made the raipur uh, mushroom map of raipur district mushroom map of uh, gariaban district mushroom map of uttar bastar kanker district and mushroom uh, mushroom map of bastar district has been made a checklist of identified mushroom species were also been made uh, their vernacular name uh, their location district gps data and habitat on which they 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 were they were, uh, they are grown had been recorded uh, as is in the table the market survey were also uh, done uh, and the the termitomyces species uh, is it is highly delicious and highly valued mushroom as in the price is 1000 1000 rupees per kg and astres hygrometricus is locally known as uh, boda uh, 
it is also uh, highly valued and highly popular and highly rich uh, rich in protein proteinaceous mushroom it is more, more popular in chatisgarh astes hygrometricus and it is its production uh, production or it's grown in uh, uh, it is uh, coming to market in tons in chatisgarh ethnomedicinal information and tribal gastronomy of wild edible mushrooms were collected as uh, astes hygrometricus boda or sarifutu uh, local name uh, patarchati rasula rosia uh tremotomyces amkuan local name kodri chati uh, uh, tremotomyces hemi bade dhunda or uh, bodu futu or bam bimbur futu local name tremotomyces hemi tremotomyces for dengur chatu their uh, culinary uh, status were also recorded Def- uh, spore prints of different tremotomyces were taken during uh, during my, during my study uh the spore prints were uh, uh, uh dark brown to uh, light pinkish in color uh dermatomyces species uh, take, uh taken under the microscope for, and uh, sterigmata sterigmata and their uh, chilocystidia and pleurocystidia and basidios for attached to the basidium were establishment of dermatomyces species mature uh, from the uh, mature fruit, fruit, fruit mature transmitted fruit body to the spores dispersed into in- environment then spores taken back to the termitorium by termite elites uh, and termite workers of megatermini macro termitin is subfamily to the termitorium from the termitorium the fungus uh, made uh, fungus made the fungus nodule known as sporodokia and from the sporodokia primordial stage of termitoria termitomyces species and then young termitomyces food body and then again uh, mature uh, termitomyces food body was made the pictorial representation of termitomyces associated with fungus com the uh, ambu like structure is perforatorium pilus ring like structure analysis uh, scars while emerging in the stipe region pseudorhiza uh, above uh, above ground is epigeal basal attachment basal disc termitorium bound the young underground primordial Uh, fungus com and the sporodokia the uh, parts of the termitomyces fruit body is pilus lamellae rings stipe pseudorhiza spore print or basidio uh, basidio spores are pinkish in color and the fungus com bearing the sporodokia objective second is biological characterization of termitomyces species radial growth of termitomyces clepetes and different uh, media uh, there were five media uh, taken in which uh, wheat dextrose agar is shows the highest mycelial uh, radial growth at 30 days interval as its termitomyces is slow grow slow grower in the media radial growth of termitomyces clepetes on different temperature levels uh, in which the 28 degrees celsius 28 degrees celsius is noted for the highest uh, mycelial growth at 30 day interval radial growth of termitomyces clepetes on different colors of light on pd media on which the green color so the highest mycelial uh, growth at 30 day interval radial growth of termitomyces clepetes on different uh, ph in which uh, not uh, uh, much difference is there but uh, the highest radial growth was obtained in 6 ph profiling of nutrient status of termitorium soil uh, uh, from the above result uh, the uh, termitorium soil is rich in nitrogen potassium soil organic carbon Uh, evaluation of uh, different uh, substrate for spawn production uh, different substrates were uh, taken for the spawn production of termitomyces species in which kodu millet and the finger millet uh, finger millet shows the 100% coverage at a 15 days interval in petri plate and in in test tube the kodu millet and the pearl millet uh, shows the uh, 100% coverage at 15 days interval and the uh, for in the bottle the kodu millet and the pearl millet was cover the 100% at 15 days interval development uh, uh, development of cultivation protocol of termitomyces species it is a representation uh, the fertile from the ter- f- fertile termitorium the fungus comb was fungus comb was removed and the, uh, the fungus comb is porodokia the uh, we kept uh, the uh, fungus comb in the in a box after 3 days uh, after 3 days the 
sporodokia were germinated and erected white mycelial growth was observed on fungus comb uh, from the fungus comb white uh, sporodokia were cultured and the termitomyces uh, the culture from uh, termitomyces species uh, fruit body also were cultured and the spawns were made and their uh, spawn run on uh, mushroom bag and the fruit body was observed the substrate were used uh, termitorium soil sawdust wheat bran and leaf litter were used in different concentrations for the cultivation of termitomyces species in which uh, uh, termitorium uh, in which uh, 0.5 kg uh, kg contained termitorium soil was uh, shown the best uh, mycelial run or spawn run in the bag a a and b picture uh, shows the initiation of uh, initiation of a pinhead and the others shows the fruit body uh, fruit body observed of termitomyces species determination of nutrient contents of termitomyces species from chatisgarh uh, three different species of termitomyces were uh, taken to the uh, powder form and their nutrient were analyzed in which uh, termitomyces hemi so, uh, shows the uh, highest protein content protein percent and the uh, lowest fat percent in the termitomyces membiformis termitomyces macrocarpus shows the highest s percent and the termitomyces membiformis shows the uh, highest fiber uh, as well as uh, highest ca carbohydrate percent termitomyces membiformis uh, termitomyces macrocarpus has the highest moisture percent as 92.40 the powder from the dried fruiting body fruiting bodies of termitomyces membiformis termitomyces hemi and termitomyces macrocarpus remained uh, fresh with its signature flavor and aroma even after 6 months my conclusion 43 wild macrofungi were identified and map of uh, wild mushrooms had been made 12 species of diff term, uh, diff uh, different termitomyces species had been identified based on macromorphological characters ethnomedicinal information of wild edible mushrooms had been collected termitomyces clypeus were cultured and spawns were made on different substrates an attempt wa attempt was made to cultivation of termitomyces clypeus on bag containing termitorium soil sawdust wheat bran and leaf litter nutrient composition of termitomyces hemi termitomyces membiformis termitomyces macrocarpus were analyzed future prospects uh, more surveys and collection should be done that must cover all districts of chatisgarh closely Examine, uh, examine the symbiotic relationship between species of termitomyces with different termite species different locally available substrate on different concentrations should be studied for mycelia growth or spawn run and yield the work on molecular characterization of different species of termitomyces species from chatisgarh should be undertaken acknowledgement i acknowledge the my chairperson sri hk singh sir advisor committee dr sukhya sukla sir dr धर्मेंद्र खोकर सर डॉक्टर जयतीर चंद्राकर मैडम डॉक्टर नरेंद्र लखपाले सर हेड एंड प्रोफेसर ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्लांट पैथोलॉजी आई जी के वी रायपुर आई पी एस फॉरम फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू कॉन्टेस्ट माई लैब मेट्स ऑफ मसूर मिश्र लाइब्रेटरी आई जी के वी रायपुर थैंक यू सर सो थैंक यू प्रदीप थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर प्रेजेंटिंग योर वर्क इन वेरी नाइस मैनर एंड टाइमली सो एनी क्वेरी फ्रॉम एनी ऑडियंस if no then i would like to call boda pravin uh, for his uh, presentation you just on share your screen okay sir um koi ek kuch kuch pata nahi kaise bola sir प्रेजेंटेशन इज ओके you but your voice is not coming clear hello sir no 
you are operating from pc or laptop or laptop sir hello sir sir laptop sir so there is some problem actually dr sesar anybody else who could hear him no no we are also not able to hear sir yeah 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 that's right so if you have uh, any other alternative uh, uh, arrangement then so meanwhile uh, please call next person sir yeah, so yeah, that you uh, will be that, that that i was uh, thinking so uh, you just uh, find out some alternative arrangement and then uh, meanwhile i would like to call veer singh uh, for uh, the presentation of his sister's work veer singh is there veer singh Mr. Veer Singh, no. Then B H Chaitanya, no. Yes, sir. Veer Singh, yes, sir. So you you just uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Mr. Boda Praveen. You are just on share your screen, na? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. D J and Mr. D J. Veer Singh, yes, sir. is it your presentation is small millet sir no 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 sir so we uh, uh, mr praveen praveen are you hearing me yeah yeah, yeah just you share your screen uh, uh, veer singh yes sir yeah yes Good afternoon to all. My name is Veer Singh, PhD final year. Uh, I uh, I am presenting uh, uh, presenting my thesis work for uh, Professor M D Narasimhan Academic Award contest. My thesis title is Studies on Standardization of Production Technology of Lion Man Mushroom Hirsa Mirinisa in Chhattisgarh. I am starting to introduction and background of Lion Man Mushroom Hirsa uh, Mirinisa, also called Lion Man, Lion's Man Mushroom Monkey uh, Monkey Head Mushroom. We are tooth mushroom uh, tooth mushroom is an edible and medicinal mushroom belonging to the tooth fungus group native to North America, Europe and Asia. It can be identified by its long uh, spines greater than one centimeter length. Uh, Lion's Man Mushroom belong to the class Agrocomycetes order Asurus and family Hirsaceae and uh, Uh, they can be used in the treatment of cancer hepatitis disorder on wound hind uh, healing they improve cognitive ability support and uh, and nervous and immune system uh, this is uh, objective of investigation for, uh, first objective is uh, to know the physiological and nutritional requirement of resistance for growth and biomass production and second is to find out the best suited substrate for growth uh, Growth and yield of Hirsium irinaceus, and the third is find out uh, find out best suited grain substrate for spawn development and their impact on spawn and yield parameter on Hirsium irinaceus, and fourth is to know the impact of different pasteurization method on spawn and yield of Hirsium irinaceus to evaluate the best performing strains and their characterization of different strains of Hirsium irinaceus, and six is uh, to determine the nutritional composition of different strains of Hirsium irinaceus. My first objective is to know the physiological and nutritional requirement of Hirsium irinaceus. For growth and biomass production, uh, I have selected zero uh, H zero strain of uh, nine strain of Hirsium irinaceus on the basis of their radial growth. Uh, for further studies, I have studied effect of different media temperature, uh, level of pH, carbon sources, nitrogen sources, and light wavelength and radial growth and biomass of Hirsium irinaceus. My first objective is effect of different media on growth and biomass of Hirsium irinaceus. Uh, an experiment was conducted to find out the best uh, suited. Uh, Media for growth and biomass production of Hirsium irinaceus. Among the different media products, shows agar media gave maximum radial growth and fresh and dry mycelial weight. And this figure, uh, uh, product uh, products shows agar agar so uh, maximum radial growth. And in and in liquid medium, uh, protecto dextros agar uh, sorry protecto dextros uh, medium gave maximum uh, fresh weight. Uh, effect of different temperature and radial growth and biomass of Hirsium irinaceus among the different temperature 24 uh, 24 degree centigrade uh, temperature gave maximum radial growth fresh weight and dry mycelial weight and this uh, this figure uh, this uh, 20 24 degree centigrade gave maximum radial growth and fresh uh, fresh uh, mycelial weight 
uh, effect of different level of pH on radial growth and biomass of resistem resistem among different a level of ph range uh, ph6 gap maximum uh, radial growth and fresh and dry biocellular weight uh, the, in this figure uh, 6 ph showed uh, maximum radial growth and uh, fresh micellar weight effect of different carbon sources on radial growth and biomass of resistem initiates among the different carbon sources uh, fructose gap maximum radial growth and uh, whereas a uh, glucose gap maximum fresh and dry micellar weight in this figure uh, uh, fructose uh, fructose gap maximum uh, uh, maximum radial growth and in liquid medium uh, maltose gap maximum uh, fresh micellar weight effect of different uh, nitrogen sources on radial growth and biomass of resistem initiates among the different nitrogen sources ammonium per sulfate gap maximum radial growth growth uh, whereas glycine gap maximum uh, fresh weight and dry micellar weight in this figure uh, ammonium per sulfate gap maximum radial growth in liquid medium glycine gap maximum fresh micellar weight effect of different uh, light wavelength on radial growth and biomass of ferrisum initials among the different range of light wavelength uh, 492 to 577 uh, nanometer light wavelength gap gap maximum radial growth and fresh and maximum fresh and dry micellar weight and this figure uh, 492 to uh, 577 nanometer light wavelength gap maximum radial growth and in liquid uh, and uh, and uh, maximum fresh micellar weight uh, my second object is to find out the best suited substrate for growth and yield of resistem initiates uh, an experiment conducted to uh, find out the uh, find out the uh, best suited substrate for growth and yield of resistem initiates among the different uh, among the different substrate which is uh, uh, took minimum uh, took minimum time for spore run uh, and uh, and uh, whereas sawdust uh, took minimum time for pinhead and uh, pinhead initiation and days for, uh, for days required for first harvest uh, if, if and uh, among the different substrate uh, sawdust gave maximum number of sporophore yield and biological efficiency uh, due to the more lignin uh, percent on sawdust compared to other substrate uh, this figure on this figure uh, sawdust gave maximum uh, maximum yield sort maximum yield and my th third objective to find out the best suited grain substrate for spawn development and uh, and their impact on spawn and yield yield parameters of resistem initiates among the different grain grain substrate uh, finger millet uh, took minimum time for spawn development of resistem initiates uh, fast nutrient uptake uh, due to the uh, thin layer of seed coat of finger mi uh, millets and uh, in this uh, this figure um, uh, uh, finger millet showed uh, minimum time for uh, spawn uh, spawn development yeah. uh, of different grain yeah. spawn on elite reproducting character of resistem initiates among the dif uh, different grain raised spawn uh, finger millet grain raised spawn took minimum time for spawn and pinhead initiation and this for required first harvest uh, among the different uh, different uh, weed, uh, different grain raised spawn uh, weed grain raised spawn uh, gave maximum number of sporophore yield and biological efficiency uh, due to the uh, due to the fast adjusting of neutron on finger millets compared to uh, wheat, uh, wheat raised, grain raised spawn. Uh, impact of different grain raised spawn on yield of resistem initiates with grain, uh, grain raised spawn gap maximum uh, yield uh, and followed by the finger millet grain raised spawn. My fourth objective to know the impact of different pasteurization method on spawn and yield of resistem initiates. If uh, if first, of, uh, first is the efficacy of chemicals on uh, micellar growth up to strength of resistem initiates by food poison technique. Uh, among the different chemicals, uh, carbondazine, uh, formaldehyde, combination of carbondazine, formaldehyde. I inhibit the hundred percent growth uh, growth of heristium initius. Uh, in this figure, uh, 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 formaldehyde carbondazine uh, combination of formaldehyde and carbondazine inhibit the hundred percent uh, of uh, micellar uh, micellar growth. Uh, in the impact of different pasteurization method and micellar growth of strain of heristium initius. Among the different pasteurization, uh, pasteurized substrate, uh, uh, micellar growth was re uh, recorded on steam slice substrate. No micellar growth was uh, recorded on, uh, uh, on other, uh, on uh, carbondazine, formaldehyde, combination of carbondazine, formaldehyde, due to uh, check the, uh, due to uh, this chemical inhibit the growth of heresium irinaceous in case of hot water and steam water. Heresium uh, irinaceous uh, was not uh, degrade the, the, uh, the substrate. Uh, Degrade the other uh, uh, sub degrade uh, hot water and plain water uh, uh, pasteurized substrate medium. Effect of different pasteurization method on micellar growth and of, of H05 and 0 H10. Uh, micellar growth. Uh, 
मसल ग्रोथ वॉज रिकॉर्डेड इन स्टीम स्टेलाइज एंड स्टीम स्टेलाइज मीडियम नो मसल ग्रोथ नो ग्रोथ मसल ग्रोथ वॉज रिकॉर्डेड ऑन अदर पॉस्चुराइज मीडियम Uh, impact of uh, different pasturization and uh, growth and yield of resum renisius uh, spore and pin head indentation fruiting body formation number of spore and uh, yield was recorded on stem stride stride uh, substrate and um, uh, no uh, no growth was recorded on formaldehyde lime lime water and hot water uh, treated substrate Uh, if, uh, the, in this figure, uh, the fruiting body was recorded on stem slides uh, substrate. Uh, my fifth objective: evaluate the best performing strands of fresh seminiferous and their, their characterization and the growth. Uh, first is uh, growth of uh, bio growth and biomass of uh, different strands of fresh seminiferous and protected dextrose. If medium among the different strands H zero to two gave maximum radial growth, whereas H zero eight gave maximum fresh weight and dry mycelial weight. In this figure, H zero to H H zero two gave maximum radial radial growth followed by H zero eight strain. Uh, in uh, in liquid in uh, in potato dextrose liquid medium G H zero eight gave maximum radial growth. Uh, growth and biomass of different strains of resemblance and wheat extract agar and uh, agar and liquid media. Uh, maximum uh, H zero eight gave maximum radial growth. Uh, on uh, wheat extract dextrose agar media uh, whereas uh, where, uh, whereas uh, uh, h08 uh, gave maximum fresh and dry muscle weight on uh, liquid medium uh, in this figure h08 gave maximum radial growth and in liquid medium h08 gave maximum fresh muscle weight uh, microscopic characterization of different strain of herium initials Uh, maximum number of uh, among the different strain maximum number of septa uh, number of clamp connection and minimum septa to septa distance minimum distance between clamp connection and minimum distance wall to wall distance recorded in h0 strain followed by the h0 at strain and uh, this figure uh, in this figure h0 02 uh, gave maximum number of clamp connection and maximum number of septa uh, effect of different strain of herium on herium renisius on spawn development and their uh, mycelium characters uh, Characterization of wheat grains H zero eight uh, required for minimum time for spawn development in uh, the in, in this figure zero eight uh, took minimum time for spawn development uh, effect of different strains of resemblance and yield attributing characteristic on wheat extra H zero eight took minimum time for spawn and pin head indentation and gave, gave uh, maximum number of spore for yield and biological efficiency uh, in this figure H zero eight gave maxi uh, gave maximum uh, uh, maximum yield. Uh, effect of different strains of resin renisius on yield attributing characters of sod on sawdust. H zero eight took minimum time for spore and pin head renisius and H, and uh, maximum number of spore for yield and biological efficiency. In the, uh, in this figure, H zero eight gave maximum uh, yield on um, objective six to analyze the nutrition composition of different strains of resin renisius. Maximum most uh, percent in uh, in H. Zero six uh, total sugar uh, uh, maximum total sugar uh, in H zero uh, one maximum protein uh, protein in H zero five maximum fat in H zero one uh, fiber seven point seven in H zero three and S uh, maximum S percent ten point four five uh, in H zero is then were recorded. Uh, conclusion. Uh, potato dextrose agar as medium 25 degrees and uh, 24 degrees centigrade temperature p uh, ph 6 glucose and fructose as a carbon sources ammonium persolate nitrogen sources uh, 492 uh, to 577 nanometer light wave plane were found to be excellent for mycelial growth and biomass production of resum renisius so dust was the most suitable substrate for cultivation of resum renisius compared to other uh, substrate ragi and kodo grain were found to be excellent for spawn development but yield was comparatively high in uh, high in spawn Based on wheat grain stem sterilization method was found to the best method for pasteurization of wheat extra among the evaluated strain maximum radial growth biomass production uh, uh, minimum days for spawn development high yield and biological efficiency was recorded in H08 strain uh, differentiation of resin had had maximum moisture moisture 83.79% 89 8.93% protein 24.80% total sugar uh, 51.42% fat uh, 2.56% and fiber 6.22% acknowledgement uh, i would like to uh, give a lot of, uh, lot of thanks of, uh, my, to my uh, chair person and advisory committee uh, and senior junior slam member department of plant pathology igkv raipur thank you uh, thank you veer singh uh, for presenting your 
research work and uh, timely uh, before time and uh, if any there is any query if no then we should move <coughs> forward and i would like to call dr uh, chaitanya Yes, Chaitanya, you are not audible. If you are connected from PC or laptop, just unmute yourself. You unmute. Ah, uh, you unmute. Unmuted, but you you are not audible actually. Are you hearing? so there is some problem i think i'll call her sir and i'll ask her to connect from other mobile actually she is in uh, call, connecting from mobile so uh, my... tell them to check the setting of the mic so if you go to the mic icon there is an icon for the mic na there is a set if you right click that thing then there is a selection of microphone i think he has to select the correct microphone hello hello or otherwise can we ask the previous person ah, sir yeah, yeah, pravin 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 ah has managed something pravin are you hearing Yes, sir. Is it audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. You are audible, but you keep your mic uh, some uh, closer distance. Okay, sir. So, uh, Chaitanya, you just unshare your screen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep mic closer. Okay, sir. Is it okay, sir? No. Yeah, no, just loudly. You, you, you raise your voice. Sir, it is. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Respected chairman, co-chairman, and all the participants, a good, a very good evening. Myself, Bora Pravin. PhD student department of plant pathology i'm so glad and happy to be here to present my phd work uh, for the prestigious professor mj narsimha academic merit award so before going to my topic i would like to share some of the interesting facts about the little millet and all the millets so small millets are one of the oldest to be known to the humans and possibly the first cereal grain to be used for the domestic purpose and these millets are also called the god's own crop and miracle grains So, what is the importance of these millets? These millets offer threefold security to the nation: the food security. Of course, these are suitable food sources for uh, combating hunger in changing climate scenario, and also nutritional security. They are the very rich source of calcium, magnesium, and some of the interesting like uh, all the nutrients. So, it will sustain the nutrients and security. And these are these also gives the economic security. We can grow these millets with less in investment, and we can earn more. so we can increase the economic security of our nation so among the millet little millet is one of the important crop minor cereal crop which is belonging to the family poaceae the crop is cultivated by tribal and food farmers in low fertile soil with low or no cash input which gives a high returns but the saddest part is the leaf blight is one of the emerging malady in successful cultivation of this millet so no information is available for this this is about the severity of the occurrence the etiology variability of the pathogen and some resistant source about this disease so i choose the topic like the identification and characterization of the alternary alternator 
uh, inciting a lead flight in Little Miller. After the completion of the PhD, we have decided this title. So before we don't know the pathogen. So the research, my research is trying to achieve survey to assess the disease severity in Little Miller growing areas of different parts of the Karnataka, the morphological, cultural, and molecular characterization of the pathogen, enumeration and characterization of the toxin which is produced by this pathogen, and the host range studies of the pathogen under glass house conditions, screening for resistant source development, as well as in vitro efficacy of some of the bioagents in botanicals and fungicides. So survey has been conducted in different areas in district, uh, different districts of the Karnataka, Bangalore, Hassan, Mandia, Tumkur, and uh, Chitradurga, and the isolate has been collected. The disease severity was measured based on the 1 to 9 scale, which is given by Kiran Babu, which is used for all the millets. So here, the isolates, uh, we named the isolates as USB 1 to 10. 10 isolates were collected from different districts, and the highest severity was observed in Bangalore area, that is 67.32%, and lowest was recorded in Hassan, that is 19.49%. So these are the symptoms of the little leaf dry disease starts as minute brown spots at the early stage, later which grows and merge all the symptoms and which gives a blighted appearance of the uh, whole leaf. And in severe infection, we can see the infection, it will go up to the boot leaf stage and infect the crop severely. So we have isolated the pathogen from the, these uh, collected samples from different parts of the group and based on the cultural characteristics like fungal, hyphae, the conidia, which bearing the uh, conidia for which bearing the conidia, all these characters, we have uh, we concluded that this pathogen might be the alternate area. Alternate area at species level, identification of alternate area is very difficult. So here we confirm this as alternate area species. So we went for proving the coach postulates. This is the primary criteria whether the pathogen is same causing the same disease or any other. So in order to prove that, we went for the proving the coach postulates. The infected field samples, of, we have isolated the pathogen, pathogen from the infected uh, plant samples and we have gone through the pure culture and based on the single spore isolation, we isolated the culture in the pure form and artificially inoculated on the little crop which is grown under the artificial norm, normal conditions and which is covered with the polythene bags to maintain the humidity. Later we got the same spots which we have observed uh, first in the field and then re-isolated the pathogen and the confirmed it as alternate area. So these are the characteristic features of the alternate alternator. The, uh, the conidia 4, it bears the secondary conidia from the secondary conidia, the conidia will be appeared. The conidia 4s are primarily they are like a pale brown color, is sometimes a straight or flexuous, and the secondary conidia, conidia 4s are always a short. The conidia pale brown to uh, light brown in color, obliquate to pyriform in shape. The size varies from small spot conidia, the size varies from 12 to 50 micrometers, and the length is width varies from 6 to 14 micrometers. And it also contains the sum of the sector 0 to 3 as a longitudinal and sometimes 1 to 6 transfer sector. So the 10 isolates we have grown on the PDA to see the cultural characteristics of the any difference in the different isolates. So the days to cover full plate, it has changed from little variation has been observed in all the 10 isolates. And always, like the sporulation is also somewhat more in case of USD 1 isolate as well as USD 5 isolate. And uh, sometimes the margin as it is regular or sometimes it is irregular. Some of the colonies formed the generations and some did not form the generations. Here, the conidial characteristics, it varied from, it almost ranged from the 21 to more than 50 to 60 micrometers in length, which is the characteristic feature of the spawn spot conidia of alternate area. So here, the almost the range from the 21 to more than 60 percent, 60 micrometers of the length, is conidial length. And it also contains a 1 to 6 septa, both as in transverse as well as longitudinal septa. So based on these cultural characteristics, we thought this is the alternaria alternator. So these are the 10 isolates which we have collected from different regions, surveyed regions. So for molecular characterization, here alternaria, the cosmopolitan alternaria is, it contains more than 275 species, which is very ambiguous, very, very difficult to identify at the species level. So later, based on the morphological characters and molecular characterization, this alternaria has been divided into 26 sections. Among them, alternate area section is one. Under alternate area section, around 20, around 60 species were categorized. To identify at the species level, we cannot separate these species by based on the normally used ITS and some of the small uh, uh, smaller subunit of ribosome. So based on this ITS and smaller subunit of the uh, ribosome as well as the histone protein, we can separate these alternate area section with other 25 alternate area sections. Among the 26, we can separate based on CITS and SS1 history. This RPB2 gene region, we can separate this RPB2 
ureka ureka section okay and this gtdh we can separate this gtdh from the alternate alternator then mindia we can separate that one of the sections in the 24 section 26 section and this gtdh is also help to separate this alternate alternator from the alternate alternator species complex which includes alternaria serialis alternaria longipes alternaria arborescens so here we have this alternate major alter gene you can see the major alter gene of the alternaria endopolygalactonia gene opa102 cog105 so these are the conjoined regions which we can separate this alternaria alternator from other sections so here these are the uh, some of the primers which we have used for amplification of this to identify at the species level so here these are the uh gene gel bands of respect to gene or gene regions which is the product length which we got when we compared with the 1 kb length these are the respective product length of the pcr amplified pcr and amplified product of the respective individual genes so here we have compared this alternaria species alternaria alternata with the type species cds 91.916.96 and confirmed this uh, pathogen as alternaria alternata so here based on the cultural characteristics morphological characteristics as well as the molecular characteristics so, and we confirmed this pathogen is alternaria alternata so we claimed this first report from india as the in, uh, the inciting leaf bullet inciting pathogen as alternaria alternata in india and which we have published in the plant disease report so the whole genome sequencing of the pathogen has been done with illumina and nanopore mini mini and platforms the illumina is the next gen generation sequencing which gives the excellent accuracy but it is it gives the short reads so and it, it takes the more time to assemble the genome but in case of nanopore which is the third generation sequencing which we can give it gives the longer length but the accuracy is somewhat less when compared with the illumina sequencing so here the first the first time what we did is the sequences which we got from the illumina and the well as, as well as the nanopore sequences we merged together as and a hybrid and we we got for gene annotation here the reads around after illumina sequencing around 8035 mb which data which has generated through the illumina as well as the 612 mb which they generated to the nanopore we merged together by uh, by dinova assembly of the different assemblers here the cano is only for the reading long reads which is generated through the nanopore and uh, the spades which reads the short reads of which generated through the illumina and this mazurka is the hybrid which reads the both so what we did here is the spades mazurka and cano merged in different combinations to get the best assembly for in order to save the time as well as the accuracy of the completeness so here based on the, the completeness we assessed based on the book for reading benchmarking universal single copy ortholog the single copy orthologs are ancestral genes which transfer from ancestor to the species level so based on this single copy ortholog we have decided which method is like assembler is good for gene completeness here we have taken around 17 species from the pleosporans and the number of buscos are 6641 so here the cano the the uh, the best the best percentage which we can decide the completeness is more than 95% so here we excluded cano and mazurka because the completeness is less than 95 but when comes to the mazurka cano spares and all these combinations yielded good good completeness but the thing here is when we see the single copy ortholog single copy ortholog is always preferable because it has generated directly from the ancestor to the species level so we have chosen this mazurka cano spares as well as spares so among these two the both stand the good but when comes to the quality parameters here when comes to the uh, spares the mazurka cano spares hybrid assembly has given excellent result if you see the basic uh, quantics number of quantics as the zero base space the number of quantics are 19 but in case of spares it is 2424 2782 means there are more number of quantics short reads but here the complete 19 quantics will give the complete genome sequence of the alternaria alternata when if you see the gc content it is almost same but when it comes to the n50 what is n50 here the size of the smallest quantity which is set the largest quantity which makes a 50% of the genome so here the largest quantity that uh, the n50 of this mazurka cano spares is good when compared with the spares then l50 value these are the, all the quality parameters what is the l50 value l50 is this the different 
smallest number of contacts which makes the 50% of the genome so here the four genomes can uh, can complete the uh, whole genome uh, 50% of the genome but here it is six so based on this we decided that like uh, we got good results from the masuruka canisters hybrid assembly as good for gene annotation so here the predicted our whole genome sequencing data given that predicted genes were 12388 out of which the future annotated proteins already reported were 762 and we got hypothetical proteins are 9504 the total simple sequence repeats are 635 what are these simple sequence repeats these simple sequence repeats are small dna repetitive molecules like uh, motif 1 to 6 base pairs these are highly prone to the mutation and the main role here is these repetitive dna has occurs in thousands of on the different locations of the whole like whole organism like on the genome of the organism and the main advantage here uh, uh, ssr sir we can use it for uh, population genetics to measure the relativeness between the species or other groups and also we can use it as a markers in marker assisted selection in the breeding program to get the this is resistance so here the enumeration and characterization of the toxin produced by the pathogen uh, another objective here alternator is going to produce different different host uh, specific and non host specific toxins here what we did is we went for the hplc high performance liquid chromatography to identify which path which what are the major toxins which are produced by this pathogen so here the methodology what we followed is we have grown the pathogen on the uh, uh, um, potato broth uh, uh, the four ml of the broth was filtered and it is purified with the 90% methanol and this has been injected around 10 microliters of this uh, broth which purified broth was injected into the lcms system then what is the role of this lcms system this lcms technology it involves the use of hplc high performance liquid chromatography where the individual components in the mixture are separated uh, which are then followed by the ionization and these separated ions are then um, separated based on the mass to charge ratio here the lc liquid chromatography uh, it, it, it uh, separates the molecules based on the physical separation like uh, it, it, by forming the two two uh, two materials like uh, components stationary phase as well as mobile component where then comes to the uh, this uh, mass to spectrophotometry the separation is based on the mass 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 to charge ratio so here the molecular weight of the expected precursor and product ions of this alternate alternate after hplc were the different compounds with their molecular weight after the after the separation the ionization has been done the ionization means positive ionization as well as negative ionization sometimes majority of these are formed in the negative ionization and when it comes to the teneogenic acid and alternator alternator positive positive ionization is also given good results here see, if you see here the teneogenic acid is also present in the component that the filtered broth it is also going to produce this toxin alternarial alternarial monoethyl ether as well as alternian compounds and some other toxins if you see here 10 toxin the 10 toxin it formed multiple peaks in the lc and there is no the product ion has been not observed so it says that 10 toxin is not present in the pathogen it is not going to produce the alter toxin we identified but it is very very low component very at a very low levels whereas in case of alter toxin 2 and alter perineal it is also observed in that broth and stem phylo toxin stem phylum it is the sister to the alternaria section so there is a possible oh, point try to conclude okay sir so host and studies have gone through that the host and this alternate alternate is going to infect the podo millet uh, little millet brown top millet this pearl millet uh, wheat and oats and we thought that under glass house conditions this pathogen is going through this host range is broader these are the symptoms which are observed under, under glass house condition and uh, screening for identification of resistance also around 142 genotypes were collected and we found resistant 40 lines from the uh, from this 142 uh, by uh, screening for two seasons and in vitro evaluation of bioagents we have done and among the uh, fungal bioagents trichoderma hargeanum stood first it inhibited maximum in compared to others here the uh, the like uh, microscopic images showing that the trichoderma infecting the uh, deformed conidia it, it, it is uh, like uh, infecting the conidia and as well as the mycelium so among the bacterial bioagents bacillus belgensis p42 strain and bacillus belgensis a6 inhibited maximum this ordinary alternator then what is the outcome of my research the causal agent of this disease has been identified as first time and the whole genome sequencing resulted into hybrid assembly mazurka canisters as a good hybrid assembly 
and found 9500 in the hypothetical proteins and 635 ssrs which are good for marker cell marker, marker selection for breeding resistance as well as through lcms several toxic compounds has been identified 40 methylmethyl genotypes resistant were identified and these hostness studies of this uh, pathogen has been identified in vitro efficacy as in trichoderma harvian and bacillus vaginisi has been identified in the laboratory level thank you so much sir for giving uh, me this. Uh, thank you thank you very much uh praveen uh anybody has any query if no then uh, uh bh chaitanya i would like to call whether he has made some alternative arrangement chaitanya are you able to listen she is connected huh? Sir, I am audible. Ah, yeah, wonderful. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Good evening, good evening, and a warm welcome to everyone. Myself, I am Chaitanya, and I completed my PhD from SV Agriculture College, Tirupati, Acharya Engineering Agriculture University. Today, I am here. Uh, to present my research work on development of dna based screening method for yellow mosaic virus infecting black gram and studies on vector biotypes that is bemisha tabasi biotypes in andhra pradesh before going to the exact research details i would like to give brief introduction regarding my virus uh, as uh, the yellow mosaic virus infecting black gram belongs to the begomo viruses which uh, comes under gemnevridae family and actually two species of begomo viruses that are mumbil yellow mosaic virus and mumbil yellow mosaic indian virus these two species are known to associated with yellow mosaic disease in black gram these begomo viruses um, these yellow mosaic viruses are bipart in nature that means the gene the genome of these viruses are segmented in uh, two components that is dna a and dna b so these uh, dna components are both are necessary for um for making successful infection in plant and uh, and also these yellow mosaic viruses are transmitted through bemisia tabasi uh, that is a white fly vector uh, and uh, if you see the uh, india resistance screening scenario mostly resistance screening against ymv was conducted under field condition with rapid emergence of new begomo viruses the durability of confirmed resistance does not hold for a long time and even uh, with the mixed infection of both species of begomo viruses uh, already it is reported from andhra pradesh by baskar reddy sir in with the mixed infection it is difficult to confirm the resistance of uh, genotypes against two species of begomo viruses and even the success purely depend on the season climate and the vector population hence the new approach has been found it is very uh, to be reliable and suitable uh, in order to create artificial infection of plants with these begomo viruses that is called agrobacterium mediated inoculation or agro inoculation mainly this technique will allow to screen the various germplasm throughout the year with various uh, distinct isolates or strains of the virus which is not possible by the natural screening so coming to the my objectives of uh, phd research program molecular characterization of uh, two species of begomo viruses that are associated with ymd of black gram and the second one is construction of full dimers of uh, dna a, dna a and dna b of mumbin yellow mosaic virus and mumbin yellow mosaic indian virus which are characterized in this study and the third one is screening of germplasm and advanced breeding lines by agro inoculation technique the fourth objective is characterization of vector biotypes in andhra pradesh coming to the first objectives uh, for molecular characterization of two species of begomo viruses we have collected different ymv infected black gram samples from different regions of andhra pradesh and genomic dna was isolated from those leaf samples and what we have done is with the use of those dna um, genomic dna which are isolated from infected leaf samples we have run pcr with the specific primers and full length primers in order to determine which species of begomo viruses is predominantly present in andhra pradesh that is associated with ymd in black gram and the 
fourth one is we have uh, cloned different uh, uh, clones of uh, mongbin yellow mosaic virus and mongbin yellow mosaic indian virus we have done restriction enzyme analysis whatever the uh, depending on bad banding pattern in restriction digestion analysis we have selected uh, some clones and we have done sequence analysis coming to the results uh, out of uh, 80 samples uh, almost uh, if you see uh, different uh, species of begamo viruses out of 80 samples uh, almost 79 samples we have detected mongbin yellow mosaic indian virus dna a component almost 98.75% predominance was occur with uh, um, indian virus a and even if you see b component the mongbin yellow mosaic uh, virus b is predominantly present and even uh, these are the some pcr photographs where it shows the amplification of uh, uh, specific virus using the gene primers out of uh, several clones were constructed uh, out of those clones we have selected only five uh, full length viral clones we have sequenced and we have done phylogenetic analysis by naiba joining method uh, and even we have calculated percentage identity at full length level and vorf level uh, and even at uh, nucleotide level at amino acid level also we have uh, calculated those uh, percentage uh, identity level coming to the second objective we have to construct the full length dimers of dna a and dna b of uh, mongbin yellow mosaic virus and mongbin yellow mosaic indian virus here i would like to tell uh, one point here almost uh, as far as the previous reports uh, almost uh, most of the uh, mongbin yellow mosaic virus clones were constructed through the tandem repeats that means it uh, in, it involves tedious multi step uh, um, cloning procedures so here what uh, what we have done is we have constructed infectious viral clones in a different way that is first uh, um, we have uh, Uh, isolate we have uh, cut the dimer length and uh, we have done partial digestion of rca product with uh, restriction enzymes for some time later with the use of dimer we have constructed rca based dimer clones of uh, those two species of begamo viruses really the strategy was proved successful to promote viral gene transfer in order to express the uh, symptoms in plants here uh, if you see the procedure um, actually we have used dna samples from tirupati region we have done rca with those dna samples it doesn't require any mission simple we have required pi d pi 29 dna polymerase which has the stand displacement technique and random hexa primers and even pyrophosphatase with these uh, simple chemicals we have performed rolling circle amplification at the end of rolling circle amplification uh, we will get the different lengths of concamers various lengths of multimers Uh, here what what our target is we have to get the viral dimers so for that we have uh, digested rca product partially actually here i would like to tell one thing for getting dimer we have tried with many restriction enzymes like bam h1 eco1 hind31 at different concentration at different incubation times and finally after 6 uh, 7 months it took uh, uh, that much of time with bam h1 at the rate of uh, uh, the concentration of 0.2 units at 10 minutes incubation we got viral dimers nearly 5.4 kb Uh, we have uh, cut the, the those gel fragment and we have isolated the uh, dimer length dna from those gel what we have done is the isolated the isolated 5.4 kb length of dna fragment was ligated into pcambia vector at bam h1 site and transformed into ichorisha coli dh5 alpha cells and we have selected recombinant uh, colonies by blue and white colony screening and even the clones were identified which was dna and which was dna b we have identified by viral specific primers and even we have done restriction enzyme uh, analysis finally the selected viral clones were transformed into agrobacterial Serum tumefaciens by Frista technique. So he, uh, this photograph showing that uh, confirmation of dimeric clones with different set of primers. Here we have tried with whatever the uh, primers that are available in the reports. We have used many primers in order to confirm which which one is DNA and which one is DNA B, which one is mongbin yellow mosaic virus. We we, ha we have used so many primers and even we have used uh, full length primers also. Finally, uh, we have confirmed three dimer clones and. and we have done restriction enzyme analysis with uh, two set of primers finally uh, we concluded that almost um, the dimer length fragment get inserted into the pcambia vector so these uh, three clones we are going to use for agro inoculation screen technique uh, here it is the linear map of whatever the dimeric constructs we have constructed uh, 
um, it, it shows simply we have uh, taken dimer length fragment in the BAM H1 site in the multi cloning site of the Picambia vector. And so, objective three is screening of black gram germplasm through agro inoculation technique. In activity one, what we have done is whatever the constructed agro clones, whether those clones are really infective or not, we have uh, done um, using susceptible variety that is uh, GB, LBC 645. After that, we have uh, uh, conducted two screening experiments. Totally 45 black gram genotypes were uh, screened as powdered seed method of agro inoculation with two set of uh, dimeric infectious dimeric clones. In first screening trial, we have used Mungwin yellow mosaic virus DNA A and Mungwin yellow mosaic DNA B. In second set of screening, we have used Mungwin yellow mosaic Indian virus DNA A and Mungwin yellow mosaic virus DNA B. Coming to the, it is the schematic representation of agro inoculation technique. First, what we have done is uh, we have cultured the agrobacterium tumefaciens cells in which we have uh, dimeric constructs of DNA A and DNA B separately, and we have collected the those cells by low speed centrifugation, and even we have mixed those DNA and DNA B cultures, and we have resuspended the cell with sterile water, and we have added astrocerungon for uh, um, transmission efficiency. And what we have done is simply we have pinpricked the at the hypopotel region and we have Im soaked in uh, D agrobacterium suspension in which DNA A and DNA B clones are exist. Here, what we have done is even uh, the site of the position of pinprick also we have standard is um, what we have done is along the length of hypopotel, we have made the pinprick and then around the hypopotel region, we have made the pinprick. What we have observed is whenever we have done around the hypopotel region with, with the proper care, we, we got 100% infection. And even incubation time also we have standard is in uh, almost in previous reports, uh, reports uh, they mentioned that uh, we have to uh, keep the uh, black gram cells for overnight even uh, we have uh, tried to reduce those incubation time why because if you soak for uh, one day uh, almost uh, the seeds will get rotten so for that we have standardized even incubation time also even with uh, less time um, even with two hours of incubation also we have uh, uh, got excellent results in susceptible variety and this is the photographs we are showing the infectivity analysis of constructed dimeric clones. Almost within 45 days after sowing, I mean within 45 days after inoculation, we have a clear characteristic symptom, yellow mosaic symptoms and stunting of the plants observed when compared to the control plants. And even here, one interesting thing is whenever we have done PCR analysis for confirmation of viral presence, what we have observed is even in uh, control plants also, we got uh, um, viral amplification. So many times we have repeated uh, this experiment, but uh, with the band, um, with less band thickness, we have uh, got uh, viral amplification even in control plant itself. Even though this uh, uh, total procedure was done in controlled environment in plant growth chamber, also we have done. And some reports from um, PNJ itself, it is that even 33 2% of uh, uh, seeds were uh, infected with uh, um, seed borne nature of this YMV. And some studies reports that the presence of uh, virus in seed, it does not always leads to the seedling infection. Uh, this trial was repeat, repeatedly we have done. Uh, so these are the screening results in agro inoculation. In first set of screening, totally we have got 24 resistant and four genotypes are moderately resistant and five are susceptible and seven genotypes were um, more highly susceptible. These are the results regarding second screening trial where we have used Mungbin yellow mosaic Indian virus A and Mungbin yellow mosaic virus B. Nearly 23 genotypes are resistant and three are moderately susceptible and six are susceptible, 13 are susceptible. Here, I would like to mention one thing. Um, here, this is very, very really um, interesting thing. What we have done is we, we pull up the screening data in both the screening trial. What we have observed is whatever the genotypes which is shown Showing against resistance towards Mungwin yellow mosaic Indian virus that are uh, oppositely showing susceptible reaction towards Mungwin yellow mosaic Indian virus. Clearly, some genotypes showing differential uh, response of uh, this resistant response. So, finally, with the screening, we have uh, uh, 17 genotypes are finally showed resistant towards uh, in both screening trial against uh, both species of DNA A. 
and this photograph shows that th this uh, typically i have mentioned for uh, two genotypes this dku99 and pu1125 these are highly susceptible <laughs> whenever used indian virus and resistant reaction in mungbin mosaic virus here uh, some genotypes that is cobg1314 uh, and lbg88 <laughs> Chaitanya, you try to complete. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am trying to conclude, sir. Uh, objective four is studies on vector population that is Bemisha tabasi. Here, in two ways, we have done the uh, study. First, we have what we have done is identification of vector biotypes uh, by using mitochondrial cytochrome oxidase gene sequences, and even we have detected the distribution of endobiotic symbiotic bacteria in white clay population. And what I have tell is Bemisha tabashi is a very uh, cryptic complex which is morphologically indistinguishable, but in various physiological ways it differs from each other. And even in uh, Andhra Pradesh, the genetic structure is very limited, so that's why we have uh, taken this uh, objective. What we have done is the Bemisha tabashi population was collected from eight districts of Andhra Pradesh, and total DNA was isolated from single vector from each district, and PCR was done with uh, specific primers. Totally eight sequences uh, were submitted in uh, NCBA, and these are the details regarding the Bemisha tabashi population which we have collected from the different uh, districts of Andhra Pradesh. This uh, gel photograph showing the amplification of mitochondrial cytochrome oxidase gene. Um, with these eight sequences, we have done phylogenetic analysis. And we have uh, concluded that uh, the Bemisha Tabasi population from Gundur and East Godavari and Krishna districts are clustered together with Asia 1 uh, genetic group of uh, Bemisha Tabasi. Here, in this phylogenetic analysis, we have used the sequence of this uh, paper, very um, uh, important consensus sequence we have taken for comparison. And even population from Nellore district and Chittur, Karnur, Kadapa, Ungol districts, we have concluded that Asia 2 genetic group. So far, 12 subgroups are identified under Asia 2 for uh, in order to uh, identify the what is the subgroup of Asia 2 again we have done uh, phylogenetic analysis with uh, Bemisha Tabasi sequences from uh, all over uh, India uh, what we have concluded is the genetic structure of Asia 2 is Asia uh, 2 uh, 1 Asia 2 1 and coming to the endosymbiotic distribution, almost uh, um, by what why we have taken this objective means some endosymbionts, mainly Arsinoconus and Rickettsia and Hamiltonella, these release um, this uh, code protein of uh, um, uh, what is some begumo viruses like uh, tomato yellow leaf chloratic virus and cotton leaf curl virus these uh, uh, coat protein of these viruses are interacted with the growing proteins of uh, some endosymbionts that is arsenoconus rickettsia hamiltonella with the interaction of these two the viral persistency will increases in the bemisha tabasi population in order to uh, identify uh, those differences we have taken up this one so th for this study we have uh, done in different way first we have uh, identified Identify the um, distribution in BMV infected white flow vector and virus free vector. A primary endosymbiont is expected to present in all one. Here, if you see this one, Hamiltonella is present out of 10 white flies, three white flies are positive with Hamiltonella. Likewise, here, what I have told is uh, if you pull up the data between the virus infected uh, Bemisha tabasi population and virus free Bemisha population, Arsinophonus and Hamiltonella and Rickettsia, these yeah, endosymbionts are significantly yeah, varied. Yeah, you have crossed sir, the over, sir. Yes, sir. Over, sir. Over, sir. Conclusion, mainly Mungbin and Illamojak Indian virus are predominantly present and we have constructed dimer clones. Total 17 genotypes are resistant. Some differential resistant res responses were observed and even in band thickness also observed. It is a very suitable screening method without depending on the season, climate and vector population. Almost Asia 1 and Asia 2, one genetic group of Bemisha tabasi population is present. Here I would like to tell one thing is the infection Hamiltonella and Frisia is uh, uh, present in only invasive species of Bemisha tabasi population that is Mediterranean East and Mediterranean East minor. So there is a large scale screening is necessary in order to confirm the B biotype that is very invasive. So scope for future work is uh, future work is more number of IMB isolates has been uh, has to be studied exclusively DNA B where um, uh, polymorphic is observed uh, differences is observed in uh, genetic sequences and relation between the particle virus particle accumulation and symptomology be critically analyzed and then large scale screening is um, necessary and even the role what is the role of uh, uh, you know it is necessary to study the role of secondary endosymbionts in transmission. 
of these yellow mosaic virus. So finally, I acknowledge my regards to my chairman, Basri Dissar, and my advisory members, and uh, head of the Regional Agriculture Research Station, Tirupati, and head of the um, yes, Department of Plant Pathology, SA Agriculture College, Tirupati, and gen seniors, juniors at the uh, IFT, RARS, Tirupati. Thank you very much, sir, for patient listening. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Chaitanya. Thank you, sir. Uh, any audience? Oh, any question? From? So, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So, Dr. Sesa. Uh, please. Uh, uh, what is the procedure, sir? The uh, procedure is actually, first of all, uh, I'm thankful to you and uh, our co-chairmen also. Yeah, yeah. For uh, patiently conducting the Dr. Narsimhan contest. Now the procedure is, uh, please uh, the chairman and the co-chairman are requested to send the confidentially the evaluation sheet to the rapport here or our Sheshakiran. So uh, that, yeah, individually uh, might have put the marks and all, no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that individual. Oh, that uh, Dr. Sesa actually, uh, I told that I had to connect with another meeting at uh, 4.30. Okay. So when you need this one, immediately. Right now, sir. Right now, actually, it has to be announced now. The mandatory function. We have to. Yeah. So let us, uh, myself and coach here, discuss on the yeah, that's right, that's right. on mobile, that's and right. we will decide. Yeah, yeah. Yes, no, that's right. One name, single name. Two, yes, sir. Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. two people will be nominated, sir. Two okay. people will be nominated from this zone so, to the so, so IPF let annual. Us, let us share the mobile number of coach chairman. Go. Yeah, yeah. So only thing is, uh, as. Uh, Please, uh, the chairman and the coach will please discuss. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and uh, please suggest to But here, here it is not possible, na? Yeah, that's why that's <laughs> confidentially. Yeah, yeah. Confidentially. It will be better to talk and, uh, with on the mobile and. Yeah, yeah the mobile and. Uh, uh, Shashakran, please share the mobile numbers of co chairman to the chairman. Yeah. yeah. And okay, uh, yeah. Uh, so that they can, they will recommend two names. Yeah, yeah. So before that, uh, I request uh, our uh, Bikara Daru, please, if you want to share, any, share anything to our audience or any. Uh, no, uh, sir, actually, uh, I had uh, <clears throat> just uh, heard all the, this uh, presentations and really it was uh, very nice. Uh, some of the presentations were very excellent and uh, they have did the uh, excellent work, actually. And uh, overall, uh, all the participants, uh, they have tried to uh, finish their uh, presentations uh, in this, <clears throat> this uh, uh, scheduled time. And... Uh, uh, with all this, uh, I think uh, it was a very nice session. Uh, and, uh, the credit goes to SESA. <laughs> he has nicely arranged entire this uh, journal uh, symposium, two days, how it is going to finish. And it started itself, I called him. Uh, I am congratulated to holding this uh, uh, symposium nicely. So overall, this uh, session was very nice. And I also uh, am thankful to... Uh, so, co chair, and uh, let us we will talk together. And Sesa, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity <laughs> to be there. Thank you. What thank all you. I felt, no, sir, I shared with uh, our president, uh, Srinivasalu, sir. He made all the administrative arrangements and uh, he made it very fine. And so, so, uh, thanks, thanks, the, the, thanks, the credit you. also equally goes to our president. Uh, no, no, the for, credit for, goes to IPS, our secretary is there. <laughs> they are monitoring from their uh, monitoring from the headquarters. Sir. Yeah, yeah, they are yeah, monitoring yeah. The, <laughs> all the coordinated and the very team efforts of all the people. Of course, sir. Of course yeah. they are sitting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are monitoring from Delhi. We yeah. are uh, chat government are working perfectly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are also enjoying your this uh, all the this, uh, presentations, your coordination, whatever is. It's yeah. really very good. <laughs> uh, ultimately, you, you people have uh, well, could do it very nicely. So, Dr. Sahib, I will share it with you because I will do it with you. Okay, okay. Please, uh, uh, please do that one. Sir, uh, I, have, I, have already, I have already shared the WhatsApp okay. numbers of uh, Rajan Sharma and okay. Subhadeep, sir. So, I am leaving from here. Please, 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 please. Rajan Sharma, can you please talk to Ramon Kumar right there? Any you are all... Over uh, telephone, sir, not here. Please share your result with him. 
It is Sukhdev Sukhdev Chatterjee is there. Doctor Sukhdev Chatterjee still. I think he left for some meeting, sir. I think okay, let no, me we discuss. Doctor Rajesh Sharma, please would like to share, there, sir. But I think he is there. He is there. Would you like to share anything? Not the names of the candidates, general. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Maji. Okay, okay, sir. I am doing it, sir, right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. now the session of that uh, MJ National Academic Award consists is completed. Mm -hmm. Now we are entering into the validatory function. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I request okay. all the we can uh, come. Cheshakaran, please uh, collect before that the, the information from them. Okay, okay, sir. So, sir, go in there, sir. Can you, in the validatory function, can you, yeah, the uh, functionality, sir, might not be available. So you yeah, please. he's on uh, uh, transit. Uh. So okay. you, you uh, can, uh, can give you an overview of that session uh, when we ask. Okay, sure, sure, uh, sure. Okay. So now we will start uh, this uh, validation function. So uh, my dear Dr. Robin Bogai, Secretary, IPS. I think now you will be the chief guest of this function. <laughs> no, no, because the uh, chief guest should be from your journal because this is only the opportunity to honor a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are from central. No. Okay, uh, no problem. Uh, we, will, we will continue the program as such. <laughs> uh, actually, what happened as uh, other people are having that some meetings and all. Right. So we have not. Uh, we don't know when it will be completed the presentations and all. So that uh, the letters are complete. Okay. Uh, regarding this uh, validatory function, actually, just a brief information to the secretary and all the members also. That is, uh, the IPS Central Zone has conducted two days uh, virtual symposium with the cooperation and uh, of all the this one. So in a, in a inaugural session. Where there were the four keynote lectures by Professor C. Manohara Chari, Mohana Chari, and uh, Dr. M. Krishna Redigaru, Dr. B. Ramesh V. Sonti, and one an extension pathology by myself. Then uh, there were the hectic uh, sessions on uh, 6th as well as on 7th. Right. That is uh, actually, on, we have conducted the four uh, sessions. <laughs> Uh, one is on the recent trends in host pathogen interactions, epidemiology, and plant disease management. It was chaired by Dr. P. Narayan Didigaru, Professor of oh, uh, Plant Pathology, Professor Jayashankar Telangana Agricultural University, and co-chaired by Dr. K. Subramanyam Garu, 
అండ్ రాపోర్టియర్ పి రమాదేవ్ గారు దర్ వర్ ఫోర్ లీడ్ లెక్చర్స్ అండ్ ఆల్సో టోటల్ పేపర్స్ ప్రజెంటెడ్ ఆర్ సిక్స్ అండ్ సిక్స్ పోస్టర్స్ టెన్ పీపుల్ దేవ్ ప్రజెంటెడ్ సో ఫర్ దిస్ నియర్లీ ఫర్ దిస్ సింపోజియం ఓవరాల్ వన్ ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ వర్ రిజిస్టర్ సో రిగార్డింగ్ ద సెకండ్ సెషన్ టూ ఐ విల్ బి గివింగ్ ఓవరాల్ పిక్చర్ then where are the other chairmen and co-chairmen will be giving the in brief uh, their uh, report session wise if available then second session is advances in detection diagnosis and characterization of plant pathogens and microbes here this is chaired by dr r selvarajan that is principal scientist uh, national research center trichy that is banana and uh, co-chaired by ch chruth uh, professor of plant pathology mm-hmm. college of uh, Articulture, Anant Rajpet, and uh, Rapport here, uh, Vijay Lakshmi, a senior scientist plant pathology from HR Islam. There were lead lectures of four, total papers presented by 10, and e-posters uh, five. Then the session uh, three is the Inavazu Emerging Pathogens and Plant Quarantine today is chaired by Dr. M. Krishna Redigaru. principal scientist iihr bangalore and co-chaired by mr b govind rajulu principal scientist and head tbk periyavaram and uh, rapport here dr b k m then the session 4 is on novel molecules biological control and other eco friendly approaches it was uh, chaired by dr m s rao and co-chaired by K. Subramanyam, our principal scientist, uh, Articulture Research Station, Mahanandi, and uh, Rapporteer M. Khabika. There were four lead lectures uh, and papers presented at 12 and e-posters 9. Then also the Central Zone also, as per the directions, have conducted MJ Narasimham Academic Award Contest, chaired by Dr. B. K. Rai and uh, co-chaired by Mukherjee and Sharma Ji. And there were nearly eight presentations total under this uh, Mr. Uh, MJ Narasimham Academic Award. And no, uh, we didn't receive any applications for the contest for the APS travel sponsorship for the PhD program. This is uh, in general about the total overall programs. Uh, now I request uh, the available chairman session one if they joined narend reddy garu or co chairman please give any brief information about recommendations about their session session one they can come by let me bolne 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 so artist available available persons says no Uh, Govind Rajulu, please share your uh, word session. Actually, for the session two, Salva Raju has uh, sent a detailed report. If uh, Salva Raju is available, let him share. Or if he is not available, just I can read out whatever the points he has mentioned for the session two. He is there, sir. He is there. Please, you are I here. I please share. I have submitted the whole yeah, yeah. Okay. No problem. You, you okay. read yourself, sir. Okay. That will be fine. Okay, Dr. Uh, uh, President IP Central Zone and uh, the, uh, the counselor, Dr. Cesar Kren and all the people at headquarters, IPS secretary and all those. So, I am going to just present this. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Sinivas said that uh, there were only three lead papers and it was... Uh, Uh, one on uh, phytoplasma disease by Dr. Amit Yadav and followed by Dr. Hema, professor of SV University. The C presented on plant virus diagnostics and the characterization. And Dr. Amruta uh, from Archery and Nagarjuna University presented on endophytic microorganism. And followed by there were 10 uh, oral presentations and five posters were there. And all uh, presentations uh, were uh, very good and uh, there were good uh, interactions and uh, uh, discussions. And uh, I am just giving a few recommendations uh, which emanated from the uh, study overall uh, uh, pertaining to this session. 
that is diagnostics must be developed for the diseases which are clonally propagated and ensure disease free planting material to the growers this is one of the recommendation integrated management package for sunflower necrosis virus must be popularized among among the farmers this is number 2 number 3 is iot gadgets and drones should be applied for survey and surveillance of disease so though uh, since this is uh, session is on uh, only one paper was there on iot but that person has not presented however we felt that these gadgets has to be applied uh, as part of uh, detection and diagnosis and uh, we had to use machine learning approaches also for the detection in the field level so okay. this is one of the recommendations then endophytes must be exploited for the eco friendly management of diseases occurring in the central zone so mostly rhizosphere micro uh, other are is being used so here uh, endophytes also must be given very importance for the uh, management purpose in depth research should be taken up on identifying the emerging pathogens and develop on site or point of care diagnostics for pathogens affecting high value crops these are all the six uh, the uh, recommendations emanated from this particular session and of course uh, i i have given other uh, my uh, points to the dr srinivas one and uh, the uh, convener dr sesakran about the best oral presentation best post and all i have given i think they are going to uh, tell about that later thank you thank you thank you dr sharoraj now i request our uh, co chairman govind rajulu session 4 3 session 3 Sir, uh, good evening to all. Um, uh, here, um, regarding uh, oral presentations, uh, two oral presentations were taken up uh, in uh, emerging pathogens and plant uh, quarantine session three. Uh, in that one, uh, Dr. B K M Lakshmi, senior scientist and head uh, research, horticulture research station, uh, he given a to- topic uh, on uh, mango sudden decline caused. Uh, Uh, during uh, this season um, uh, uh, a potential threat to the mango which is a uh, cultivation in india uh, likewise um, uh, cr uh, rashmi dr cr rashmi assistant professor uh, kerala uh, she presented uh, on the <coughs> foliar disease of um, bottle gourd from uh, kerala state likewise two e poster presentations were uh, done in uh, session 3 that is uh, dr pradeep kumar badhai from uh, uh, raipur uh, university uh, he reported uh, the first report of euromyces uh, infecting a velvet bean from uh, chatisgarh uh, and the second uh, e poster is uh, dr snehalata uh, rani snehalata rani she given uh, a poster presentation on um, uh, disease uh, scenario of uh, jack fruit in andhra pradesh uh, uh, whole and soul um, a bo- very good session uh, regarding uh, this uh, uh, emerging uh, pathogens uh, they have given uh, their uh, recommendations uh, and uh, uh, for example in um, uh, jack fruit uh, uh, survey should be continued uh, in future also Uh, in the recent uh, years uh, even uh, uh, root rot is the major uh, problem so likewise um, uh, lead papers um, uh, were uh, given by the uh, eminent uh, scientists that is the novel techniques for uh, rapid detection of uh, multiple pathogens for uh, uh, release of uh, citrus plants from uh, quarantine and uh, uh, facilitation uh, for uh, exchange of uh, genetic plant material by dr manjunath keramane plant pathologist uh, national clonal germplasm repository for uh, citrus and dates uh, riverside california usa uh, likewise um, one more uh, scientist um, uh, that is um, celia chalam dr celia chalam given uh, Uh, a lead paper presentation on international uh, lecture i mean the international and national regulatory framework for safe and uh, uh, transitory movement and quarantine of gm uh, likewise uh, one from simit dr elam suresh maize pathologist uh, that is from kenya 
given uh, eradication, eradicating the maize um, uh, lethal necrosis in uh, African countries. And um, one more um, uh, scientist from NBPGR, uh, she is uh, Dr. Anita Head. Uh, she given a lecture on exotic pest incursions, a challenge for plant quarantine. So I think um, it is uh, very useful for the students, the PG students and PhD students uh, regarding uh, plant quarantine. And uh, the session was completed uh, perfectly with all this. And uh, the, um, uh, the, I mean, uh, the awards uh, and the best presentation will be uh, disclosed uh, afterwards. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Govindra uh, Dr. Narayan Reddy, of uh, the first session, I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, we will be preparing a detailed uh, proceedings by contacting the chairman and also a detailed report will be made in this one. They will detail the proceedings, including yes. the recommendations. Already, as actually the, the chairman's, way, the persons who we have selected, they're very, very, very busy people, actually, practically. Yeah, so yes, they have conducted the proceeding and they have requested to give some time to give a detailed report based upon the recommendations and all, so that it will be incorporated in the proceedings. So now I request our secretary, uh, IPS Gobind Gogai sir, for uh, any remarks or anything. So that uh, uh, session four, anyone discuss it, sir? Session four, if anyone give any review, sir? Yeah, that's why. Right. So it was uh, four also. The, even MS Rao Garo said that he is having a meeting today. He will be sending you know, to address the details. And all. He just sent a small note, sir, that there okay. are. Uh, yeah, please read it. He said that there are six uh, oral presentations, sir, and there are seven posters presentations, and there are very three speakers, sir, uh, Dr. Prithiba Sharma, Dr. Prasim Mukherjee, and uh, Dr. MS Reddy, sir, has uh, spoken on different topics on biological control. And uh, we have selected some best uh, awards uh, that we'll be disclosing uh, in the later session, sir. Okay. Now request our uh, secretary so that uh, they, before finalizing that MDN maximum list and all, especially Kiran, after yes. getting that uh, two names. Uh, okay, okay, sir. So please uh, may send uh, through WhatsApp to our secretary, Robin Bogai. He will announce from there. Okay, okay, sir. The two names. Now I request our secretary to please uh, remarks on this. So, good evening, everybody. It was very nice occasion and very nice moment we could enjoy scientifically for two days. And uh, the program started very pleasantly. It was really soothing and appealing. So because many of the participants I could see uh, from different parts of uh, this uh, globalized area. So uh, during the time of delivery also, it was really so much attractive because many presenters nicely presented. And what we have observed after uh, actually so far we have experienced we are really, we have become used to in this online system, this virtual system. I think they were after when the situation will be normal, this uh, COVID pandemic will be completely eliminated, will go away. And after that period also, I think partially, so this type of program we can organize very nicely within a short period of time and without uh, so spending or sparing extra time. Uh, extra time and money and uh, uh, definitely it will be better what I am just realizing. So we can sometimes make such a program the scientific uh, discussion, discourse, brainstorming session, a session in hybrid way, physical as well as virtual. Those who are unable to suppose be present in a part of this uh, specific venue. So you know, we can access their presentation uh, through this virtual mode. So really, uh, this COVID-19 situation uh, made us to improve ourselves and adjust with the situation and the conditions. 
and uh, as far as the scientific level of the presentation uh, really it was very good and so many good informations i could see our this plant pathologist have been working and they are uh, giving so many good information and i hope those will be coming to the use uh, for the end user means the farmers we are working for the farmers and we'll be definitely continuing our uh, service to the farmers and from lab to land lab to land is always needed which of course we are doing but we have to be more uh, this uh, closer to the farmers and uh, uh, regarding this uh, uh, competitions it is very good sign at least uh, eight contestants came forward for competing for this uh, mj and uh, the narasimhan academic award but i am somewhat uh, uh, this uh, disappointed but why our students are not interested uh, for the aps travel grant this is very good opportunity so one can avail and uh, one can avail means and here from last year what happened because we repeatedly request the all zones total we are having eight zones in our ips so two candidates for an aps travel grant also and finally from aps side the, the final selection will be uh, made they will declare and sometimes what happen more than two also so those fortunate candidate can avail very good facilities if not we are sort of physical virtual mode this year everything three contestants were there the last year selected and they were nominated from uh, ips headquarter to aps and all the three qualified and they invited they gave the commendation certificate as well as they allowed to participate their annual meeting uh, which was held in the month of uh, august 2020 virtually and they could participate so this way still somebody is interested of course for aps travel grant the candidates should be uh, from phd means phd a date to not a final year phd second year and third year so not in the final year means those students who are midway of the phd course so they are eligible and they will get more benefit from that type of grant so i hope if not this year so this next year but this our students will uh, so they are interested to come forward for taking no. this opportunity aps travel grant so and uh, as far as all other this technical session concern really it is made a meticulously uh, planned and they could you know, to say invite very renowned plant pathologists from different places different institutions which we have witnessed and uh, i request uh, this uh, general president and general councilor to compile as of course they are mentioning that as uh, entire report they will be preparing this recommendations in a bullet form so and uh, as uh, our president dr pk chakravarti repeatedly emphasizing that you see based on the journal chapters recommendations we have to compile centrally and we will be placing into the council means uh, indian uh, council of agricultural research icr and uh, um, uh, out of uh, from there whatever possible so we are we will be actually uh, giving some uh, request sending some request to uh, materialize some of the decisions uh actually that will help uh, in policy making uh, this by the council that's why so your recommendation is must and uh, uh, regarding different competitions in oral uh, this presentation and also e poster presentations so i hope they will be declaring the uh, this winners dr shinibasulu yeah <clears throat> now they are, you'll be announcing the, their names also and actually we have received this name so only from our uh, session to chairman dr r selvarajan okay we have to receive from the three more chairmen also okay yeah so now we will be communicating but uh, uh, i request you so whatever results you have received 
in that particular reason because here you see this type of gathering getting this type of service gathering will not be there next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, uh, okay. they, they will be happy. Yeah. Better, better to announce here on the better to yeah, announce. So and, per uh, the, as per the regarding... uh, yeah. As per the session two, chaired by Dr. Selvarajan, that is an uh, advances in detection, diagnosis, and characterization of plant pathogens or microbes. The best oral presentations. He has given first, second, and third. Right. First uh, to Dr. B. Parameshwari, senior scientist, NBPCR. Okay. I think. Can you clap to her? Then second goes to Dr. Bharati Bhatt, Professor, Professor Jayashankar Telangana Agricultural University. <clears throat> then third to Ms. TSS Chandana, Young Budding Researchers as a Consolation Prize. Then best, best poster presentation to two they have selected, the chairman, the chairman of the session has selected two remember. people. One is uh, Korla Sharad Babu, AP Agricultural That's University, Guntur, and Akshay Kumar. Two people they have selected for the poster presentation. Unmute, sir. Unmute, sir. Ah. So this is the Selvara's uh, that second session has given the details. Now we are requested the three other chairmen also. They will be sending the detailed uh, uh, that is the best oral presentation and the best uh, poster presentation also. Sir, Narayan Reddy sir has just called, sir. Okay. So he said that uh, the first uh, oral presentation to Dr. Divya Ambati. Okay. Who is session? Who is Dr. session? Dr. Divya Ambati. No, session, session. Session one, sir. Session one. Session one. Recent trends in host pathogen interactions, epidemiology, and plant disease management. Dr. Divya Ambati, she has spoken on genetics and inheritance studies of stem and leaf rust resistance in four popular Indian durum wheat variety cultivars. Sir. So, second, second best is. Gandhi Jeevana Sai, she has spoken on evaluation of chemical fungicides for the management of blue mold of mandarin caused by penicillium expansion. So that is the uh, two best oral presentations. Coming to the posters, uh, sir selected uh, the best, uh, first best poster is uh, Dr. Suresh Madhula. He has spoken on incidence and progress of yellow leaf disease of sugarcane caused by sugarcane yellow leaf virus in relation to every population dynamics. He is from ICR, PDF, uh, Division of Plant Pathology, IRA, New Delhi. Unmute, Madam. Then, uh, one minute, sir. Then, second, uh, one is the second award goes to, she has spoken on evaluation of different antibiotics for the management of bacterial cancer in acid lime caused by xanthomonas citri. That goes to Dr. Maram Reddy Kavita. Sir, these are the two best oral and two best uh, poster presentations, sir. How about Govind Radhu? Krishna Reddy sir has given anything? The co chairman, uh, if it is there, please uh, present. Yes, sir. Uh, regarding invasive emerging pathogens and plant quarantine, session three, uh, regarding oral presentation, best oral presentation by Dr. BKM Lakshmi on uh, mango sudden decline caused by Lesio diplodia theobrome is a potential threat to mango cultivation in India. Very good. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> so, next uh, e poster presentation uh, in session three uh, Pradeep Kumar uh, Badhai. He is from um, Department of Plant Pathology, College of Agriculture, IGKV, Raipur. Uh, he spoken, I mean, he presented a poster on uh, first report of Euromyces uh, Mukhane infecting velvet bean, Mukhane pruriens from um, Chhattisgarh. These are the two awards uh, selected in session three, sir, according Excellent. to our chairman and committees. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, only that uh, session four. Session four. Session four. Yeah. One minute, sir. 
Session four, sir has uh, uh, he says that there are six oral presentations like that, or then the best presentation goes to Dr. Hamida B, Hamida. Department of Microbiology, Usman University. She has spoken on biosurfactants, postbiotics for plant health. Then uh, and three best uh, posters that he has selected. Uh, first is the first best posters, Bruti Drew. Department of Plant Pathology, College of Agriculture, IGKV, Raipur. She has spoken on large-scale application of lignocellulosic trichoderma lexi formulation for the management of paddy straw. Second uh, best poster, B.S. Kavya. She has spoken on bioefficacy of bacillus species against meloidogen incognitor parasiting tomato and induced biochemical changes. Third best post poster is uh, one minute, sir. Ashok Kosharia. He is from IGKV Raipur. Evaluation of Trichoderma species against color rot of lentil, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Congratulations to all the award winners. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to all award winners and also those who are presented also. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, sir, coming to the MJ Narsiman Award, sir. Sir has sent a message. Uh, please, please. That uh, message you sent to the our uh, secretary IPS. Can we? He will announce from there. Can we no, discuss, no, no. sir? No, no, no. So, how you are speaking to me? Sir, sir, you whatever the message you received. What's it or what? You One minute, sir. Uh, One minute. Uh, I am sending. IPS. He will announce from there. Sir, uh, how many we have to select, sir, from this zone? Two, two, two only. Two, two only. Okay, sir has selected top three. You please uh, pick the two, I have sent you the yes. message, sir. You please go through it and then. Top three means one and two you will read. Yes, yes I sir. have received. <laughs> and he has said that I have discussed with all the people and uh, looking to the work done and methodology followed, uh, discussion of result and presentation. We are in the opinion the following names may be considered for MJ Narsimhan Award. So that too, you please read, sir. Yeah, you will not read his announcement. Ah, you will announce, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, for each and every young scientist and uh, student who have uh, completed master's program and also PhD. And oh, before announcing, I'm giving this announcement of the this, uh, uh, two nominations. Just I want to clarify one thing for the, the, to the get, uh, this, uh, people present here. Many people used to call me, uh, ask me, so what is the qualification for participating in this form test? Because as per our uh, this, uh, guidelines, we, are right, we have written that 35 years of age. So it is very, very clear that up to 35 years of age, one can participate irrespective of whether he is uh, uh, ongoing student or he is in service work. So means MSc who has completed, because this MSc degree is must, and uh, PhD also, it is a combination combined for both MSc, PhD student as well as young scientist. So up to the year, this 35 years. So that's why here, no question of only a student. Young scientists also can take part for the this contest. Public and uh, and uh, and at the time of suppose presentation, during the time of presentation, whatever the scientific findings presented, it should not be published because we are we used to take one undertaking. I think you have to, you, you have also taken from each contestant because okay. eight presenters were there. I think you you took. Undertaking that none of the or part of the uh, thesis work or research work or this paper published. Unpublished data, unpublished findings should be there. The moment this is detected, it is a part of the suppose uh, report or presentations already published and detected by the this uh, jury. So immediately it will be disqualified. So that uh, one has to take care, but I don't know this one because we cannot check already presentation over, but that was the uh, duty of those uh, jury members. Uh, those things are important. And uh, today I also witnessed not all eight presentations, 
uh, four presentations I uh, just uh, saw there, very nicely they are arranging their slide quality, the, the mode of presentations also very good. But I want now, since I have received three names, but only two names will be nominated for final contest. And uh, before declaring the names, who are the actually fortunate candidates, again, one more thing I want to uh, this, uh, just uh, give a guidance that you have to improve your delivery better than today. Very clearly, there should not be any, uh, suppose, doubt while you are making delivery, no repetition, one go, and there should not be much animation on the slides. Otherwise, those more animations distracting the attention. It is not beautification. Actually, this is disturbing the audience. And also maintaining the time. That is also an important point because we have given 15 minutes of time. So the moment exceeds the 15 minutes, so he will be disqualified. Whether he is presenting very nicely, beautiful work, nice, important work. But time is also another point to be uh, this uh, strictly followed, maintained. Anyway, so I am wishing all the best to all the contestants so that they can improve their work and interest to the field of plant pathology. So the lucky two candidates nominated from Central Zone for final contest in the annual meeting of Indian Phytophthora Society during 11 to 13th March, 2021. I'm reading the second nominee, B.H. Chaitanya. B.H. Chaitanya, second nominee. And first nominee is Parshuram Rathor. Parshuram Rathor and Chaitanya. So you are nominee from Central Zone for final contest. So I congratulate uh, all of you. And so those who will be taking participation and getting the chance for final contest. So each one of them will be awarded with commendation certificates. So that will also be useful for all the finalists because there will be only one uh, winner finally, but others will also be benefited by receiving commendation certificate from our society. So all the best. So I thank you, uh, this, uh, Dr. Srini Vasudu and Sasakiran, and also all the members from Central Zone who are very sincerely attending this program for two days. So I hope you will extend your cooperation uh, for other zones also, and also to the annual meeting. So we are hopefully meeting again in the this mid of March, this 11th to 13th March, 2021. For that we are preparing. So within one day or so, within uh, or Monday, we'll be uh, just uploading the um, uh, announcement of the annual meeting. Yesterday I flashed the cover page. It is almost final, but some um, minor works are left. So we'll be doing refinement and uh, we'll be uploading and circulating the first circle. It is not, of course, there is less time is there, so it is final circular. It is, there is no first circular. Okay, so you prepared for the annual meeting also. So I, congr uh, I congratulate both uh, zonal uh, president and councillor for taking the pain of holding this uh, conference virtually, very meticulously and successfully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of the judges there, sir, he want to uh, make any remarks, sir. Subhadip Chatterjee, sir. Uh, thank you. It was good uh, to see the talks. Uh, few were good, very nice presentation. And I think the next time maybe you, this is just a suggestion, the time restriction, you have to be a little time restriction. strict hmm. because somebody overshoots and then makes a disbalance kind of in the presentation because some then if somebody overshoots he can present more and the one who is completing early uh, may get a disadvantage in that way 
so kind of a uniformity in time would be better so in this case uh, we are uh, definitely will be uh, placing one timer automatically <laughs> so speaker will have to stop their uh, presentation <laughs> or we can you can mute the person sir yeah yeah that that can be one no that's up to you like you can uh, find up or something no that way we will uh, we'll put timer so it will be countdown suppose 15 yeah. minutes 15 14 13 12 like that yeah Otherwise, so uh, overall it was so fine. Nice. So okay. So, so congratulations to you, sir, Subhadeep Chatterjee, for getting a uh, Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award. Thank you. 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 Uh, for this uh, journal symposium we have two shanti swarup batnagar awardees uh, uh, participating either as judge and one of the lead, uh, keynote lecturer dr ramesh santi yeah and dr subhadeep chatterjee sir is the student of uh, dr ramesh santi yeah 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 student and uh, chairman both of them got a shanti swarup batnagar award <laughs> okay two minutes sir excellent okay and that in the field of plant pathology means it's a very great achievement and a very motivating and uh, inspiring for all the plant people sir. we are all proud of you sir thank you thanks thanks for it <coughs> thank you so can we end now the can no, no, i you know no, 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 only with a uh, only formal word of thanks is only thing yeah sure now i think uh, now we have completed everything with the excellent cooperation and the coordination from uh, central zone ips and also our uh, honorable uh, and also uh, even the formal word of thanks is there just uh, as my, it is my duty to uh, say my special word of thanks to our honorable vice chancellor dr vyas sir at the university and our president uh, which is chakraborty sir ips and our secretary uh, ravin gogal and our joint secretary mendel sir and others all others all our chairmen and co-chairmen everybody work and even the uh, even for the, the judges One of the judges, all the judges, and all uh, even those who are registered also. Otherwise, uh, without their uh, registration of that much number, the, the program would not be success. So even uh, and also our uh, special uh, thanks to our Shesha Kirna also. We yes, got 124 participants, sir. We have 124 uh, part people have registered. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, all our uh, chairmen, co-chairmen, no. Even one of the our report here, uh, Kanakumar Shankar also got award also. I think a good paper presentation, really a nice for this session too. Congratulations! So uh, my wholehearted thanks Thank you, to sir. all. Uh, now I request our uh, Sheshikaran Journal Councillor to propose a formal vote of thanks. Good evening, uh, one and all. i would like to thank all the delegates who have participated in this uh, two day journal symposium and for making it a grand success sir. so initially we felt that it is only journal symposium but our uh, madam celia uh, celia chalam uh, madam he uh, she told uh, let us make it a very international and we will increase the quality so that one suggestion made me to pick a very very best selector the, the best people as a speakers uh, after discussion with people uh, all around the world uh, so it is uh, almost a Three week uh, hectic uh, work for me, but uh, all of them have given consent, uh, and because of their participation only from uh, across the world, very good speakers from Simit, Ikrisat, and all the NIPGR, uh, IRI like that, uh, we have picked the best speakers. Uh, so we felt that not only this uh, symposium should, uh, I, I felt that uh, it should not only it should serve as a, a platform for sharing the uh, res uh, results of the students and also the uh, scientists. Uh, but it should also be play, uh, equally helpful for all the uh, best speakers uh, who are uh, pioneers in different fields uh, to share their research uh, accordingly we have picked a very uh, good scientist from several national and uh, international scientists uh. so though it was pertaining to ap telangana madhya pradesh we have speakers from kashmir northeast and uh, all other uh, uh, all other zones uh. we felt that uh, the symposium should disseminate the knowledge of the reputed scientists in the different areas of the plant pathology so starting from the keynote speakers and lead lectures uh, so we felt that uh, uh, very pioneers in the field either fungal plant pathology dr manohar achari uh, virology by dr krishna reddy 
and bacteriology by Dr. Ramesh Swanti. So, and uh, also we had speakers from uh, NIPGR and uh, BRC and uh, IRI. So, we, we even personally, I got benefited with uh, different areas of the research, uh, cutting edge research they are doing. Uh, so, personally, I am benefited uh, a lot. Uh, hopefully, this has benefited the, all the speakers, all the participants, uh, or the students and the researchers. And uh, this also will help all the teachers and the researchers uh, to up update their knowledge or upgrade their knowledge. Uh, and hopefully, this will improve their uh, uh, experiments in the future. So, just a minute. Finally, I thank all the university officers of my Dr. YSR Horticulture University, uh, our uh, vice chancellor for uh, um, presenting in the inaugural session and uh, entire day he was uh, following all our lectures. Uh, so, and all the other university officers, uh, uh, registrar, uh, dean of student affairs, uh, and um, dean of PG studies and director of research uh, for, um, for their wholehearted support and participation in the symposium. And also the, our... Uh, I, I personally thank our uh, IPS president, Dr. P. K. Chakrabarti, sir, uh, for giving an elaborate lecture and uh, speaking on different areas. Every so for the past uh, one month, I am following all the uh, journal symposiums. Uh, he is trying. He uh, tried to improve the uh, uh, our knowledge and also he has spoken on a wide variety of areas uh, so that uh, we can uh, look into that and uh, formulate our research and improve our. Uh, um, research methodology and also is giving a new ideas uh, for uh, doing our uh, research. Uh. So I also thank our uh, IPS headquarters uh, uh, people, Dr. Secretary, Dr. Robin Gogoi, sir, and a joint secretary, Dr. K. Kalyan K. Mandal, and uh, treasurer, Dr. Uh, uh, Malkan Singh. And uh, importantly, we have uh, Raju, uh, he, he, has, uh, he has been meticulous, though he has not seen the majority of me, most of the times. Uh, he is uh, Raju from uh, IPS headquarters and Prakash from our director of extension office. Uh, they have been very uh, hard working uh, all through the three, uh, this, uh, three weeks, uh, so starting from the uh, uh, presentations, uh, starting from preparing of the brochures and all that. Uh, and also I thank uh, our uh, judges for sparing their valuable time. Uh, Dr. P. K. Rai, sir, and uh, Subhadeep Chatterjee from CDFD, and also Rajan Sharma from Microsat. Hopefully, I have uh, covered all the people from different institutes uh, and say that it is a grand success. Uh, I thank uh, uh, all the uh, people from ICR institutes, SAUs, of all the universities for participating and making their presentations uh, and making it this a grand success. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Sikharan. Thank you all. Thank you, no. Dr. Srinivasan and Dr. Chisakir. Nicely organized this uh, yeah. conference. Thank you. Thank you, you Rana. Right. I think we can. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting you in the end. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We have the participants. If they want any, give any comments, their remarks, we are most welcome. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, he is Raju now. He is a yeah. Yeah, please, uh, he is the man, uh, man behind the priorities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would, like, would you like to say anything? Aapka, ba, kuch baat karte aap? <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. To, Raju from IPS no, no, no. and uh, Prakash from uh, your office, uh, Director of Extension Office. Uh, they are the yeah. key people who is doing all the background work. Actually, they are the directors. Sir. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> <laughs> Really thankful to Raju Garu for... Uh, okay, thanks. thank you, sir. Thank you so okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you to Dr. Celia Chilam, madam, for your uh, continuous support and motivation, encouragement, uh, your valuable suggestions because of uh, support of people like you only. I got a lot of valuable ideas uh, and appreciation from all our uh, uh, IPS people and also our president and all the participants. Thank you so Hi, much. Hi, okay. Sasaki Ram. Yes, sir. Yeah, now only I came to know how you could make it very successful because you have hired our people. Delhi <laughs> 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 no, She is working in Delhi, but she is a native of my native, our Guntur. She is uh, our central zone headquarters, our capital. Yeah, Silvia, Silvia wants to say something. Yeah, very good evening to everyone. I congratulate uh, the. Uh, Central Zone President and Srinivas Lagaru and uh, Donal Councillor uh, Dr. Shesha Kiran Garu. 
and it's a very very well organized uh, conference and uh, it is like uh, international speakers and also they selected the specialists to the point they have not underwent any pressure i think they have chosen uh, all the speakers lead speakers uh, renowned in their own field not only from india and abroad and they followed the timing also i must appreciate like uh, uh, if the somebody is taking extra time the chairman and all what they were politely telling them and it really met the international standards not only from the uh, presentations quality and the work they presented but also the time maintenance so uh, i congratulate once again the journal president and counselor for organizing it very well thank you thank you madam thank you thank you Okay, sir. So okay, please. Okay, we end. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you.